Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Rob's Gaming Table. I'm Rob. I'm Mel. And we're here to play some Too Many Bones. Uh, this is our first time playing Too Many Bones. We've never played it before. Um, yeah, I have no idea what this game's going to be like or about. I've never streamed it or made videos of it or obsessed about it and bought promo packs and hidden secret expansions and streamed it for like 24 hours, anything like that. Uh, this is brand new to us. I'm just kidding. We've played hundreds of hours of this game on the channel. You came to the right place if you're looking for too many Bones content. Uh, we just haven't played it. Like, um, I checked my last stream of this was probably the last time I played it around then. Um, was early 2021, like February or March, I think it was. So we haven't played this for just over a year, a year and a bit, year and a couple months. So be gentle. We did play the other day to kind of like warm up a little bit. Um, so just FYI. But today we're checking out the Automaton of shale expansion so I, those who are watching later i'm going to give you the spoiler warning those who are watching live i've pinned a post in the chat so if anyone joins in hopefully they see that but this is spoiler warning i put it on the thumbnail um but this is a pop-up book this is a little fun expansion i would say little but it's like 80 dollars uh so it's not that little but um this is a pop-up book expansion done by the publisher of too many bones and the designers of too many bones it's like a fun little adventure expansion to give you some more content for your games i don't know how much content's in it uh, i heard there's a bunch of cards i see there's a deck of cards hidden in the back uh, i know there's cards and, and chips hidden throughout the book so that's the spoilery stuff i've not seen it we are playing this blind for the first time we've never played it before um we're kind of like oh it's like an unboxing slash playthrough because we're like yeah, we've not opened it. We've not looked in it. So I did find the intro card how to play it to read so I know what components I needed for today. And hopefully we have them all at the table. We may need to run and grab some other stuff out of the trove chest if, uh, if, if needed. Yeah, if needed. Um, hello, everybody joining live. Hello, 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 hello. Hopefully you can hear and see us okay. Hopefully, hopefully all is well. Um, so yeah, we're, we're playing this blind today, so it's going to be like fairly a long stream, I'm assuming. We're going to go through it, we're going to gush over the pop-up pages, um, which I remember seeing like teasers of when they were, they were designing this book and showing it off. It was like an April Fool's kind of promo product thing. So this is like kind of like the biggest promo I would say they've done for the game. It's, it's kind of like an expansion, kind of like a promo. It's like a half and half kind of thing, but it's meant to like play through kind of once. You experience it, and then you take all the cards and chips out of it, is my understanding, and they become extra content to add into your regular games of Too Many Bones and give you another Tyrant to play and all that kind of stuff. That's, that's what I think. But again, I don't know. Please don't spoil too much in the chat if you've already played this, or you didn't care and you kind of opened it and looked at everything without playing it. Um, I know a bunch of people have this already. Uh, full disclosure, uh, I ordered this. I forgot I ordered this. Chip Theory Games reached out and said, Hey, Rob, do you want to play this on the channel? And I said, uh, Yeah, sure. And they sent me one, uh, and I got a shipping notification. It arrived a couple days ago. Uh, then I got another shipping notification uh, yesterday, no, day before, uh, and I went, what? And I looked it up, and I actually did have an order for it in. Uh, I thought I was going to wait and add it on a promo order. Maybe I did. I don't remember. But either way, I'm going to have an extra copy. We'll see what I do with that. I may have some friends that I will, you know, I maybe have a birthday or Christmas present now, but uh, maybe I'll give it away on the channel. We'll see. Um how, how it arrives but uh yeah so full disclosure i was sent the product for free but i also paid for the product so take that for what you will you guys know i'm a huge too many bones fan if you're new to the channel again check the playlist links in the video description and you'll see how nuts we are about this game and how many hours we played solo two player three player four player all of that stuff 12 hour long streams all that stuff you'll find down below in the video description. Just check out the playlist there, unboxings, you know, and that kind of stuff. It's all there. It's all there. So yeah, we got tons under our belt. Um, so yeah, this is one of our favorite games. Well, at least one of my favorite games. I don't yeah, know, I can say the same. Yeah, I don't know where it ranks, but I do love it. But again, we haven't played in like over a year. Fully played, like we didn't even play a full one to kind of warm up for the stream. We're like, eh, we've played it so many times before, we'll figure it out. We'll play on like the medium difficulty mode too to kind of help us so we can kind of have fun and gush over the pop-up book and not worry so much about like winning the gameplay. But you guys know I'll get competitive with it, I'm sure. Yeah, we don't want to lose. Yeah, yeah. So and that's why I want to play through it. I don't want to get stuck on something and keep like dying and then we fail. I want to kind of like go all the way through the content just yeah. to see it. And then in the future, we can take it as like a tyrant, make a video, do like a solo run of, you know, pick pick out all the content and and like really kind of right from setup determine which gear lock or gear locks we need to like crush it and deal with the enemies and all that kind of stuff 
Um, the other other caveat we're playing today with just mainly undertow stuff. So I remember when this was event, uh, announced, they said you should only need undertow to play it. Okay, it's going to be based in like kind of a little promo expansion for undertow. Then I thought like, oh crap, you need undertow to play it. That kind of limits it. What about all the people I told just buy the course set to try out the game? They, they shouldn't buy this yet until they get undertow or the other way around, you know? Um, but it's not true. They actually designed it so it could work with the core set or if you just don't undertow or both. So you can mix stuff. So what I'm doing today, I just grabbed to be simple, like more straightforward. I just grabbed all the undertow baddies. I have splice and dice, mechs and crown mixed in there because I just like having more mechs and crown for vari uh, variability. But I don't have any splice and dice enemies mixed in the types. Um, yeah, it's just undertow baddies. Um, but we're not playing with undertow gear locks because I really believe this. You could just play, we could play with Duster and um, Stanza. Stanza. But I didn't want to play with either of those. Um, I just want to keep it simple, and I haven't played with Nugget in a while, and, I, and Nugget's like one of my favorites. Um, and I want to keep it simple instead. My favorites, I would probably say, is the Lab Rats. But oh yeah, you like that. I didn't want to relearn the Lab Rats and try to like, Lab Rats are like their own game within the game. So I just want to focus on the book today. So we're playing Picket and Nugget, who are kind of like more straightforward, pretty OP. Yeah, we don't have to think about our gear lock so we can focus. Yeah, yeah, and just, just have fun enjoying the content in yeah. the book. Okay, FYI, that's what this stream is about. The automaton of shale, having fun, blind playthrough, seeing the stuff, kind of like an unboxing, but also experiencing the gameplay during the unboxing is like kind of what it's like to me. Uh, so keep that in mind. So, so any, can... George A, if you show up and you start coming in here telling us about <laughs> gameplay options and what we should do to win, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. We're not here to do that today. <laughs> it's going to be fun when every time we open a new page, how we all kind of go, ooh, yeah, ah, yeah. <laughs> together. I'm here to see pretty <laughs> pop-up art. I don't care about, you know, that, that other stuff and trying to build the most efficient gear lock. But I'll still try. I'll yeah. still try. Yeah, so we don't want to lose. FYI. So. Just FYI. But if you're looking for more competitive, too many bones strategy on how to learn a gear lock, how to play a gear lock, run through solo, two player, three player, four player, all that stuff, down below in the video description, there are playlists for that stuff. And when Unbreakable comes out later this year, we will get too many bones back to the table. We'll take Unbreakable, we'll play that through, you know, do the little mini campaign that I think is in there and all that kind of stuff. And we'll really dive into the Unbreakable stuff. So if you're looking for like the hardcore too many bones stuff, uh, yeah, we'll watch later this year, hopefully later this year, uh, when the Unbreakable wave of content shows up. Um, so yeah, so this is just more of like a, let's just bring too many bones back to the table, but check out this cool book and then put it back on the shelf or back in the trove chest and then uh, we'll, we'll focus more on it later in the year. This book won't fit in the trove chest, will it? N no. Oh, okay. Well, no, maybe the content will. Oh, the content will. Yeah, yeah it's just, just some cards and chips and stuff, I'm assuming, so that'll fit, uh, I think. I just don't know if it'll fit with Unbreakable and all that, but who knows? Who cares? We'll see. Um, but the book will definitely go on a shelf, that's for sure. It's definitely a cool looking book. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's check out the chat. What are you guys saying? Talking, Tanya's talking about ordering the coffee. There are some promo cards with the coffee. And supposedly when I was watching about the coffee, so I'm a coffee drinker. Thank you for Please the reminder. Be very full, be careful. I drink tea, but... I'm holding it two-handed so it doesn't slip and spill all over the game. Because it's waterproof. I don't know about coffee-proof. Um, That's a lot. What was I going to say? Coffee? Coffee. Promo the cards? Too Many Bones coffee I see being brought up in the chat. That is something I'm salty about. Um, that it, you, we can't buy it in Canada. I don't know if they fixed that or changed that. Not that I've seen, but I have seen they recently said that they will be uh, selling it in, U in Europe. Oh, well, that's not helpful. I know. Okay, that's great. But maybe the, they're working on it a little bit at a time. <laughs> so I don't know. So anyway, it's not happy that I can't get too many bones coffee. Not for the coffee. Like, I love coffee, and I would love to try the different coffees. But I like to support the publisher in that way. Uh, you know, they're kind of doing fun out there things, which I think is cool. But they've included promo cards that the more coffee you buy, like the more chance you have of collecting like a set of promo cards or loot cards or something that go in. And I love coffee and I think that's like, I love too many bones. So having those together is kind of cool. If and when we ever can make it to a convention, maybe yeah. we can purchase it there. I hope they bring some of the coffee. If to they like bring it, I don't Gen know if they're allowed to sell it or, yeah. at something like that, but I can't see why not. Yeah, that would be fun. So yeah, hopefully they have the coffee. Does, did anyone go to UK Games Expo or Origins and see if Chip Theory Games had coffee at their booth? If, you, if you're watching later and you know, answer in the comments below. But I'm very curious, because then, you know, I wouldn't go to a convention just to get the coffee. But it's a cool side bonus uh, if they do have it. 
I would love to grab some to get those promo cards and to try the coffee. You know, you know, I would have to do an unboxing, smelling, tasting, whatever. Yeah. On the channel of the coffee, I think it would be funny. Like a live taste test. Oh yeah, yeah. No, at first I gotta open and huff the oh, bags. Oh, smell it. Yeah. Like put my face right in the bags. Oh, don't like, do that because it'll get all up your nose. No, no. it's beans. It, it, you oh, have, it's like, just you have beans. To grind it. Oh, it's so, beans. So okay. I have to get like a grinder and everything. Oh, it's like a whole process. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. Hmm. Seems like a lot of people in the chat are excited for this, so. <laughs> and remember, spoiler warning, okay? Spoilers. There's hidden packets of cards and and uh, chips in here and pages of surprise that, uh, you know, watch at your own risk. Watch at your own risk. Uh, Black Cheval, yes, I'm aware that the playthrough card is in the back of art. That's the only thing I opened up was the last page to pull this out, so they made a manufacturing mistake that the uh, instructional card wasn't in the first page. It was accidentally put in the last page. Um, so it kind of spoils a little bit of what's in that last page and what's hidden in the last page. So uh, I took it out in advance so I don't have to do that on stream. But they did send out an update on Kickstarter and in my email and everything to let us know. And Discord, they're posting it everywhere, like letting everyone know. Um, so I haven't opened the first packet, which you would open to start, which is cool. So that'll be the first time we see that. Um, but I do have the card set up. We'll go over the setup um, when we get into the playthrough uh, in a minute once everyone's shown up. Once everyone's shown up. <laughs> Matthew says, I, I drink beer. Too many beers. <laughs> too many beers. Too many beers. I think there's some tequila there too, isn't there, Matthew? <laughs> <laughs> Tanya says, I ordered one coffee, so I'll let you know how it tastes. I love coffee and mixed blends. Yeah, oh, they, one they of have, each, one of each, yeah. I think they have, mo oh, one of each, one yeah, yeah. Each, they yeah, have multiple have blends, yeah, yeah, which is cool. That's awesome. Yeah, hopefully I can pick some up if we go to the U.S. for a, a board game convention in the future. Uh, we'll see. Or they just find a way to make it available in Canada would be nice, because then I would, like, actually order it often, probably, if it's, like, decent shipping and stuff, you know? Like, it'd be fun to order a promo pack and some coffee with the promo pack or, you know, an expansion or... Yeah, it's like a little extra. You know, get some premium chips for Hoplomachus and throw some coffee on the order, that kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, like, why not? That's like the perfect upsell item. I, I, I'm a sucker for that stuff. You know, get free shipping if you add two coffees to your order, stuff like that, you know? They could, they could have to do so much crazy stuff with that. And, they, yeah. and I would be a sucker and they would get me for that. Because you're going to drink coffee anyways. Uh, Jeffrey's here says, yes, more Too Many Bones with Robin Mel. Yes, yes. it's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah, it was fun to pull this game out, uh, you know, carefully, shelf by shelf out of the trove chest, making sure I didn't drop anything to break my feet or, or the floor or anything. Um, but yeah, we got some... And anyone who doesn't know too many bones, uh, I should probably talk about that, because there is a chance that you're new to the channel and you don't know what the hell we're talking about. Let me see if I can uh, bring up some information here. Ah... <sighs> Oh yeah, I should say thank you everyone that uh, supports us on Patreon and YouTube by clicking the join button or the information in the video description supporting the channel, allowing us to purchase a lot of our Too Many Bones expansions and travel to conventions and camera equipment and all that kind of stuff. Thank you everyone for supporting the channel. Like I said, I did buy this, but then they reached out after and offered it to review. So I said yes, not even realizing like, duh, I have it coming already. Um, didn't even think, like I was like, yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, so take that for what you will, but I, I, you know, I did drop like 500 Canadian dollars on the Too Many Bones Unbreakable stuff, so um, we will get that on the channel. And without you guys supporting, I wouldn't have done that kind of thing, so I appreciate it. Thank you everyone that donates through Super Chats and the Join button and the Patreon and all that stuff. Huge appreciation. Thank you for investing thank in the you, channel. We appreciate it. Uh, so this is Too Many Bones. It is in the top 100 games, top 50 games. Keeps going down top closer. 40 games. To one. The top 40 games on BoardGameGeek.com. It is 11 on thematic, 50, uh, 25 on strategy. Came out in 2017. It's from a publisher, Chip Theory Games. It is a labor of love. It is a crazy, wacky, overproduced adventure fantasy themed game with their own like gear locks and inspiration from other MMORPGs and Lord of the Rings and, you know, fantasy tropes or all that stuff are in here. Um, but it takes itself kind of lighter. It's fun. It also has like mechs and technology integrated in their fantasy world. So it's, it's definitely its own thing. It's very weird. Um, but you play as Gearlocks. You, uh, it's like kind of like a dice placement, kind of like a bag dice building management game. Excuse me. Um, where you're using experience points to unlock different dice you can roll. And, you know, 
or choose to place on certain sides. And we're, we're fighting against baddies and tyrants. Uh, and all of your characters and enemies and figures in the game are not standees. They're not miniatures. They are on, you know, weighted premium poker chips. Uh, you know, similar to the ones that were made popular by Splendor. Uh, if anyone's played that game over the years, uh, other companies have started, you know, putting them into games because, you know, fans seem to like them. You don't have to paint them. Um, they feel good on neoprene. The game is completely waterproof and windproof. The cards in the game are PVC plastic. The reference sheets are PVC plastic, not paper. Um, the uh, character boards and the, and the battle mats and stuff are all neoprene with stitched edging. And the, like I said, the figures are all premium poker chips. So the game weighs a ton. It's a very high quality game, but that's why I say it's overproduced because obviously you could make the game way less expensive, just including some standees and, you know, some paper mats to play on or cardboard all over the place. But there's no cardboard or paper in the, in the box other than the box itself or, and the rule book. Um, so it's like this premium, expensive, heavy, kind of luxury board gaming, modern board gaming item. But the um, complexity of the game, as you see, is a 3.85. It, it matches the complexity of the quality of content. So some people are like, ah, I don't want to get into the game, it's so expensive. And I say, go look at Kickstarter. Um, any Kickstarter game that's this heavy and this big and this much content, they're all in that price range. So it's like, but you are paying for the premium quality of the feel of clanking chips, sliding them around on neoprene, shuffling plastic cards. All, all that stuff is like its own little, kind of like hard to describe, but um, bonus to spending that kind of money on a game like this. But like I said, 3.85, it's deep, it's rich, lots of strategy. There is a meaty, heavy game to this. It's not, you're not just buying, you know, a super light game that's overproduced, you know, not much game, but lots of, you know, c content of physical components, as a lot of Kickstarters do, right? They're mediocre, kind of lame games, but they're filled with lots of plastic boxes and pretty dice and stuff. Um, this is not that. This is like, a, this game you need to spend the time and dive in. It's not a game you should let collect dust on your shelf because um, it's, it's a pricey game and, and it's going to wreck your shelf after a while if you just leave it sitting there. So you have to take it off every now and then and play it so that it doesn't wreck your shelves. Um, yeah, move it around on different yeah, shelves, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, because it is heavy. <laughs> and that's not even with the trove chest. Um, so yeah. Anyways, that's too many bones. Uh, go look into it or watch us play it today, but today we're playing with spoiler stuff, so I'd recommend go watching one of our other streams, our earlier streams. Check the playlist links that are in the video description down below this video. You can go watch some of our earlier playthroughs explaining the game more, how it works, some of the, the new stuff in the core set, or, or some of the um, basic stuff in the core set, how it works, those gear locks and things. Uh, this is not a video to teach you how to play too many bones. This is a video just to explore this content um, from the Automaton of Shale. Which is this, okay? This is the Too Many Bones, the Automaton of Shale. This is on chiptheorygames.com forward slash store. I've linked this down below if you're curious what the heck this thing is to look more into it without watching any further with spoilers. Uh, looks like it's 65 US dollars. I believe that's what that is. So like 80-ish Canadian plus shipping and all that stuff. Um, and yeah, it is a pop-up book. So here's, here's the images you get on the website. So it should be pretty spoiler free. It comes in a box and we'll, we'll, we'll open it here. I have the box on the table. Um, it comes in a box. It's a pop-up book in the box, which has pop-up pages like so. Oh man, this is spoilery a bit, but you're not seeing the content that's hidden. So this is kind of the stuff we're going to see today is that kind of thing. Um, but that's what it is. So it's like half promo, half expansion. There is gameplay content, which is why we're doing a playthrough today. Just so you know. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. Uh, Tara says, how does the coffee promo card thing work? Does it come in the coffee or point based? then they send after earning. I don't know, like I said, coffee's not available in Canada. I've never ordered it, I don't know. I just remember watching them explain it before it came out, saying that they were hoping to have, you know, entice you to buy coffee constantly. They were gonna have a variety of promos that they just kind of attached to it or something. I think Tiny has answered, says, the card slash chip is sent with a coffee, coffee themed card and one of eight gear lock skeleton chips. Oh, okay, okay. So it must be in there. Oh, okay. So the card is the same, but you could collecting chips. Like I just pictured it as like booster packs, right? Like you're buying this coffee and like you're trying to collect the set of something, which is genius. Like that is genius yeah, to it do. Yeah, it's genius. It's just the fact I can't get it in Canada means I save thousands of dollars. <laughs> so thank you, Chip Theory Games, for not making it available to me because you would have made lots of money off me already. Um, but anyways, not all you haven't already. <laughs> <laughs> I know that was a question. Did you go for the all-in for Unbreakable? 
I don't know. I don't Everything, think so. Too many, all the new stuff, right? I think I did the gameplay all, all in whatever the that game was. Stuff. Yeah. yeah, and then I added some things like adding the containers for the trove chest. But there's a video of me um, going over the Kickstarter and saying what I was backing, and we backed it, I think, live on stream. So you can go check that out. I don't remember. That was a while ago. My memory's not the greatest. Plus, backing things on Kickstarter happens every now and then, and I kind of forget what I backed. Like today, we're looking up Old Sworn. Didn't even oh, know yeah, we, Yogi was here. Yeah, we, we didn't even know what we backed for Old Sworn. I was like, what do we back for this thing? I'm like, yeah, I, I don't know. I think just the base <laughs> game. I don't know what comes with it. How do I know? That was like that was like 15 years ago when we backed Old Sworn. Like, how am I supposed to know? Yogi asked a question yesterday during yeah, my yeah. pain stream, and I didn't know the answer, so I asked him, and I remembered this morning when we were talking. So, yeah. Yogi, the answer to your question about the armory stuff is we did not order that. Yeah, yeah. No <laughs> thanks. No thanks. We'll talk more about that on the Old Sworn streams when the eventually happen. <laughs> yeah, but just to answer your um, question from yesterday. But yeah. <sighs> Omar says, my outer box was a bit smashed when it came, same. but the inside seems fine. Yep, same. I have scratches on the cover of my book, but again, I have another one coming, so I'll just keep whichever one's better and throw the other one away. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, Tiny says, free shipping for orders over $200, so that's only like 15 bags of coffee. Uh, no, <laughs> see, that's the problem, Tiny. We don't, also in Canada, we get screwed on that kind of shipping rate stuff, so we don't, we don't have all the cool US benefits for Chip Theory Games fans, so like, I know that Chip Theory Games has lots of U.S. hardcore fans, but like, you know, it's it's more expensive up in Canada to buy their stuff, less available, and it's actually cheaper to buy it through our local retailers here. There's a few stores here that stock too many bone stuff, um, so I kind of buy stuff through them, but they don't carry everything, so um, that's just the way I go. So if you live in Canada, check out 41games.ca, I think it is, and, and Board Game Bliss, um, you know, support some Canadian game stores, I guess. Um, but if, if if the stuff is out of stock with Chip Theory, sometimes you can find it at those web stores too. Um, those are two stores that are based out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, just so you guys know. There might be other retailers that carry the stuff. Um, but yeah, so. Uh, but we don't get flat rate shipping stuff, so I kind of have to wait sometimes in the past. Like Undertow, for example, the stuff I'm playing with today. Uh, I wasn't able to get Undertow through Chip Theory Games web store for years. It felt like it was out of stock. It was probably only months. Um, but it eventually they had uh, the original, like, printing of undertow which had like you know miss cards that were miscoded and stuff and i probably have some errata issues on sheets and things but uh to get a copy of undertow i ordered it through a retailer in canada that had some original printing stock and uh, i paid less for it and then also didn't have to pay shipping so that was nice um but again i just had to wait and yeah it's hard to find their games because they don't print they don't overprint a lot because they don't want to like put a bunch of money into warehouses um of storing stuff right so they basically most of the way people get stuff through chip three games is through their crowdfunding campaigns and that's what they hope you do because then they can do larger print runs um and then they they tack their store stock onto those print runs and then that's what they have so a lot of the times chip three stuff is out of stock and it's very frustrating but that's just because like they prioritize the print run that comes with every crowdfunding campaign and they only do like two of those a year so there's still just like a kind of smaller publisher that uses crowdfunding as like their they don't use it fully as a pre-order system but they do so they they say they don't but they do because they use it as a pre-order system for you to pre-order past content so and they make a lot of money doing that they make a lot of orders doing that that inflates their crowdfunding um support so like let's say they did a, a, a campaign for automaton of shale you know maybe 50% of the people back in the project might be back in that, but then the other 50 are there just to get all in on too many bones content, which happens a lot because that is your best way to get it shipping price usually. So if you're interested in any Chip Theory Games content, you're kind of best to wait for it to come to a crowdfund campaign. That's usually the best price, the best shipping rates and all that if you order it through there. The only problem is you have to wait like a year or so till they actually print it and it comes out through the production of the Kickstarter process, right? Or the crowdfunding process. Which I think they'll be having a, a crowdfunding project this month. Didn't they say yeah, for their... Yeah, uh, another, there's another Burn Cycle burn project cycle. coming in July. Um, so if you're looking to grab some Too Many Bones content and you're okay waiting like a year to get it, um, otherwise you have to wait till stuff is in their web store. It might already be in their web store. That's maybe a better way to do it. But just keep in mind, I know I'm going to get those questions coming in the comments. I do every time I play this damn game. People are commenting or messaging me going, how did you buy this? How can I buy this? It's out of stock. Where do I get it? How, like I have, I've, I bought something. It hasn't shown up for months. It's like, this is how they work. It, it comes every twice a year. They get like a big shipment of things. Right. So that's just how it is. So just keep that in mind as, as you get into it. They don't have a, they don't have the whole supply chain thing locked down. Um, cause it's kind of like a very expensive product. Right. Um, but yeah. All right. <laughs> 
Dan says every Rod's Gaming Table stream should come with a spoiler warning because I feel spoiled every time I'm here. Oh, Dan. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, Hi, Dan. Let's get to it. Automaton of Shale. Uh, can I do this? Yes. All right. Here it is. Okay. Like I said, it came in this box. And yes, my box was, like, as you can see, a little crushed in the top. It's a little scratched. You can see there's dents and, you know, weight was put on it. It was packed nice, though, but just in, like, bubble wrap. So, obviously, at the factory or however this was made. Yeah, it's it looks a little abused and bruised. Because the problem is uh, the lid doesn't uh, actually fit on. Oh, so it... Yeah, it's like, it, it's like this bottom part has come out, so the lid falls in, and because the book inside doesn't fill up the whole space, they should have actually had a foam top on the, uh, a foam thing on the top, which they usually do. They have a foam thing on the bottom, but they should have had one on the top to kind of fill in the extra air, which would have made the lid a little more durable and wouldn't have caved in maybe, right? But again, they'll fix that probably on a future print run. If anyone's been with Chip3 Games for years, you know their first print runs of things are always full of mistakes, printing issues, glue issues, card issues, dice wearing off. I've had all the experiences of that stuff, um, so I can speak from a consumer point of view. Um, telling you the truth is they usually take a few print runs of things to kind of lock things in and learn. Um, yeah, hopefully they get better at that as they go forward and hire somebody for quality control and that kind of stuff. But again, they're a small publisher. Keep that in mind. Um, it's a thing. Uh, yeah, so just so you see, so this is what you guys are talking about in the chat. Like, I have like these big scratches. Like, it looks like I don't know, this bunch of big giant scratches. I don't know how that would have happened. Yeah, um, because there's no. But like, I'm yeah. thinking even at the factory, like I, I don't know, like no, like maybe these were all shrink wrapped, and some other factory they were cutting them open and like putting them in the box. Oh, I, yeah. I don't know, but it looks like like exact when I have kind of like scratches. Uh, I'm not sure, and they're like almost straight. Like it's weird. Anyways. Um, so yeah, I noticed that as soon as I opened it, I was like, uh, okay, how does that get damaged in shipping? That's weird. And it's not like there's stuff on the yeah, bottom. Yeah, that's what I thought. Maybe yeah, I was... thought maybe the bottom of the lid hit in and scratched it, but it's like, that doesn't make sense either. It's not like, there's like a scratch this long, and a scratch this long. Yeah, no big deal. Like, I, I don't care personally, it's still gonna look cool on the shelf. But again, it, it is a premium product, so you, you gotta like, you know, point those things out. But again, contact chiptheorygames.com forward slash support. They, they will usually help you out like very well of great customer service there um, So when I, I tell you these things happen, it, it always ended in a good good way They like even I had miscut cards on my first place where I didn't even know they were miscut and I had an employee of the company uh, Emailing me on the side sending me replacements and promos and all this stuff to help make it right uh, And I didn't even reach out to them So I was like kind of shocked by that because I didn't even notice it was a problem. So yeah So just let you know if you have any issues with your stuff, they have a support queue. They have support staff they have a ticketing system, they'll help you, they'll fix, replace, all that stuff. They, they have a proper customer service. They got that on lock for sure. Um, and they only get better is what I hear. So there is in here, um, in this little box, there is a do not open until instructed little plastic. Oh, it's sealed? It's one of their, you know, quality little deck boxes. I, I love feel? these things. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's so, a yeah, there's cards. a whole ton okay. of cards I was just in like, here. is there like two or three cards in there? So or? I'm, I'm putting that back in. Obviously, I haven't opened it. Uh, and then we're going to take this box. I don't know. We'll open it at the end of the stream when they instruct us to. If they instruct us to, I'm assuming when you're done, it's kind of like the, the Aeon's End Legacy kind of stuff where it's like, here's a pack of crap you can have after you're done playing it. Like a legacy game, you know, they do that kind of stuff. In general, you get stuff at the end you can play with in your game sometimes. Okay. De depending on the legacy game, I guess. So I'll put that to the side and we'll get our Automaton of Shale. Um, here it is. The Amanatan of Shale Papa Book Paper Engineering by Sam Ida. Illustrations by Anthony Letourneau. That's the same illustrator that does all the Too Many Bones, Burn Cycle. I Papa love his Marcus art. art. Yeah, it's great art. Uh, you can find live streams of like when Gen Con Online was happening. You can find live streams of him making uh, art digitally and stuff like live on stream, which is oh, so cool so to watch. So cool, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So cool. So cool to see his process. Um, and the writer is Logan Gianni, graphic design, Sean Boyke, Boyke? I'm sorry, guys. And there's the game contents, of all these people working on it. Mysterious Box by Kiara Foss of the Enigma Emporium. What is this? There's some trickery going on here. Hmm. 
Now, I'm assuming there's something I'm not supposed to talk about that, mm. you know, the first rule of Fight Club is don't talk about Fight Club. Um, but again, I haven't really looked at this product closely, so uh, I'll worry about that later. But, yeah. but fans of Chip Theory Games and Too Many Bones know what I'm talking about. Yeah, we, we usually spend a weekend well, yeah, night yeah, yeah. not talking a about Friday it. Night. Usually we spend a Friday night obsessing over what I'm talking about. That or not exist. talking about it. Yeah, we're not talking about it, and we try to solve it and figure it out, and like, yeah, it's fun. Anyways, mm -hmm. all right. It's a great date night. Well, our daughter gets involved too. Like, yeah, we start, that's true. <laughs> yeah, we're like... That's true. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. The game within the game. Okay, here we are at the Tipsy Troll. Sorry, I'm just, just looking, looking. So the Tipsy Troll, okay, I can see there's something up here. Like, uh, I can see this is like, uh, you know, it's a pop-up book. Like, I know, I, but I'm always I afraid in pop-up okay, books listen, that something's going to break. Yeah, and, and I haven't, like, literally, these hands have not touched a pop-up book since they were, like, this big. Uh, when I was a little kid in grade school at the library, I remember blown away by these things. I don't think I really owned any, but I remember our librarian when we were like grade one and two and stuff. I remember showing us these things and opening them in the library and thinking it was so cool. Um, but I can't think of any other ones I've come across in my life. Even our daughter, I don't, I think, don't think really so. owned any or we didn't buy any really no. um, growing up. They're not a common thing, I feel. This is not something you see anymore. Like, you go buy a kid's books and they're just books, you know? They're like, Papa books are probably there, I just don't notice them. Um, but it's something I totally forgot about, but the, the folks over at Chip3 Games thought, you know what? You know what would be cool for Too Many Bones? Let's make a pop-up book. Like, who does that? It's just crazy. So, bear with me. I am a, a noob when it comes to this stuff. I also, you just said that and it made me think, think of all the things that don't actually get made from them if this is the kind of stuff that they do put out to us, what? right? What All the ideas that they have that yeah. never become anything. Yeah, they're nut bars there. Yeah, they're, like, they're like, something's wrong I love with them it. for sure. I love it. <laughs> they're a little wacky. I don't know what they're putting in the coffee there, but it's something. They're, they're spicing up their coffee there in Minnesota. I, I don't know what's going on, um, but yeah. <laughs> are we supposed to start on this page or are we supposed to start with that card? Uh, oh yeah, let's, let's go to the card. Yeah, Just in I'm case like, it tells us what to do. Yeah, yeah, so this would be in here. Okay, this was supposed to be in this pack of cards, I believe, but it was accidentally put in the last page. And this is like what's going to help you get your gameplay set up. Okay, so the Automaton Adventure setup. The cards and chips in this book can be played as a single adventure using either the base Too Many Bones game or Undertow or both. So we're doing with mainly just Undertow stuff. Okay, to do so, we recommend that you follow the story playing the encounters in the order you come across them in this book. Okay. Set up your game as normal with the following modifications. The automaton will be your tyrant. You will not get to see the card or chip until you come to it in the story. Uh, okay. The details you need for setup and your adventure are nine progress points. We have 11 days to complete this. And the baddies we should use are, I believe it's orcs. I forget the yellow ones, what they are. Uh, beasts and scales. Um, but in Undertow, it doesn't come with the orcs or the blue with the axe there. So I'm assuming we just ignore that baddie type. I don't know if it'll mess it up. I hopefully they don't start asking for orcs because it assumes you might only own Undertow. So I'm curious to see how it handles that. Um, but we do have the... Right? Undertow doesn't come with orcs, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I don't think so. I... I... Yeah, just check the... Uh, actually, we can check here. But that threw me off. Um, it doesn't... Oh, yeah. Here. It's right here. Where is it? Under baddies. Um, page 7. Scroll oh. down just a little bit. But in here... Because in here, no, you can't really tell because it does list all the baddies. Like if well, you... you could tell by looking at the tyrants, right? So the tyrants oh, yeah. call for beast and goblins? Is it goblins? Uh, actually... I think it's goblins or the yellow, right? I know they have mischief. I don't know. So scales. So if we look at the goblin queen, she has scales and mischief. we got scales and beast for nobulus. He has more, though. Um, but Volkesh has scales and beast. So yeah, I feel like... Yeah, and in here it just shows the three icons. But you can look at the baddies. Oh yeah, this so, is blown up bigger, yeah, yeah, so it's look. easier to see. We have beast, beast, beast. I think those are like goblin, trolls. Goblin, oh, goblin. goblins or something. 
Scales, scales, scales. Yeah. Yeah, we don't have. Yeah, I don't. I don't see any. Oh, here's your one pointers. Yeah, so there's no orcs in in undertow, so I guess we just ignore that. Okay. Yeah, we'll just ignore the first symbol there. So hopefully there isn't snares that are talking about go find this orc and go find that orc. Because if that's the case, then this first sentence is kind of wrong. Because then we need the base game of under to or too many bones, sorry. Okay, it says do not build an encounter deck. The book will give you your encounters in the order you should complete them. As normal, in the event you run out of encounters, take a random encounter from the game box to finish your adventure. So I have the undertow encounters nearby in case we need to pull from them, but we shouldn't. Uh, anytime the book gives you loot or baddies, place them on top of the respective deck or stack. That's so you end up finding that loot easier or finding that encounter next in your encounter deck or um, the baddie, fighting the baddies that come in this box. Because, you know, if you shuffle them into your stack and you own too many bones, undertow, splice and dice, 40 days of Daylor, and eventually the unbreakable stuff and the 40 waves of Daylor and all that stuff or whatever it's called, you throw all that in together, your one point baddie stack is going to be like you know, this big, uh, and trying to find the stuff from this game will get shuffled in, you'll lose it, right? And you may never see it. So we're going to put it on top of the stack, I'm assuming is why they do that. A couple of notes. One encounter includes a water option. If you do not have undertow, you must choose the land option for this encounter. But we do have the undertow mat nearby. If when we come into that one, and we can, you know, see what's up, vote with the chat or something, and see what you guys want us to play out of that encounter. And we'll use whichever side of the... Um, Undertow mat for that one. After playing this adventure, feel free to mix the components of this book into your game. Now, they did give us this on the back because part of Too Many Bones, I believe, uh, is why they did this, is part of Too Many Bones, the first step of setup in any Too Many Bones adventure, session, game, campaign, whatever, is, you know, well, not campaign, I guess that's not true, um, but is when you're doing a standalone session of Too Many Bones, a regular game of Too Many Bones, grab your tyrant, Read the front and back of the tyrant, get to know the tyrant die, the abilities, the baddie types, you know, so you know what is you're building for in the game. Because you don't have a fun time playing too many bones if you start buying skills and, and you know, uh, stats and holding on to uh, loot items that don't even matter in the final battle against a tyrant. Because usually you might only have one or two games uh, or one or two attempts to beat that tyrant and there's like small margin of error, right? So... That's if you're playing on the regular difficulties and stuff. If you play on an easier mode, you can get a little more loose in, with it, um, which we're playing on the medium difficulty today, so it's going to be a little more loose. Um, but they give you this information, I believe, so you kind of know how it works. And I know it's like he, they don't have a tyrant die. They roll a d6, it says right here. So it's determined by the d6. It's placed on its ship when it enters the battle mat. Or maybe it has its own tyrant die. I don't know. But it says here it can do different modes. So this is the information they've given us. So depending on the d6... Uh, it could be in poison mode. After Automaton resolves its role, place poison to effect on each of its targets that, lose, that lost HP. Creation mode. After the Automaton resolves its role, add a number of baddie points to the bottom of the battle queue, equal the total damage roll on its attack. Defense mode. The Automaton's defense stat is temporarily increased by number equal to party size. So that will be two, because we have a party of two today. Uh, heal mode. After the Automaton resolves its role, all other baddies on the battle mat heal to their max HP. Electric mode. After the automaton is attacked, it deals two damage back to its attacker, so long as it was not defeated. <coughs> Bless you. Unleash mode. The automaton does not roll attack dice on his turn and instead deals three true damage to all gear locks. Then set the die to one. So this is all the information they give us on this starter card. So take that for what you will. But we know the baddie types. So we just set up all the undertow baddies. And Some uh, of those, uh, was it orcs that we don't have? Maybe they're in the book. <gasps> but I then why do they it. put it on here? Who cares then, right? I think you put it on here because if you own too many bones, include those also. If you don't, don't. Yeah, you're but right. But they should have said that in the text, right? Like, you know. So this could be a long one because it's nine progress and 11 days, which, you know, there are shorter ones. There are slightly longer ones uh, in, in the world of too many bones for tyrant play session length. So hopefully we can get nine progress points, but you have only 11 days. So, so are we going to get some chances to get two progress points in one? Are we going to lose and fail out? Because once you miss out on two progress points... Yeah, you're in trouble. You can't beat the tyrant. You don't have enough to do it, I yeah. don't think, right? So that's why we're going to play on medium mode. So hopefully we can get at least see the tyrant. Whether we win against tyrants, fine. If we don't, we're just about discovery today. Today's yeah. all about the discovery of the content uh, in this expansion. Okay. Um, so again, I'm playing with Nugget. 
Pick it. Mel's playing pick it. Yep. And we're, do we want to do our heroic stuff right now? To get our one extra health and our one extra free training point, or not yet? Uh, we probably yeah, need yeah. to do that before we see no, anything, we right? Um, also, for the day counter, uh, since we're not using the adventure mat, because I'm assuming it doesn't really work for this, maybe? Or I guess we could have, and then just found out where 9 and 11 were on the mat. But it's okay, I, I didn't want to put the mat on the screen. So I'm just going to put this over here, and we're going to track our days on here with a blue die. Okay, and so you guys can kind of see it. And then we'll track our progress with the green dice, okay? So that's how we'll do it. Um, you know, I guess I could have put it on the screen with text, but whatever, it's it's fine. That's We're okay. good. We're good. Okay. Did you get, here's extra health for you. So extra health, okay. So we get one health, and then we can spend one training point. Um, hmm. And uh, I start with something. Oh yeah, oh where's yeah. my sheet? My sheet is here. Do you have it? Yeah, you should I, have yours over there. I right? have mine. I'm gonna just take a dex. Oh, I get the sling stones is starts in my thing. So that I can roll my three dice right away. Uh I think I take my long blade to start. I don't I don't know. I could just take a dex or another health. Yeah, I'll take the long blade. Uh okay. Dominic, you are here just in time. Yep, perfect timing. <laughs> Bob, get out of here. <laughs> Muggles. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, let's uh, discover what's going on here. So I'm, I'm assuming, I don't know what's going on here. I think we just opened this. There's a little packet here, which you're supposed to like read the stuff that's in here, and I think it's got your cards and things. And I'm trying not to rip anything. So you just like pull it out of being tucked under this, the triangle there. Oh! Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. <laughs> okay. Oh, it's stuck in there, I see. Okay, so from the waters of Deadlock Bay, the Ebon Heart so far away, report was sent without delay, fast as a falling star. A cruel attack launched without call, goblins strained to hold the wall, but all of Warspire soon did fall, came news to Obendar. The council's verdict came apace, orders issued to start the chase, a gearlock band was sent to trace what evil lay afar. <laughs> clever, clever, okay. clever. Okay, what do we get? Oh, we're starting off with some loot. And we don't get to look at it, right? We just get to place it on top of our decks. I, yeah, I think, so, well, yeah, I think that's how it works, right? Yeah, I don't think you get to look at it. Yeah, so let's, 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 leave, it, let's leave it fun. Oh, man, so good. So four loot, of course, because you could play up to four players. Okay. So I'm assuming it's four copies of the same thing or some cool thematic stuff. Okay, Mel's just putting on the top of our... Uh, we have the... This is only Undertow loot and only Undertow Trove loot. There might be some promo loot mixed in. Um, They're slightly different color, which I don't yeah, like when they do. Okay. Put them on top. I know, matter. but when you mix them in later. Yeah, but that's that's the problem with this. All of our too many bone stuff. We've been owning it for years, so they keep changing the style of the art, the darkness, the coating, the thickness yeah. of the cards. Yeah, they all start to not match, which is lame. We need to just leave them or something. It's fine. <laughs> I'm not gonna remember which ones are dark because there are probably other ones we have that are dark. So yeah, it's there is. All right. Okay. Uh, whoa. Okay, so these encounters. Yeah, just go on the top. So we have. It looks like day one, two, and threes. So these will just be on the top of our encounter deck, which I'll just kind of put right here, I guess. I, I don't know, I should have got a, another deck holder, maybe would have been better, um, but it is fine. All right, uh, oh, let's pull this. So let's put this back, I guess. Okay. And then this, we're gonna move across. Oh, I see. <gasps> so on fire. So it, it was it was all good and all of a sudden nighttime came and there's like looks like a village. The moon the moon came out and there's a village on fire. Uh oh. Okay, let's see if I can do this. <laughs> I'll do it again slow. As time is passing. The fires were seen in the distance. And the moon slowly came out. All right. Oh, no. And then over here, I think this just is an, a door to open. 
<laughs> we got, uh, it looks like a, a little party happening here in the uh, Tipsy Troll, uh, Tipsy Troll Tavern. While the town is burning. Are there any like hidden stuff in the art? Do we have like, uh, is there some secrets? I see like a little goblin. What's that little goblin doing there? It looks like a minion. There is something. I'm telling you, there's something here. Anyways, uh, there's a little rat there. I'm sure there's Easter eggs hidden all up in here. I think this is just to hide the components behind. Yeah. But this is like kind of 3D. That's cool. Uh, so I don't know that you go on I think yet. we just leave it, yeah, right? I wonder if those will tell us when. Yeah, I think, I think we, leave we just leave it. I think we leave it. Uh, yeah, Doc, we reached 15K subs. We did. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for your support. Thank you, thank you, Doc. Hello, hello. Hope all is well. <sighs> Steph, what's up? Uh, okay. So let's do this. All right. Uh, so. News from the north. Early in the morning, too early, a furious rapping on the door interrupts a peaceful slumber. Waiting on the stoop shifting from one foot to another is an emissary from the Gearlock Council. Nobulus's latest intern timidly delivers tidings of some sort of attack on Warspire. And the council has called up the occupants of this address for another mission. This one investigatory. Investigatory? I don't know how to say that word properly. Uh, the intern is greeted by grumbling assent and a slammed door. All right, so we got peaceful and peaceful. So as you would expect on a day one, this is just about building up uh, our options. Go back to sleep, <laughs> which does get us each a loot to start, which we know there is custom loot in this little oh. deck of fun now. Uh, the story, the flavor text is, what is done is done. A few more hours of sleep isn't going to hurt. After all, Warspire can't get any more burn to the ground, can it? <laughs> Increase each Gearlock's health stat by one. So they're already like kind of really beefing us up here. So maybe we didn't need to play on the medium mode, but it's fine. It's fine. All right. Or, or option two, listen to the intern and spend a bit of time preparing for your journey. And you guys know us. We love these training points earned from this choice. I may not be used to increase stats. Oh, so we have to take some. So they, they know that's the way to kind of like FYI, anyone's played too many bones. Uh, if you're ever not sure where to spend a training point, just just bump up one of your stats and you'll win the game. That's kind of how, that's kind of like a little flaw of the game. Um, I like it. I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'm not opposed to this because getting some of our dice early, our skill dice, is not a bad thing. But yeah. But I don't know what that loot does. And we would get, so we would, technically the first one would give us kind of like one training point that we have to use on health. But we did play on medium mode and we already buffed up our health, so I think we would just ignore the first one. But I do want to see that loot very bad. But I feel like there's going to be another option for sure for loot. Oh. But yeah, when we always play too many bones, anyone who's watched our playthroughs before, when you see training points in the beginning, you just buy the, take the training points. Especially two. But but this is the thing, though. Then they, they've also said they can't use them to increase stats. So yeah, like, but I have I have dice, skill dice that I would take right off. I know, but you can't roll them because you don't have enough decks, probably. Well, you would you, I might. you would have it because your defense dice get and your active slot at the start of the game. Yeah. But me, on the other hand, if I take more skill dice, I, I probably wouldn't be able to roll them. Yeah, because right now your dex is three. Yeah, I wish I didn't take this then, and I would have spent that other training point there, but I didn't know, so that's fine. Also, the, the stat die that I would take will, based on what is rolled, go into my lock slot and stay oh, there. Yeah, so good too. I would take, yeah, I would take some of those. So I'd, hopefully. I mean, I don't think we need to rock, paper, scissor because I think I know what I want. And I think we're on the same page here. No. We're not? You want the loot? Yeah. Oh, I don't. Yeah, for, for two reasons here. So this is fun because they've given us special loot and I want to see what's on that loot. Yeah, and, but what if it's a total health, troll? But bumping up your health is is you want to have higher health like in the game. So like that's fine to take health at the beginning. Uh -huh. That's a very good choice. Taking a couple skill dice uh, is not usually like the most stable start, right? Because if you're not rolling them right away, it's like they're kind of a waste. Um, but I think we have a day two and a day three encounter, so maybe they'll give us more chances to, but we always know day twos are usually fights, so I have a feeling we're going to have a battle right after this, so what would you want for that battle to start you off? I feel like some extra health could be good the whole way through the campaign, but the training points, buying some stat dice will be good later on as the campaign goes, but not as beneficial right away. I just really want to see the loot. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw this to the chat because you want the bottom option. Yep. I want the top option. Fair. 
and we've both stated our case. <laughs> Bob also says, so Layla and Bob say raw paper scissors. We'll maybe do that for another option. <laughs> now, now we have the chance to pull the chat. You yeah, guys, you, guys you guys are, know, right? I want one, he wants one. You guys can help influence that however you choose. Well, I was going to say, they're also spending the time here <laughs> oh, yeah. playing along with us, watching with us, experiencing them with, with us. So, like, get involved, like, have some fun. Like, your say yeah. is important, too. We, we respect that you guys are even here. So, like, why not, why not value your opinion also? Uh, Yo, he says settle it with a knife fight in a phone booth. <laughs> I guess loot or training points. Yeah. I was going to word it like sleep or, you know, prepare, but listen. it's like. Yeah. Okay, so I put a poll in the live chat. You guys can vote. Get into the chat and you can pick your option. Are we doing the top option, which is the loot bonus? Here basically and the health or are we doing the bottom option which is training points which we can't use on stats which i think both options are actually good hopefully the loot of is, course is they're good. Both good of course they're both good yeah the loot might suck that's the other yeah other they may thing. be trolling us yeah they could be trolling us but i, I just want to know like i need to know we could get that loot on the next battle we just earn it anyway who cares yeah but, um the other thing is uh stats are these if anyone who doesn't know uh, what it means by stats, you're not allowed to increase your health, your attack, your defense, or your dexterity. And dexterity is the amount of dice you can roll on a turn or in move and or roll dice with that's your limit. Um, so they're only allowing us to unlock skill dice, which are usually situational um, from a generalized high level view. They're usually s could be very powerful, but they could literally, you're, it's a dice game. So you could buy a die that has the best effect so op in a certain situation but a is that situation going to come up and b are you ever going to roll that side on a d6 know. you know sometimes you could literally go through a whole adventure never rolling the side you want to roll and the, it's just very frustrating so um and, and you gotta understand it's part of the fun of the game right it's, mm -hmm. like, it's got luck base right we got cards we got dice it's the, it's the way it goes and and stacks of chips that we don't know that have been shuffled so we just got to solve the puzzle every time and, and deal with it day by day go day by day so this is obviously day one, so we have a day one on our encounter. We will earn a progress point either way. Uh, we'll earn a progress point no matter what towards getting the nine we need to be able to fight the tyrant. All right, I'm going to end the poll. Thank you everyone that voted. And I'm sure there'll be more polls as we go because usually there's choices on the back of the card. Not always. Not always, but we'll, we'll try. Uh... Uh, loot, 68%, training points, 31. Okay. I love how the number is never adds up to 100. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, anyways, 29 votes. Thank you, everyone, that voted. Much appreciated. Uh, so we're going with the loot. So okay. we're going to increase our health by one, which is a stat. Which so we is, bump this up. Yeah, you, know, you bump, bump this up, up and you also take health. an additional health chip underneath your gear lock. So we're a little more solid. So if we do get some hits or you don't have your defense dice rolling for you good or you're building up your bones. So I'm at seven. That's good. Yeah, like, and so six. we're, we're okay. like, that's what I'm saying. The long term, like, we can kind of ignore health for a while. Yeah, I, I'm getting, that's what I'm saying. This is still a good option yeah, as yeah. long as this loot is good. Okay, All right. So we think they're both the same. So I'm going to just give you one to, I guess, show and then I'll peek they at They might not be the same. I'll peek in mine. Oh, you didn't shuffle ones. them, right? Nope. I just put them on top exactly the same. So we each get a loot. So we're only going to see the top two cards off the deck. Uh, okay, this is not going to work on here, but uh, we got a bad day ball. Two uses. Choose a one point baddie on the battle mat and roll the d6. On a two plus, remove the baddie from the battle mat and place it on this card. Oh, I see. It's like a Pokeball. Yeah. I, I get it. It's a steampunk Pokeball in there in the art. I get it now. Uh, on your turn, in any battle, you may add the baddie from this card to the top of the battle queue. This card can only hold one baddie at a time. If you discard this card with the baddie in it, the baddie goes to the defeated stack. It's super effective. Okay. Hmm. Okay, I have to say mine is different. Oh, cool. So it's not the same. Yeah, hold it up. Go ahead. I have a big rock, <laughs> which is a single use. Open any locked trove loot. <laughs> Very creative. You found a big rock. Uh, what does it say on the flavor text? 
Uh, when you blew your entire art budget on fantabulous contraption. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I found a big rock and you found a pokeball. Okay, we got it. Got it. This is where we're going here. So there's always like, uh, what is that called? Breaking the fourth wall, kind of funny jokes using uh, pop culture in the game and stuff. Like I said, the, the lore in this doesn't take itself too seriously. It's definitely got some funny jokes in throughout. Um, I didn't. I didn't look at my text. I, yeah, I pet didn't rock. look at my text at first. I just quickly like peeked at it to see if it was the same as what you had. And when I saw that it was a big rock, I'm like, oh, mine is a troll one. It's gonna do nothing. It's gonna be like that. Ah. <laughs> nope, this break. is just a heavy item that you'll have to throw away at some point. Nope, you can break the lock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It takes up two loot slots. Does nothing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, that's funny. All right. Okay. Uh, so we get one progress point. I'll track it, like I said, with the green dice on our little day counter here. <laughs> okay. So, and then uh, we go to reward phase, which we just did. Then recovery phase or whatever. Mm -hmm. We don't need to heal. We could scout. Yeah, I'm going to scout, uh, I think, just or, to have some knowledge. Or look for better loot, which would actually yeah, draw more. the other ones. I'm going to scout because I want more knowledge because if this next one is a battle. But then again, they're probably going to give us chips that go on the top. And, and That's it, true. It doesn't matter. But, but even so, we usually have more than one chip in a battle. <sighs> I'm going to scout. You can do whatever, but so I got two. So I can look at a one pointer. So a blind strike of one and dodge two health. He rolls one attack die. So dodge uh, is the one that they don't get damaged by attack dice, but they can be damaged by skill dice. So I have my long blade. I could deal with him uh, and blind strike just means he basically deals a regular damage to the strongest unit adjacent okay. to him before movement. And your your dagger, does it have a two on it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But who cares? Like, it's it, it never misses, so it takes two attacks to I'm actually to going to put him to the back, because maybe later we'll have more dice that are non-attack dice. There is also the whole undertow thing, I remember, of the theme of the beast types working together off yeah. the uh, one mind ability. So it could allow all beasts on the mat to attack, but, you know, trying to keep them separate. It's kind of like the orcs from... The base game that you want to kind of keep separate because they have that whole i forget what it is like raid or something where like they the orcs get worse the more that are on the mat together yeah um so okay. yeah i put them at the back because hopefully we can get more skill diced that okay. can do some damage what are you going to do uh I'll, I'll just um are you scouting or do you want to i kind of want to use this as funny because i could i could get a one point baddie off the board early and we put it out later when we you know need to fight but I'm, i don't really care or you just discard the baddie with that card, and yeah, it, it, it's just defeated. Think. Yeah, true. I'll just keep it. Yeah, let's scout. I don't know. Uh, so I can look it up to a one point baddie. Oh, we found his twin brother. You shuffle that? I did. Okay. I just like. I'll just leave him on top. Okay. So they're not together as sure. much. I don't know. Oh, doesn't Nugget draw an extra loot and pick one? That is true, actually. I forgot that. So should you have had... So... So you would have had the rock? Well, I don't even know who's first player who's drawing loot first. But oh, we'll just I don't say, know. Yeah, You'll sorry. just get the next one and you I can totally look at this one. I totally forgot about the nugget and Nate. Vincent, thank you. Would work on this. I didn't even think. Because it is an encounter reward. So anytime uh, Nugget were to draw uh, one or more loot from encounter rewards, I get an extra and discard one. So we'll get to look at the next one. Oh, man. It's a fan... Oh, I see. Oh, it goes... So the joke makes more sense... When you add, this one should have been the first one in the stack, uh, fantabulous contraption, single use. So it it would cost more to make the art for this one, is what they're saying. They ran out of the budget, so then they, when they came up with the big rock, uh, unexhaust all your skill dice. Oh, really, really heavy. This is the only loot you may have in your loot area. Oh, fantabulous isn't even a word, says Tink. Unexhaust all of your skill dice. This is great for like final boss fight kind of stuff. That's good. Had we. Just had gained two skills dice. Well, you know, I'm, uh, but then this takes up a whole yeah, area. Then you can't carry anything else. I can't, like, at least we saw and it. It's a single use, right? Yeah, so you yeah. only use it one time. This uh, is something you want later in, in the campaign, I think, like in the adventure. I, I don't want to fill up my whole loot slot. I'm, I'm nugget, like, I'm going to be drawing loot like crazy. So, unfortunately, this is like amazing. I'm, I'm looking forward to pulling this in a, an actual game of Too Many Bones. When it's in our loot set, like it, it'll be a fun one to pull, but and that's just discard. Uh, yeah, I'll just discard that. Okay. But yeah, I'll just keep the the pokeball. I mean, the batty ball, um, because I got to catch them all. Uh, okay. Yeah, Yogi, I'm thinking exactly the same thing you were saying. Uh, the card would have been great if you took the two skill dice, but then you wouldn't have gotten the loot. 
Not until next time. Because <laughs> then you have more skill dice on exhaust. But your dagger doesn't exhaust anyways, so... Anyways, all right, anyways. day two. I'll pretend that wasn't an option. All right, day two. Uh, next card. Training for dummies. <laughs> Since the party's already starting late, may as well get a little bit of training in before departing for Warspire. Fortunately, Tink has built training dummies for this exact purpose, capable of bobbing and weaving and taking a bit of abuse in the name of Gearlock Gains. The only question is how rigorous of a workout is needed this morning. Tink programmed multiple settings on these things. Is this cardio? Cardio is supposed to be important, right? <laughs> oh, goodness. So it's land or land, both battles. Okay, first option is fight the dummies, dummy. You flip the switch on the bots that re reads FighterBot 4.0. Place four one-point baddies on baddie ranged positions with one HP each. Distribute number of health chips equal to party size between the baddies as you see fit. Okay, so it's, it's like one of them could be three health or two of them could be two health. Um, and the other ones are one. Okay, that and uh, it says the battle is ended after round three. Encounter success is achieved if battle is won before then. Well, this is one of those okay. ones where you have to try to like yep. wipe them out fast, which yeah, that's the problem. So yes, that first one taking training points to get other skill dice might have sped this up if we took skill dice that allowed us to do damage or extra trickery. But again, you're limited by your decks and either option. So I see what they've done here. Uh, so that one you could get a loot for each of us and a training point for each of us. The second option is dumb down these dummies. You flip the switch on the dummy heads that reads Sput Sputterbot 1.0. Place four one point baddies on baddie range positions with one HP each. Distribute number of health chips equal to party size between the baddies as you see fit. So that's the same, same right? Thing, yep. Battle has ended after round five. Encounter success is achieved if you won before then. So, so it's really just, can we do it in three rounds or five rounds? Yeah. But I don't think we can do it in three rounds. So if we fail, we don't get any of the rewards, right? Right. So we wouldn't get the loot. If we took this first option, we wanted to risk it. We don't get the loot. We don't get the training points. We also don't get the progress point. Right. So we've made it harder to complete the whole campaign or... We take the easier version, which most likely we will win, and we'll just get training points, and we'll probably get our progress. So it's like, do we want to risk it for the extra loot? <laughs> Excuse me. Or not. So that's the thing. So that's what I see here. I'm just trying to think it out. So we have to kill four enemies in three rounds, which is only three attacks for me, three attacks for you, hoping we're successful. I'm only rolling one attack I die. I feel like we can do the top one. I feel like we could. Because you can do tricks with your... Um, my shield bash. But it's still... But you I only still... can do one target per turn. But it's a backup in case you need... Like you miss on your attack dice. Yeah. You could still take out something in, in a round. Yeah. And we have enough health that will survive. So if you, you're spending your defense dice to, to shield bash, you leave yourself open. But I think it's fine because we, we have lots of health. Seven. You have, I have six. You have seven health. So. Yeah, I'm not worried about the health. I'm just worried about the missing on attacks. I, I'm, but you yeah. want to try that one? I don't know. I don't know. Should we put it to the chat? Or I'm, I'm okay either way. But this is the kind of thing you have. To, like, this is a card you can put in your game later. So this is another day two option, which is kind of neat depending... On how many day one in your day one cards you own in your collection, and day two cards like seeing this come up with a different day one, I'm just thinking about adding this to my regular too many bone games and thinking how how neat this one is, yeah, and how it might be different based on the day one you got, you know, and what bad and what what gear locks you're playing, what skill dice you got, did you even get any skill dice? Did you get any stats? Like what did you even get from the first day? Because they're all different, which is neat. I think I would be less scared if I had two attack dice. But I only have one attack die, so if I miss... Yeah, Brett's calling, Brett's calling for the pull. Brett's like, give us the pull. Yeah. All right. It's like, go for the... We might be able to do it, or go for the more sure thing of, like, five rounds. We can probably... We can definitely do it in five rounds. It's do we want the extra loot. So I put a poll in the live chat. Go ahead and vote. Uh, there's the top option or the bottom option. 
You guys choose. We'll, we'll try for either one, whichever one wins. I think we can do the top one. I'm pretty sure. I, I, roll, I have only three decks, though, but I could very much favor attack dice. And I'll roll two attack dice and my long blade, which doesn't miss. So I will for sure... I will for sure take out a baddie every turn, as long as we're, we spread out the HP. The three health one, I probably could eliminate right away. But we don't have to make one three health. We could make. I know if we two did one, them, no, but that might be better but because that might, yeah, based uh, on their skills. Yeah, or or yeah, that's true. Um, but my my die here doesn't miss, and and I could throw this as a single range die, and I could kill one of the one health ones that's far away. Okay, yeah. So I don't need enough decks to move over to it, which is neat. So I, I don't know. Yeah, because the other thing, these are going to be in ranged ranged positions. So we have to spend. So we decks have to, to spend at least them. one. Yep. Yeah. So keep unless that. they're going first and they're going to move down towards us yep. if they're melee. I should have took decks and and not my long blade. Then I would have picked. I would have just said let's take the two training point option for sure. But because I already bought a skill die, I didn't want to. But having three decks means I'm only able to like move up once and then only roll like that plus one attack. You mm -hmm. know. Yep. Um. And then you have to move again, but I don't have to move again. I can work on all the one health ones by from range, and just literally like in you just three need rounds. Bones. In three rounds, one hundred percent, I can kill three one pointers. As long as you get bones, right, for your stones. No, this I can oh, roll you this can by, just itself do that by and itself. it doesn't oh, okay, okay. miss. Okay, okay. Get it? So yep. I'm always doing at least one damage. Okay. For three rounds, you just have to pick up one other baddie, and you might even be able to kill another baddie. I so I really only need to kill two. You know? Yeah, okay. But remember, we have to spend decks to move also. Unless they move to us for the second. Which I should be fine, because I'm going to roll my two defense die before I even start the battle. So hopefully at least one of them is a defense of some kind. All right, I'm going to close the poll. Thank you, everyone that voted. But yeah, you got to remember there's movement required for the first one. So 84% say you do the top. We're doing the top. All right. Boom, so top. we need four one points. Okay. And we're going to put them all on... Ranged positions with one health, and then we can distribute the yep. other two after. Yeah, it says place four one-point baddies on ba baddie ranged positions with one HP each. So after we've done that, then you distribute two health chips equal to party size. Yeah, um, so number of health chips equal to party size between the baddies as you see fit. Actually, this one is actually good, I think. Well, Detonate de two, because if at the end of his uh, turn... Uh, if no, we... no, 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 no. Detonate 2 is after his movement. After if he is not full HP, he will blow up. So... And he, and he hits everything beside him. So if the first round, he won't probably do that unless we hit him first. Well, he's only going to have one. He might have three. We well, haven't decided. We haven't decided, but so if he you does... you just continue placing them and we'll talk more about... Yeah, I was just thinking that yeah. might be good. Yeah, okay, then we, we have... Before we analyze each mischief one. Mischief 1. So what, what are the baddies, actually? Can you give us names for people who are, know these baddies at home? Chip Acrobat. Chimp Acrobat? Chimp Ac Goblin Devastator. Yeah, they are goblins. That's what they are, yeah. And Goblin Dabbler. Goblin Dabbler. Two. And we have a Chimp Halfwit. Oops, sorry. There's the Blind Strike and the One Mind I was talking about. So this guy doesn't even have an attack stat. He is just going to make other beasts on the board attack their target with their attack dice. All right. So I'm just, the only thing I was thinking about the detonate... Melee, 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 melee. So they're all going to move. What I, I would personally do, just looking at this quickly, I would probably give the detonate guy extra 2 HP. So you like, don't want him to take something out for us? What? What did you just ask? What did you ask? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Take, he might hit something. Yeah? You don't want him to help us? Y yeah. Okay. Okay, keep going then. Sorry. So giving him his full HP, if we're going to attack him, that will reduce his HP. I, I like, we got to make sure, okay, if we start in front of him, but we don't. So could he go before us? This is the thing we don't know right now. So if I knew you could block him from moving, I would say have him at less than his 3 HP, because we know after he moves, quote unquote moves, which he won't move, he'll blow up. But we don't know that. So if I'm going to give anyone extra HP, I'm going to give the guy that even if you only hit him for one, he will for sure be dead. 
and he'll blow up and all that extra HP is gone if he had any extra. He'll kill maybe another one or two of them, maybe, if we get lucky. Maybe not, maybe it'll only hit us, who knows. Mm -hmm. But then all the other guys are only one, and I already said I can kill with this die, never missing, three turns in a row, my turn I literally go uh, range attack, kill, range attack, kill, range attack, kill, right? Yep. And if this guy, you, you know, if, if you whiff and don't kill him, then he's going to blow up. But do you want him to blow up before that? I don't know, because we don't know where we're going in initiative, and we have to decide right now, I'm assuming, who gets extra HP. Yeah, we do. And if you are giving HP to someone else, his blow-up will not kill them. Well, uh, I was thinking if you give one and one to the guys beside him. But then he's not guaranteed to be beside him because it's after his movement. So if you think we're going to go before he goes, and we can go up and block him, but then if these two guys move down... Get it? If yeah. these guys move down, they're not beside him and he still only hurts us. So we have to find a way, like, can we trap him? It's not, he's not necessarily going to... You might not want him blowing up right away because he might not be in the best position. But yeah, this is the kind of puzzly stuff that's in Too Many Bones and I love it. All right. So, yes, do it your way. No, no, no. That's fine because, again, I don't I know don't what's your highest right you can roll. What do you mean? For initiative, for you. Uh, I don't know. Let me check. Uh, I can roll... Uh, I have a two, I can roll two, three, three, four, four, or five. So most likely I'm going three, but I could even roll a two. Yeah, I can roll two, two, three, 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 or five. So yeah, I might, yeah. Yeah. okay. So we could go all after them. Uh, well, I guess we would for sure go we would. before this guy. Yeah. And then we could like move up here to block this guy from moving, to block this guy from moving. But then even if he moved to hit us, he's this guy, uh, this guy goes before, hold on, blue guy goes first, so he could go before us and move down, okay? Oh, he's going to blind strike him anyways. Uh, there you go. So we could, we could use the extra health to make sure he's a target for blind strike if you want to get him done early. That reduces the health, that makes sure he blows up. So that literally takes care of one enemy and maybe more if they're beside each other. But we're not sure where we're going in here, so you don't know. So there's the other, there's the other this play. This also blind strikes too. Okay, so there's a play of doing that. I don't know where we put this yet. Why would you do that? Maybe you on this it? guy. If, I get, get it, it, but if, I... If he, he'll, all, this, all these red chips are gone who are under him as long as he loses one. Yeah, but I'm saying so why, why he will blind it? strike him. Oh, okay. Oh, he's going to go before. But we, blind I'm strike him now to... doesn't do anything for us. Yeah, I was thinking that this guy would also blind strike him, but he'll go first. Okay. I'm just trying to play it out in my head. Yeah, I know, but we don't know. There's some some unknown info. Okay. Do you want to do that? Uh, yeah, I, I like that one. Okay. I think we're good either way. Whichever, wherever you put it, doesn't matter too much because there's so many blind strikes on the board and stuff. But okay. But I think it's good putting him between the blind strikes. A guy with extra health, we can ignore that guy. He might blow up and hurt us, whatever. We'll deal with it. Uh, okay, so let's... Um... Oh, I rolled a three. And I also rolled a three. Um... So these two are going to go before us. Yeah, which sucks, because that guy will then move away from uh, the green guy, so we will not blow up and kill him. No. This guy also won't have a target before he moves to even hit. So he won't blind strike anybody. And then his one mind will get this guy to attack if he's still alive. I don't know. I'll go before you. Sure. Okay. Uh, so starting positions. Uh, I'm melee ranged so I can start in any one of these gray boxes. You are melee only so you can start one of them. Um, so... I don't know the best way. So blue guy, we could. For two. Trying to think. So blue guy will blind strike this guy. Yep. And then move down and probably attack one of us. So we want to get him to move down. So he's still going to get blown up by this guy. I was thinking if I started here, this is again just talking. If I start here and if you start in one of so these, the blue guy can't even get you. Right. So he'll come down. No, we could choose him to go here. And he blocks this guy in. Or that, yeah. Because then... And then I can go, like, here. Yeah. But then I don't have enough decks to come up and hit anyone. Even if... Yeah. I could go here. 
or something like that. Because you don't so need this it. guy, we go one, two. Mm -hmm. Blocks this guy. This guy can't move, so then he's less than health because he got blind strike. He blows up. He oh. kills this guy and this guy. And himself. And himself. And, and then, then we you literally just, have this you guy. You just roll your I can one range on attack that one. Him. So we're going to win in one round. Okay. <laughs> they uh, are range? melee. All the enemies are melee. Yeah. All the enemies are melee. All of them are melee. Oops. Okay, so then before... We're going to bring this down a little bit. Okay, so before we actually start the battle, I get to roll my defense, just any white dice I have for my shield wall. And I got nothing. You got too many bones. I got too many bones. Okay, that's how this is going to start. Okay. So I think we're good, right? Anything you need to do I before? I don't know, because I feel so rusty with this game. I'm, like, thinking we're forgetting stuff. No, but no, I think... Again, point stuff out in the chat if you think we're, you know, we missed something. Because, again, we're a little rusty with the too many bones. It's been over a year. Um, so, yeah. All right. They're in the last row, just based on the card. It told us yeah, to yeah. set them up that way. Yeah. For anyone who joined late, uh, here's the card again. You can scrub back on the stream if you're ever not sure what's going on uh, and find out the card. But there it is. I'm not going to leave it on the screen while we're playing. So there you go. So the battle is ended. We're doing the top option. The battle is ended after round three. Encounter success is achieved if the battle is won before then. So we have three full rounds. Okay. Let's carry on. All right. So first, blue guy. Mm -hmm. So he wants to move. So blind strike first. Oh, yeah. Okay. He'll hit the strongest unit. Uh, strongest means most health. We have a three health here. We have uh, one health here. So he's obviously choosing to blind strike this guy. Then he'll move for two. He is looking for the closest of us, the space beside the closest. That would probably be here. Same distance is here. Same distance is here. We can say he's trying to get to here, let's say. Doesn't matter. And he's only going to move two spaces. So he can get there going this direction. He could get there going this direction. Or that's it. So that's we can choose. That's part of this game. You can choose which direction they're going. As long as they're taking the shortest direction to the space that is the closest tar to their target to hit them or whatever. Okay? So that's how that works. I don't want to hear that he should end up here. He should end up there. That's not how it works. Okay? We choose. Okay, as long as we're following those rules of he's taking the least movement and you're allowed to manipulate them, it fully explains that in the rule book. That's part of the fun of the game is these baddies are all kind of dumb and we're, we're taking advantage of them and that's just how it works. Okay. Oh, but I think I see what you're saying. This guy oh, he'll go now has side. a path, but he'll still stop here and then still blow up these two. Oh, that's Which true. is still fine. That's true. I forgot about yeah, that. Yeah, because he was now, he would now have a path, yeah, some, which is fine. Somehow I was thinking this guy was the one moving and these two were still going to be here and he'd be blocked. But yeah, it's this guy that moves out. I yeah, see. But that's, that's still fine. Still great. As long as he's not blowing us up for two and we're losing two health. Yeah. So still good. Still good. Still good. Unless there's a better place to put this guy. But... No, because if we bring him... Down here. Yeah, this guy can move down and blow, and blow all three. Up. We don't want that to no. happen. We'll we'll do that. That's the best case scenario. Okay, so purple guy. Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, he can't attack anybody. No. Okay, purple guy. So that's this guy in lane two. And I think he yep. wants to get to somewhere in here. So one, two. Okay. At the end of his movement, he detonates for two. Yep. So that's himself. Yeah, he's gone and he defeats this guy because this guy can't be damaged by attack dice, but he definitely can be damaged by like effects like that and stuff. So. Um, okay, that's there. And defeated baddie stack behind there. Okay. Got once. Uh, okay. Now it's Nugget. So if you want to throw at this guy, yeah. and I'll just move up one and try for that guy. Okay. Uh, yep, so I will just... Um, I'll just roll this for my three. I don't even need to move. I can use this as a range attack. And I'm going to target this guy over here. And I got one bone, a defense, and I kill this guy. Okay, and this will go back. Most skill dice are exhausted, but this has the little recycle swirl arrow on the bottom, which tells me it goes right back here. Uh, I could spend a bone now if we don't want to play with our food. I mean, I don't know if I'm going to hit kill him, but I'm... Let's bank on I do. But you don't have to kill him. But I don't him. have to. We do have till the end of round three. So we could troll him. And I could just do the killing blow when that comes up. And we build up for our battle plan. But again, in three rounds, I don't think I roll enough dice to fill up my battle plan. Not for this one. So I'll just collect a stone then. And I have one stone that I can use to 
throw attack dice at range at some point. Okay. Okay. Myself, I'll just use one of my decks to move up here. Mm -hmm. So I have two decks remaining. I will roll one defense, one attack. And I got two hits and a bone. Oh. So two hits kills him. The bone doesn't do anything for me in the slot one anyways. And there you go. All right, we did it in one round. I was nervous, but... Okay. All right. Yeah, we, we freaking crushed that. You guys believed in us. Yeah, uh, there we more go. than I did. Okay, so uh, we can do it in whatever order, but I usually like to see my loot first before I spend my training point. And I guess I can add the progress point right now. It doesn't matter. So we get one progress. Uh, we're going to each get a loot. So you get two, right? Yeah, so I get we'll two and I discard first, one. And then mine. So the fourth loot of the fun loot. Oh my god. So bad. All right. Uh, three uses on a shovel. During the recovery phase, draw one loot. So you're dig digging for, for goodies. Okay. Buried treasure. Okay, cool. Cool. Uh, and then, or I could take the simple the simple snare, which has two uses. During an opposing use its turn, after that unit moves, one position uses this to cancel remaining movement. Well, I think I'm going to keep the new shiny shovel. I've been there and used the simple snare before. It's it's old and busted. I want, I want the new hot hotness, the shovel. All right, I got fortune discovery single Ooh, use. Select like. one of your consumable skill dice and place it in a slot on your mat. It is now available for use. So I can use that to get up to uh, all I my stuff. I need stones. to give that to you. Yeah, I can. So I'll trade I can that give to you because I don't need. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Or, Maybe or I, I give you this loot one because I you're draw gonna extra already get. Loot. Sure. Yeah. Okay, we'll trade during that when we get there. Okay, uh, and then one training point to spend on something. Uh, I think I want to do attack. I'm gonna go for dex. I'm going to try attack. Diggity dex. So for attack, I need to roll one attack die, because that's how many I have right now. And I got it. I'm successful. So we can increase our attack to two. Okay, okay recovery. Uh, here's your shovel. Okay, here's your fortune discovery. Yay. Which are you just going to use right now? Mm. For space? Sure. Yep. Let you don't just, have to. Yep. Nope. Might as well. I want to go for my uh, unlocking my thing, my, my innate plus one if I can. But So I probably should do this. During the recovery phase, draw one loot. So it's at two. And I found a hunting knight. Remove a one point or five point baddie from the current battle mat and place it on this card. This baddie must be defeated prior to the tyrant battle. To defeat, place baddie at the bottom of BQ during setup of any future battle. Okay. Yeah, I know, Doc. You can you can read everything on this camera. It's fine. It's just annoying me. Oh. I should have. I I could have used a different color, uh, like background for it, so uh, the yellow and the greens in the cards wouldn't be so see through. But it's just like it's the text now is weird to look at, and that's very frustrating to me. I I like I I have a quality standard I try to achieve, and that just doesn't feel quality. I should have taken the time and put some loot cards on there to test them, but I don't think I even used that ever playing too many bones. I used the green screen cam well before I started playing too many bones. But then stopped using it for so long. Um, but yeah, I have different colors that I could have used like hot pink or something. I don't know. And instead, but it, it does work for the day cards. Yeah, yeah. But even those, like they have green text on them, which for some yeah. reason the green is not dark green doesn't have an issue. So I probably could mess with the colors, but I'm not going to do that during the stream. Um, maybe during your turn or something. If you're doing, I can mess with the uh, the scale of it. But uh, it's okay. That's my bad. But we can hold it up. Great autofocus here, and this works too. Uh, usually, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that's a beautiful look at that. That's a way to show off. The, I want to show the art and everything too, right? So I want it to like look nice and clear. Um, okay. So we got our progress. We got our um, progress points or whatever training point we spent. Oh, we can scout. Yeah. Uh, or trade. Or look for better loot. Yeah, maybe um... I look for better loot. Yep. Yeah, I'm gonna look for better loot. I'm gonna discard the batty ball. All right. Do you have six dice over there? Yeah. I'll roll six attack dice, and I can get some other loot, maybe. Uh, yeah, two? I get to look at two and keep one. I found a fortunate discovery, which we know I can use to get a consumable or just jack this up. Or I could take some good old Huckleberries. Heal an adjacent gear lock for four HP. I'll heal yourself for three. That's very good. Heal is heal always is very good. good. But so is being able to just jack my stones back up. And that's more rare than heal items I'm assuming in there are. I have a built-in heal in my backup plan for two HP for two bones. If I'm able to get my collect stones up easier, then I don't care. 
I don't know how bad this is going to get. I probably should go for the heal. Fortune discovery is fortune discovery. I know, that's good too. Because then you can be a little more flexible with your stones. Yeah, I can then throw attack dice across the board like yeah. very constantly, like no problem. Yeah, yeah I'm going to get rid of the huckleberries. All right, I'm, I'm thinking about doing the same thing with my fishing net or hunting net. I'm going to throw that away and I'm also going to search for something better. And I'm unsuccessful in my search. That sucks. Okay. Give those back to you, sorry. Okay. Okay. It's fine, uh, I guess. Day three? Yep. Snore of the Molnor. Please don't make us play dangerous darts. <laughs> the Sibron waters are rather rough today, and getting through them might require some assistance. During an impromptu brainstorming session, the effort is broken up by a passing group of Molnor traders who offer a questionable proposition. What if they handed over their own boat free of charge? An inspection of the vessel suggests that this isn't exactly a no-brainer. For one thing, the craft is a remarkable affair, barely holding together, even on land. For another, the Molnar have noted, rather nervously, that a particularly slothful-looking member of the group named Doug has business across the river, and the boat's new captain must ferry him safely to his destination. This may be yet a poison pill, but a good gear lock never offends a potential ally. So anyone who doesn't know the Molnar, they're like shady traders that you kind of like, if you take anything from them, you gotta pay them back like big time uh and it's like a little risky very risky actually uh so option one take a chance on the molnor's boat <laughs> and deal with doug doug has to be the loudest snorer this side of shale fist mountains training is impossible with him around persistent gear locks may not increase their stats discard oh. at the start of day five so if we so take that training point and we take the first option it's peaceful it's not a battle we get to bump up a training point, uh, so we could bump up a stat. I would probably bump up a stat in that case, since you know you can't mess with stats. But since he's snoring, we're not able to increase our dex, our health, our attack, or defense. But can we use that training point for stats if it's saying persistent there? Because wouldn't that already be in Well, a you choose. I, I like. Oh, you choose I, the order of I'm it? I'm assuming you get your loot first, then this locks you out of it. Oh, okay. Okay. But maybe not. Maybe it's saying that that training point is locked out too. Like, it really is focusing on us not wanting to build up our stats. Because that's a known thing the designers definitely know that's a soft spot where a lot of people who get the game solve the game pretty quick and are like, wait, I, I always have trouble when I buy a lot of my skill dice, you know, which are more fun and, and, and wonky, but really in a game of Too Many Bones, you, you need to focus on your stats and only when they're solid, then you kind of like slowly mix in some skill dice throughout the progression and only skill dice that should help you against the baddie type you're playing against or the tyrant you're playing against or the kind of encounters you're seeing um you know the the tyrant encounters that could be mixed in you're not supposed to in a game of too many bones fill up this whole map that's why the campaign mode is so fun because you play many sessions all linked together and you you level up your your gear lock and get tons of dice going it's, it becomes awesome that was one of the things in too many bones people said i remember andrew from the company explained that to us the vp or whatever uh at gen con we first found out about the game i asked like why is there not a campaign mode he says well there is it's in an expansion that was one thing when fans first got the game they realized like in a session, they were only unlocking it in like a couple stip kill dice, maybe a handful. And they weren't getting to like really fill up the mat and have a lot of options to choose from in a, an actual scenario. But you have lots of options to choose from for training points, but some are just more right than others. And, and, and always the default, like obviously like dex is huge because you can't roll so much unless you have it, right? Um, yeah, it's almost like a half, a half and half between your skills and stats. Yeah. Not even. I think it's more, more like 70-30. Oh, yeah, I guess. So I guess it depends so, on what so these do. Back to my story. So in, in a session of Too Many Bones, by the end, you've only like bought a few dice or maybe used a few, and only some of them you had in the final battle, maybe. You know, you didn't really get to flesh out your gear lock full stats or anything. So they're obviously realizing like people get the game, they solve it, and they're like, wait, if I don't buy any of my skill dice, and I just keep leveling up these, my gear lock's not unique, other than the starting stats maybe are different. And you just... You know, if you're focused on defense, health, and um, attack dice, and dexterity, that means you can move more, attack more, survive more, and that's kind of how you win the game, right? But there are things in the game, like we've seen, um, on those baddies, the, um, what was the one that just had, you can't, can't damage it with attack dice? Oh, dodge. Dodge. 
So they started adding stuff to the game, like this card we've seen right here, that are trying to mess with the usual efficient, you know, I'm sure a lot of their playtesters are the hardcore players of the game who kind of have solved things. And this is them trying to mess with their playtesters who are like the most hardcore of hardcore. Um, but it is funny. Reading this, we know because we've been playing for so long. We know that kind of stuff. But maybe a new player who gets this book might be like, why? I don't understand. But that's why they're doing it, um, which is neat. Uh, so option two, swim across the Cibron, leaving Doug and the Molnor boat behind. Miles down the road, you can still hear what must be an army of bullfrogs. Or no. Is that Doug snoring? <laughs> Persistent. Gearlocks may not scout during the recovery phase. Discard at the start of day six. I love scouting. Yeah, but if they're giving us baddies to go on the top of the stacks, who cares? Yeah, but I feel like they're not giving us... I would rather not like one scout or two. than not increase my like decks and attack dice and defense dice. You should be scared of this. If you can only roll two defense for... Uh, so it's this... that We're on day three right now, right? Yeah. So it'll be day so it's only three for a couple days. and day four. So it's two days. This day... And then the next one. But I value, the, the, I value the stats more than I value scouting. Okay. I, I don't know. I, I didn't know you valued it higher than getting, you know, more defense or more Well, I just or... see that this day doesn't... It's only really one day. Because this day's not a battle. We're assuming the next one is a full battle. And also, do we need more loot? Because the second option gives loot. We still get a training point no matter what. But again, yeah. you're locking us out. If you take this option, we get two training points. But then and we can only on buy skills. dice. Yeah, we can only unlock skill dice. And again, I'm sitting at four decks, which is like... Okay, I, okay, I, let's I, go. Yeah, like, I need to buy a defense soon, too. But, I mean, we got the extra health, so maybe I'm not that worried. But Okay, let's go with the we can't scout. We're playing true blind. Right? <laughs> Yeah, but even scouting you miss and don't get to look I at know. the baddie you want to look at and stuff and where you see the baddie and you put him on the back and then you still don't know what's coming. So it's like, yeah, uh, I don't know. I mean, we could go with the first one. I'm OK with training points, but I'm OK with training points when I can use them for this. I, I, I could unlock some stuff. Is but there anything in here that you like on your main? I would just get like Tinkered Bolo, Nuggets Dagger. Yeah, maybe dash for some extra movement. Because if I'm not being able to up my deck so often, maybe I get dash. You're right, if we don't have deck, dash. Okay, let's go with the bottom one. Let's swim. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, uh, so we're going to swim across the Cibron. So this is persistent. Uh, I don't know where to put this, but somewhere that we'll know. I don't know. Okay. And we each get a loot. All right, you're first. We'll give you two. Yeah, okay. So we got dragon scales. Uh, permanent. While this loot remains in your loot area, roll defense dice may be placed in lock slots. If a dragon was defeated this battle, you may trade this for an unlocked dragon center scale troll loot if available. Or I could take... Tar, Sap, and Twine. During a water battle on your turn, move up to three wreckage ships from positions. Uh, I'm not going to take that one because I, I don't know how many water battles we'll even do. We already know we can only probably do one, so uh, I'll take the Dragon Scales. Okay, and I have Kelp Powder, which is two uses. Remove one effect die from yourself or any adjacent unit. Yeah, so you can get two rid of uses, so that's and, good. Or, and it can be used any time on your turn, so I'm assuming on your turn you can do that before it even takes effect. All right. Which okay. is cool. All and right. then we get one training point? Uh, one training point and one progress point. Uh, and we can use that training point for anything. Which I'm going to go for defense training attempt. And I got it. So that will bump my defense up by one. I feel like I need... Another defense. You ready for your decks? My dex is three. Uh, yeah. I don't, my, my dex is not as bad because I roll my defense and I can hopefully put them up here. But I need, yeah, I need dex and defense and I need these two dice. So I think maybe I go with dex first. 
No, let's go with defense first. access for movement also, so... Yeah. Remember, on turns you're not beside an enemy and you got to move to them, you then even have less decks to roll the dice you can't roll. So keep that in mind. Okay, I'm going to go with defense first, I think. We'll see if I even get it. No, but I get to roll one more time. Nope. You get to re-roll the bone. Oh, just the bone. Sorry, that was yep. the one. Oh, I thought I re-rolled the whole thing. Sorry. Nope. Okay, go. got it. Yeah, any bones, you get to re-roll once. Okay. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Okay. All right, recovery phase. I didn't lose any health. I don't think we can. We do can't that. scout. One, two, I could look for better loot. Six, seven. No, I'll keep this. this oh, I can use my shovel. So I've used it only yeah. once. Um, during the recovery phase, draw one loot. Okay, so now we have. I mean, you can use it all in this phase, right? It doesn't say use I once. I could. And then you just replace it after you get rid of it on the last one. Found some loose wires, single battle. Increase your decks by one. Place this loot in your prep area to remind you of to remind you of use. There you go. So when you really need that extra decks to move or roll all your dice or whatever. I'll do this maybe next time based on what happens here. Well, what happens if you get a loot at the end of the next one? Before you get a chance to use it again. Then what? What do you discard? The rock. But it can open a trove loot. I know, but what if we don't get trove loot? Don't forget the big useful rock. <laughs> I could go for the shovel then at oh, one we'll more get time. Loot. They're 100% troll loot in here at one point. It's going to go on the top of that deck for sure. All right, fine. I'll use the shovel one more time. Last use. That's what I think. This has to come with some troll loot. It has to. It's like you can't. Power cell, two uses. Reroll any two dice, only usable in battle. Okay, so if I get a battle, then I'll just you use, use it, it up. Twice. To reroll. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to put that like those. All right. Obviously, that shovel would have been amazing for me to keep because then, uh, oh no, but I don't see two and discard one. It's only for encounter rewards. Never mind. That's why I gave it away. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. Okay, uh, so that was our all, all we know. So let's go on to page two. Oh, mama. Look <laughs> <laughs> at this Gearlux face. <laughs> That's amazing. Look at this guy. <laughs> That's, That's so cool. All right, so we're fighting so we a wolf. So we got some fire here. Looks like we're sleeping. A big, uh, what are they called in this game? Is it dire wolves or? Oh. There's a whole bunch of them uh, in the beasts of the base game, right? I think. The little wolves. And then there's like bigger, badder ones. Okay, uh, I don't know. Yeah, what order are we supposed to do all yeah, this? Yeah, again, the instructions don't really explain like what you should be doing. Which, I, I don't know. I'm surprised there wasn't more of like, you know, open the page, then first do this and this and this or whatever. Like, you know, or like numbers. I, I don't know. Like this should say number one on it, you know, and then number two or three or whatever. I'm afraid I'm going to rip this. Okay. Direwolf? Okay. I wasn't it's sure if Direwolf Wolf, right? is a Game yeah. of Thrones thing or is that... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Hardly... Uh... Hardly had the quest been taken, when resolve was sharply shaken, in pitch black poor Tink awakened, to Jericho's alarms. Sharp fangs, uh, limed the hero's dark plight, they fumbled clumsy, lacking light, resolute, desperate for the fight, the gearlock, gearlock hands took arms. The moment Pickett clasped his shield, their camp became a battlefield. For folk who knew not how to yield, metting out fatal harm. I don't know some of these words, but uh, yeah. All right, so we have our encounter. Fangs for the memories. Oh yeah, I can put that on here probably. Yeah. Thanks for the memories. There's nothing like a night under the stars in the deep wood as Gearlock eyes take in the familiar constellations. However, one notices there are uh, there's a new star out tonight, one that's never been charted in Daylore, and one that's a lot closer to the ground. And it's flickering. Wait a second. Stars don't flicker. With a mechanized mechanized growl. A mechanized growl, uh, the owner of what is now clearly a glowing mechanical eye emerges from the underbrush. Its joints hiss as it moves, 
Similar noises from all around suggest that others of its like are lying in wait as well. As the creature bares its teeth, you get the impression that death by wolf is bound to be unpleasant regardless of the predator's biological componentry. One night ultimate Wirewolf. Ha ha ha. <laughs> so option one. Option one is uh, battle cue baddie points, including Wirewolf, who's a five pointer. So we are on day th four. Day four, right? Yep, day four. Day four, I forgot to advance or die. So four times two, we're eight. at eight. So this five pointer plus we'll get three one pointers. If Battle Q has fewer than five points, Battle Q, Wirewolf instead. Ah, I see. Okay. So if you're playing solo, it would only be four points right now. Oh, I see. So they're still saying you still have to fight this five pointer. Party of one, gain backup plan extension. You can spend two bones, place untargetable effect die on yourself. So it kind of keep you alive from being overwhelmed. Party of two to four, that's us. Increase Wirewolf's HP stat by party size. Oh, well, that's sucky. So I'm assuming Wirewolf is hidden in this thing. Yep, there's a chip in here. We've got a five-pointer chip. Uh, I don't know if we're supposed to actually do it that way. I didn't really look, but uh, it was in there face down because we're supposed to build the stack first. Oh yeah, we probably aren't supposed to see it And then yet. put him out, because in case we had any traps or things to decide on if you're playing like gilly or whatever you should kind of not know okay so i didn't i didn't see anything but yeah i, I just break. saw his art his art looked cool uh okay so we can build the queue if you or, want but we we might do the second option oh know. yeah sorry 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 no, that's okay uh clank in the woods uh yeah the second option actually with the training point i'm already interested <laughs> uh battle queue baddie points including wirewolf if battle queue is fewer than five same thing all baddies have the skill break in addition to their other skills. So is break the one that exhausts your attack dice? I think so, yeah. Any or, attack or, dice used oh, that to used reduce to attack it. this unit's health must be exhausted. So only if you are successful. All baddies have a skill break. That's not good. That is bad because, yeah, so we go to attack. You, you attack a baddie with attack dice only. Other or than your backup plan. Other than my backup so plan. So you have a way of already damaging... So some gear locks, this would like wreck you right away. But I do have this long blade, which I could still attack with, but it's not a lot. That won't get exhausted either. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I always have some way to keep doing damage. I don't think I have any other way with my backup plan, but you have a way with your backup plan with shield bash, but you need at least two bones to do it yeah. and some defense dice. Yeah. So we do have ways. It could make the battle really long. Hopefully you have enough health to survive or defense. But if we have break, and we choose when to apply those attack dice. So you could say, like, you roll three attack, and you only need one to finish the guy off. You could just spend the one attack die, not the both, and you still have the other one available. Yeah. But you only roll two attack dice. I only roll two attack dice. So how quickly are those going to be exhausted? Pretty fast, I think. Because um, our baddies are going to have two health, three health. This guy is going to have extra health. Yeah. I think that's why the, the last one here says all gear locks have backup plan extension of two bones, deal three damage to an adjacent bat. Uh, so if all of your so, dice so were they did, exhausted. They did, yeah, they did make it so any gear lock kind of has a way to deal damage. But this is the problem. If you have exhausted attack dice, you have less dice to roll to get bones on. Right. So you at least roll three defense if you want. You can take your defense out of here and roll them. I could. So you have ways of getting bones to do that backup plan. But if I, I have two defense dice, so it, it could be hard to get the bones. This is very risky. It is very risky. I do have, I also have the power cell, which I can I use. I do love it though. We will get loot, we will get loot. So I want to use one of my loots for sure. I could reroll any two dice and use in battle. Or I can increase my dex for this to be able to roll more defense and attack dice for bones, potentially. I mean, I don't know. We're fighting four enemies. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Like, I love how, like, we always go for the more training points. Yeah. Like, anyone who watches us, like, I, I know some of the designers watch their streams. They've been there for our streams. So, like, they see this stuff and they're like, oh, these guys want training points? We're going to make them work for it. Um, so that's fun. I mean, we can see if we can make it work. Yeah. You want to try that bottom one? I'd say we gamble. It could get so bad, though. Think of worst case scenario. 
Worst. For worst case scenario, first attack, you, you do probably kill an enemy if you roll your attack dice, and then you lose both of them. Yep. Okay, and then you're just... then trying to get bones after that. You roll three defense dice every time. How long will it take you to build up two bones to even do three damage to an adjacent baddie? And this wolf, I don't know how much health he was default, but he's going to have an extra two. No, he won't, No, actually. not in this one. Oh, he doesn't get the extra health. Yeah, so he's harder in the first one. So we could kill him in the first one as our first baddie we take out, and our attack dice are gone. Then all the one-pointers that we're fighting after, ah, I You're just this rolling die. that, yeah. You're trying to build up bones. Uh, you know, we're spending this back and playing ability. I want to go for the second one. I think it's super fun. Okay, let's try. And we have the extra health. I think we'll last even if we, like, end up going too long of rounds. I think we're okay. And there always is the fatigue that could help us out if, you know, there's some one health baddies left on the board and we still have more than one health, you know? Yeah. Okay, let's try that I one. I want to do the second one because that sounds super cool. Okay, so Baddie uh, so Q is eight points, but we're including him as five. So one, two, three. And he goes on the top? Uh, yeah, he goes on the top. All right. So I See guess now sec. you can show him if you want to. Yeah, so we'll start filling him in. So he'll go on slot number one, Melee. Melee. Six. Uh, the art is awesome. Uh, six health. So he would have been eight health on the first option. Six. He attacks for three, though. <sighs> Ooh, he attacks for three. He could literally roll like five or six attack in one attack and take one of us out. Well, maybe I can make it so that I'm the target based on. Well, we my... gotta be not near each other because he targets two. Oh, if he, he can. targets two. <sighs> the two weakest. So we're playing two players. So he could literally, if he if he can get to a space that hits both of us, he'll hit both of us with three attack dice each. That's crazy. We need to take right. this guy out first. Even if that means exhausting our dice, we probably need to just go ham on him. I wish I didn't get rid of my fishing net. Or but he my... does have initiative four, so we might not even get to go before him. At least you have your uh, defense dice put up. Hopefully. Last time I rolled all bones. I should have kept that heal card. The heal loot now? I wish I kept that heal loot. Because yeah. this, this would have made this way easier. And now I'm wishing I kept the net. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. So he does have break by default, though. Flashback too. I forget. Sorry, did you say what that did? I forget. Yeah, it, it's the it's like retaliate. So if he's still alive after a hit, he'll hit you back for two. Oh, okay. Which I believe is not true damage, right? Oh, there. Any turn this unit is damaged by an adjacent opposing unit, the unit will then deal damage back so long as it was not defeated. Yeah, so, so only it, adjacent. It, it, so yeah, and it's regular damage. So uh, you your shields could block it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Okay. Next we have. A dragon Biddy. Okay, he is melee as well, going in lane two with three health. One, two, three. He has weak in one. He's gonna go up four as well. <laughs> I just wanted <laughs> Do to you stay want open. This uh, oh, sorry. Me, continue, continue. Then we have a mink and monkey. Okay, he is range, so he is going to go in the range spot. Three. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> He's also a four. Oh, oh I didn't pull this of... one. Uh oh. Oh. What is happening? Oh, he's reaching for his sword. Yeah, he's like, oh no, help. Uh, it's like, ah, oh, quick. Get my Maybe sword. Maybe I can do it and no one will notice. He's like putting his hand like slowly. <laughs> All right, and the last one. Oh, another dragon biddy. Okay, so we, everyone on the board has four initiative. That's wonderful. So we need to roll high. One, two, three. He is also <laughs> melee, or else we're in trouble. Oh, no. So they're all four initiative. So we have three health, three health, three health. One attack, one attack, one attack. So attack's not bad. Yeah, so we can go a little longer. We just need to take out the wolf fast. The wolf's the only one that's going to, like, rip us apart. But I feel like... And the un untargetable, are you... Uh, oh, that's only the Is your Rose backup Bones. plan uh, say target? No, I know what untargetable oh. is. You can only, like, splash damage it or whatever. My backup plan for Shield Bash... Yeah, was, how's it worded? Remove all defense, including newly rolled, active slots and lock slots, skill dice, da, da, da. Do a total of number of removed defense to damage the target. I feel like because of the target, it's dealing damage, so it's, like, not, not Yeah, the and then the Shield Shock is also target. I feel like, yeah, you can't do it because it says we're target. Okay, but so, maybe he won't roll bones. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. I assume that uh, we have to 
roll, put ourselves on the board before I do my shield roll, right? Because it just says at the start of battle. I don't remember battle. when it does. Uh, oh, at the start it, of battle. No, right here. On the, on the sheets. We just want to know exactly. Start of, uh, there's before battle, start of battle, start of round. Yeah, but like, oh, okay. <laughs> But that doesn't say like. I know. When do you set up the? I know there's the before battle. I think is before you set up this. Yeah. And yours is start a battle. Yeah. So then you do it now. Okay. Because I mean that'll de determine where I start myself. Oh yeah. I don't right? know placing yourself on the mat. Yeah, that doesn't <laughs> like answer not... any of the questions. <laughs> but I guess if it's don't they say if it's I don't remember not cares. specified you kind of just do it whenever. No, so... it's probably in the rule book. Uh, but it's I don't know. I'm just gonna do it again. Now. We're rusty. All right. Oh, I only got one anyways. So. But yeah, I don't remember. Not good. Not good. Not good. Who knows? I don't really want to be in front of these weakened guys because I'm just going to knock that away. Hmm. Hmm. On the right, battle setup sequence. Tr trigger before battle effects. Using counter card instructions to build your queue and add obstacles. Place top baddie from the queue in the lane marker, yada yada. Roll parties any dice. Add them to the any meter. Place party members on battle mat. Make sure your round counter is set to one. Then you do start a battle stuff. Okay, so I have to do all that first. So, okay, yeah, technically I'll just I did. Whatever you did. Yeah, so technically. Okay, so you don't know. Yeah, so it makes sense. Start of the battles when you're actually ready to start the battle. We're not oh, ready so we yet. roll our any die before we yeah, even place yeah, ourselves. Yeah. Okay, I think we always do that. No, we probably have always done it before, but it's been so long. Three. I rolled a two. Can I do this? We're, we're screwed, man. They all go before us. <laughs> I might be. Wow. Able, I might be able to use this. My power cell is reroll any two dice only usable in battle. Like we're in battle now, right? I don't know. Sure. I, I don't know. Battle setup sequence. Yeah, I'm not sure. I feel like we're in I'm battle. I'm sure it's in the FAQ, um, but whatever. I don't care. I'm going to re-roll it. One. Yeah, that's fine. Whatever. Three. Oh, my God. I could re-roll it again. I'm going to get a loot, so I might as well. Sure. Well, okay. no, you're not necessarily. Well, don't talk you're, like that. You're right if we lose. We're not necessarily getting any loot. Oh, my gosh. Wow, Three that was again. the biggest waste. That of... was the biggest waste. Rerolls. Okay. I'm not going to rant, but you know my thoughts on rerolling in games. All right. Do I want to use, now my last thing is, do I want to use this, increase my dex by one? I feel like yes. Three, four, five. Yeah, I'm going to use this as well. My loose wires. Increase your dex by one. Place this loot in your prep area to remind you of use. Okay. Then we put ourselves on you the map. And then maybe do this and then just undo it when you take this away, okay. if you remember. Okay. Where to start? Where to start? So you think taking out this... Well, I want to start as far away from the wolfie, so I'm not getting attacked by the wolf. You d you, you probably could have defense, so you're probably best to get hit by him first. These guys might take... Oh, yeah, yeah, he's going to go first. But, yeah, he goes first, so I, like, there's no way we both I could can be go like him. this. He'll come in here, block this one from hitting me as well. So... I'm only yeah. worrying about one. Yeah, that might be good. All right, so now I roll these. All right, that's better. Three. Okay. And we'll see what happens, I guess. All right. Blue is the wolf. So the wolf goes here. Uh, then rolls three attack dice against you. And gets two damage. Remove that. Okay. okay. Purple guy. Uh, the only space he can get to is here, so he's going to just move one, two. And he ends here. Can't attack anybody. He has no target he can hit. He is melee. Uh, then yellow is our Minkin monkey, or whatever he's called. Yeah, Min Minikin monkey. Who rolls an attack and a defense. If he gets a bone, he's untargetable. He's going after the weakest. Which is me, I have one less health than you. So he is going to target me. Which is going to get so annoying as we keep going. Uh, he rolled a bone and a defense. 
So he's got two defense, and he's also untargetable, which is like a little bush kind of twig plant, something so to look like one. you're hiding in a bush, you're not targetable. This yeah. one. Okay. So until his next turn, we can't choose him as a target. I think that's fine. That, yeah. Okay. okay then so at least he didn't damage me, which is nice. This guy, he has weakened one, so he's just going to remove this from me. And then he's just going to attack with one attack uh, day. No, no, you're thinking of mischief. Weakened oh, is you have one less dex on your turn, which is oh. why I thought you used that loot to make up for the, the fact you're going to be right. weakened. You're right, I was thinking the wrong. That's fine. I was thinking So on your turn, you're going to have one less dex to spend, okay. and then that will go away. I was thinking the wrong keyword, sorry. Okay, so he's going to roll one attack die on me, though. And he hits me for one, I'll just remove the defense. Okay. All right. Uh, then we have Picket. Okay. Okay, so you lose one dex for the turn. Okay. Right. I have three. I have three dex. Now, do I roll? Part of me is thinking about rolling three defense and one attack. You could have used this. To remove one effect die. Oh, I can. Yeah. So you, oh, yeah. Let's do that. Yeah, You're right. I didn't know what loot you had there. Let's remove that. So, so yeah. then so I can you use... aren't limited to. F you now have four decks. So which four dice would you like to roll? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I only have four. So hmm. unless this wolf guy just keeps fighting you and you're fine, you don't need to attack him. But you might not always have dice, defense dice up there, and you saw you get attacked by more than one thing and if you become the weakest if this guy does shred through you then that guy will start hitting you also because you'll be the weakest but i don't know okay i'm thinking about rolling three defense one attack okay now and remember that attack dies because he's break you will lose access to that attack die i think they all have break don't they no uh oh yeah they do yeah, yeah so we're playing the second option which yeah. is uh yeah so they i need to build up i forgot about that part yes so we just need to get rid of him because we can last with the other guys hitting us for one attack die here and there But we can't leave a guy that's rolling three attack dice yeah. forever. Okay, so we'll go against the I wolf, think. but I'm only rolling one attack die So this is when you hope they roll two. Oh, yeah, and the backup plan thing the extra one. deal three damage. Yeah Okay, no bones we got three defense which okay sure one attack So do you lose access to the attack die for the rest of the scenario just take one health off him? I mean, I maybe say yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So I'm just going to put this here to remind myself that I have one less. I know yeah. you're supposed to put it over here, but yeah, yeah. I won't So we have one attack die exhausted. Yeah. So okay. she's now can only roll one attack die max. Okay, but I need to get some bones. Yep. That's going to be my goal. And I assume by the, my turn, these will all be gone the again. The Yogi, the backup plan seems strong. But if you don't get the bones, and you're also, if you choose to use your attack dice to break them, now you have less dice to roll that can create bones. So it's not as powerful as it seems. I think, yeah, because Yogi says, if yeah. you can roll the bones. Yeah, exactly. Roll the bones. But now Mel's limited the chance of her rolling it. Yeah. But you still can roll four dice because you roll one attack. Do what you just did. You still... Yeah, these will be gone likely by the time it's my turn again. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, and then so it's, it's my you. turn. Yeah. Okay. I should just... Oh, he does lashback too, right? So he hits me yeah. for two? So you lose two of those. So I lose two of these. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Because you can just to choose to apply these first and then do the attack and then he hits back. Yeah. Yeah, it's risky. Okay, so I'm going all out on him. Uh, so I'm going to not even move. I am going to spend two stones, going down to three, to turn these into range attack dice. I'm going to put this one in there. And then I'll roll one defense. And I'm going after the big boy. All right. So I could just damage him for three, and I lose access to those two, which is fine, I think. Yeah. Yeah. One, two, three. So he's down yep. to two. Yep. And I don't get lash back because it's only at range, and I broke my two attack dice, so I have two exhausted attack dice. And I don't want to collect stones. I'll save that for healing, possibly, if I get two more bones, or the damaging thing, if I can get it. All right, round two? Yep. Okay, back to him. He's going to attack me for three attack dice. Oh, Only one. one. Damage. All right, I'll block it. <laughs> two bones wow. and, a, and an attack. Nice. Ooh, got through that. Woo. Okay, and Next then guy. purple. Yep, this one. move in and... Weaken One, me two. and attack me. 
So he hits me for two. I lose two health. I'm down to four. Uh oh. And I'm weakened. Okay. Okay, next. Yellow. So this goes away. Is that the end of, end of his turn or start of his turn? Uh, I don't think it matter. matters. Doesn't matter. Okay, and then he's just going to roll one attack die on the weakest, who is you. Hits me for one. But he is targetable now, but I still don't think I attack him yet. Okay. Down to three health. So oh, this man. one That's is scary. going to weaken me. And then he's going to roll one attack die. Nothing. He doesn't have a ball. Backup plan. Okay, then it. me. Yeah, I'm scared. I mean, you could probably finish it. Even if I die, I think you're good, but... I just need to take out one, this wolf two, before I go. I think the rest are doable, but... Now, I can use... I have one more use on this. I can use this on you. Will you be able to roll... You can't roll two attack die anymore, right? So you can only roll... Uh, one, two, three dice. So these doesn't matter for you? Well, I, I probably will... Oh, I can't move right now because I got blocked. Okay, so then I'll use on myself because... Yep. for you, Okay. So I don't, I'm not weakened. So if I can, I can get two four. bones, I could damage this one and one, kill this one, like, right beside me. That's true. Okay, so I'm rolling three defense in one attack, my last attack, and I guess I'm targeting oh, here. I wish you'd get two on that attack, but I don't think so. I know, I don't think so either. I wish you could use that big rock to bash him in the face. And I have... Okay, yeah. Let's see. Okay. Still alive. It's so annoying. Still alive. At least I go right after and I can kill him for sure. Okay. So I will use this one. Yep. Okay. He'll lash back for two. So I'll just remove <laughs> this. But hopefully so bad. Yeah, you kill him. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I have no attack dice left. I do have one bone. So we're getting there. We're getting there. And yeah, once we get the bones to like do three damage, you like one shot this guy, and I can one shot this guy right now. And then we gotta run all the way up here. To well, no, I can range attack. <laughs> oh yeah, you him, can range him. But yeah, you eventually need to go get him too. Okay, I think that's good. All right, nugget. All uh, right. Well, I have no attack dice to roll, so I'm definitely rolling two defense uh, and my long blade. I will target the big wolfie. And, ooh, yeah, see, this is what I wanted. So I can put this in my lock slot because I have the dragon scales. Uh, this second bone I'll put here. I will do the one damage to take out the wolf. Okay. And then I will spend these two bones. <gasps> I had one less dex. I have weakened. I had one less dex. But I thought you... Oh, you no. only rolled three, didn't you? Uh, oh, yeah, you didn't I roll did. any attack. You only rolled your dagger and two defense. Oh, yeah, I was Yeah, good. you're fine, you're fine. Oh, my God. No, that's why, yeah, you're okay, fine. Okay, I didn't mess up. In my head, I was like, oh crap, did I just roll too many dice? Too many bones. Uh, <laughs> too many dice. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is gone. Oh, and no, um, I could just deal, what is the backup plan thing? Three? Deal three damage to an adjacent baddie. Yeah, I'll just spend these two and kill On the one beside one? me. Yeah. Okay. As much as I'd love to use it for heal, I think getting rid of the thing that's damaging me, although this one is two attacks away from killing me. Which is annoying. But I do have one defense here, so I think I'm okay. All right. Good? Yeah. That's that. Round three. Round three. So it's going to be this guy this is rolling one attack guy on you. Oh, my gosh. Defense. I guess, yeah, that's fine. Okay, this guy is going to weaken me. Which sucks. <laughs> I don't have any way to get rid of that and then anymore. he rolls one attack die? Yep. All Next right, and one. I have one defense. Boom. All right. Your turn. Go. My turn. All right, one less. So I only have three. Yeah. I'm just going to roll three oh, defense okay. and see for some bones. Maybe I can just take them out. Nope. I can't roll bones today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm done. Go ahead. All right. Uh, so I have, I'm not weakened, so I have four. Um, that guy's not untargetable, but he does have armor or defense, which yeah. is so annoying. And I can't throw attack dice at him. So what I think I'm going to do is just move one <laughs> yep. and then i'm gonna just attack the uh actually you're gonna attack the one beside you oh no but that guy's gonna kill me yeah go for that guy because he, he's gonna keep dwindling you down but then i uh yeah okay yeah i'll go for the other guy because hopefully he, i'll roll a bone next time yeah. i'll even pull out whatever i have left okay uh so i got a bone got a defense and, and then... i do hit him for one just take away one whoops that was two defense, right? Mm -hmm. And that goes back. Okay. And uh, round four. All right. He is going to attack you. One attack die. One attack die. 
Hits for oh. two. Boom. Oh, two defense. Perfect. Okay. Then this guy is going to weaken me. Weaken you. Why do I keep one. putting that back? Uh, one. One. All right. I'll just remove that one. Okay. Me. Yeah. Okay. I'm actually going to pop these out. Roll three. This is gone. Oh, we got it. We got it. We got it. Okay. So we'll put these up here. We'll spend two from the card, two bones yep, to, to kill the him. Plan of deal three damage to an adjacent baddie. Yeah. Boom. Okay. That guy is Sorry. gone. Okay. And then you. And me. All right. So I will move one. <laughs> and then I'm going to roll two defense and my long blade. Oh, two. I hit for two. So that's one and one. And double on the defense. So all twos there on those rolls. That's a nice roll. Okay, uh, round enough. five. All right, he's targeting you. Attack and defense this time. Oh, oh, he becomes untargetable. Okay. And he hits me for one. Not that one. It is this one. Okay. Oh, I messed up his mess up. Yeah, I know, Daniel. I was like, wait, I messed up. No, I didn't mess up. <laughs> I messed up that I messed up. Okay, I am not... <laughs> Used all my lucky rolls and burn cycle. Yes, Vincent. All right, I'm not... So that's me. I have no weekend, so I can roll three. I'll just move one. I, I feel uh, like you need to move all the way. Two. Like, use all your decks to just three, move. Three, four. Because you already have shields. Like, you're yeah. not going to be his target. Unless you're trying to get... Um, I don't think bones. I can build up enough. No, it's fine. Because okay. if I can do a shield, even a shield bash, yeah. I'll have enough, so. Okay. okay, and then to you. But you might kill him before that, because he has no defense now, so. I can't target him right now. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Uh, so I am just going to, I can only roll two defense. I'm going to move one, two, and I have two decks left. I'll just roll two defense dice. And I get another bone. Which is good, because you can heal, right, yep. as well? Yeah, which I think I'll probably just heal for two. I got it. Thank you. So you're at five now. Yeah, out of six. Okay. Uh, now fatigue rounds, unfortunately. Okay, which, at everyone? the start of the round, we all lose one HP. One true damage-ish HP. Okay. And then he will go. He, he take away his untargetable, but he might get I'll, it back right I'll here. Hold it. He's going to target Nugget. Oh, he, he gets does. the bone again. Well, he'll die next turn, so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, pick it. So I can't target him, so we're just rolling... Three defense. Did I take one out of here? I don't know what you did. No, I think I just took Go two ahead. out of there. I don't think I had any bones. All right. Whoops. So if he was targetable, you could shield bash him right now, but that's not happening. Yeah, that's fine. All and right. I can't do anything with that, so. So I'm going to roll and take this one out. Uh, I can't target him, so. Does that oh, yeah, spend, let me move. does the extra backup plan? mean target or is it just deal damage a deal damage to an adjacent baddie there's no word target in it so so we could do it oh yeah you could finish them off yeah so then want. we'll just do it okay yeah 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 that works yeah because it's not yeah okay all right we did it this is gone lower that back down to one yep get rid of that okay um, all right. So that was Clank in the Woods. So we could get a loot each. Okay, we'll do yours first, the two. And two and two. I'll discard one. So the loot I got is the Advanced Fishing Rod and a Cackler Nest. Uh, heal yourself for two HP on the Cackler Nest when I'm drawn to. Cannot roll defense dice this turn. Uh, or during individual options recovery phase, gain an additional option fishing. Roll a d6. Place number HP in Gilox areas. Buff HP. I'm going to go for the Cackler Nest. Cackler Nest. So I have some HPs. That's discarded. It's discarded. Okay. And I found a Harpoon Pistol, single use. Choose a non-tyrant baddie on the battle mat and place it on the on a position adjacent to you. If the baddie is a Krellin, it is instantly defeated. <laughs> So I can just like pull something to me, which is not bad since I am melee. Okay, now we get uh, uh, we get one progress, so we're at four progress, and we get two training points, which we can use for whatever. All right, I felt like I had a dex problem there, so maybe that. Well, that was weekend. Me. I think was the problem. Yeah, but I still. I am going to try for four, attack. Rolling two dice to train for attack. 
I didn't get bones, so I actually get the attack. So I can roll three attack dice, and then I'll take a dex. Sorry, do we get two or one here? Two. Two? Okay, so I am going to take a dex. I think I'm going to take... Stand ground. She can give me regen. It's crazy they threw break at us so quickly. That's funny. Yep. <laughs> but I gave you an option to get around it, so... But it's Die just number funny. one. Die number one. Bastards. Because I want this one, so... Okay. Uh, so that's reward phase, recovery phase. I think I need to recover one. I'm one, just going to heal three, four, my two five, HP. Six, yeah. From the fatigue. Okay. Okay. That one was cool. That one was cool. Yep, yep. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> oh, What's this? This oh no, ball. dangerous darts. Oh no. Double the thrill, double the money. Let's make it interesting. Oops. It's fine. That's fine. <laughs> Owl. Owl bear owie. This is like throwing. Is that the one where you throw stuff to knock off the bears off the shelf? I don't know. Okay. Whack a troll. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, this is, this is like awesome. I don't know how to do justice. Dangerous darts. Oh. Here's what I need to do. Hold on, hold on. I need to do this. So I know I'm actually in the center of the screen properly focusing. Five silver pieces. Let's make it interesting. So is that what the Molnar look like? <laughs> yeah, Dangerous yes. darts. Look at the roller coaster in the background. I'm yeah, going to ride that Ferris one. Ferris wheel. Oh, that Ferris wheel looks a little bit sketchy. I don't yeah, know yeah, about that Yeah, it's like made one. out of popsicle sticks. <laughs> I don't know about that one, but the roller coaster looks pretty sound in the background, so. It's like... <laughs> that is cool! Oh, look, at there's something here, uh, like, powering this, like, tower. Oh, it's like an observation tower. Is like a goat thing running in there, powering it, I guess. I don't know. Okay. Oh, man. Got a nice, a nice theme park skyline right there. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> okay, interesting. Nice. You think we have some dangerous darts coming up or some gambling or I, I never thought I'd see like an amusement park and some carnies and stuff in uh in too many bones, but the first for everything. Okay. Oh, hold on. I noticed there's the bone thing here. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> that is awesome. I don't know if something was hiding in there on this side or anything. Nope. That is awesome. <laughs> Very nice. Oh, I mean, that's so cool. I don't see any chips, right? So maybe this is just going to be something fun. I don't know. Okay. Dawn found a quiet, bloodied group sustained by Patch's acrid soup. Through the deep wood, they glummy, glumly trooped till round a bend they came. The air rang out with plant, plangent cry. I don't know these words. Uh, cries, a carnival met tired eyes, booths of trinkets, acres of rides, not to mention the games. Throw knives and win my coin, he barked, a leering gearlock, face pockmarked. Thus nugget, thirst for gold, was sparked. And as was the carney's aim. I'm, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> Woo. I think these are haikus, right? Yeah, I know, I know. And I'm reading them probably not No, right. no, no, I think you're fine. But they just, that's kind of how they go. Oh, trove loot, here you go. Oh, look uh, at that trove loot. There's some trove loot. <gasps> Luckily, I have that big rock. Trove loot. So I told it. you it was coming. How many? Two. Two. Oh, okay, and more so loot. Okay, so put these on top. Okay. Just like that. Two more loot cards, put those on top. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, okay. And we got an encounter. It's all fun and games when someone has extra eyes. <laughs> the tunnelless tooting of an old organ and the sticky sweet... Oh, I forgot to increase our day timer to five. Uh, and the sticky sweet smell of shellfish rock candy indicates that every gearlock's greatest temptation is near. The carnival of carnival... Gearlocks are a competitive bunch, and it's rare that one will pass up the opportunity to prove their mettle in Carney's games of chance. 
But the huge liability waivers he makes, you sign, suggests the caution might be the best option. Suggests that caution might be the best option. Today, he's promoting his newest attraction, a spectacular show featuring supernatural and paranormal mutants. He claims these creatures have never been seen by Gearlock's eyes. He's so confident in these creatures that he guarantees a prize to anyone who can prove him wrong. This is going to be funny. Only oh. one option. Attempt to prove... Now, this is peaceful. It's not even a combat. Okay. Attempt to prove that these are just typical baddies. That's just an orc in a costume. <laughs> Place three baddies from the top of any active stack or stacks face down. Scouted baddies may be used, but are still flipped face down. I see now the option on the last day how it messes with us because we didn't get to scout anything. Mm -hmm. But we still flip them face down. As a party decide how many of the baddies to reveal up to two... The number revealed affects your reward if successful. As a party, guess the total of all three baddies' HP stats combined. Oh my. Then God. flip all face up for the actual total and discard the baddies. Encounter success is achieved if your guess is within two of the correct total. Collect additional rewards based on the number of baddies revealed before guessing. Okay. So if you re revealed zero and we guess, and then we flip them all over, and we're within two, we get a training point, a loot, another training point, and a progress. We get the training point and the progress point, as long as we're successful within, within two. Within two. Okay, so here's the number one problem. We have no scouted baddies, so we're but just... that's fine, that's fine. So we might as well just reveal zero. No, not true. Okay, I guess, yeah. Not I guess true. we could We probably some. want to reveal up to two so that we still get our daily progress and at least a training point. And then we kind of just guess on the last one. And based on it being a one point or a five point or whatever, we just guess the remaining HP and what it could be. You know, on a one point, we can look through the discard pile yeah, on a one point. like it's like three or fours usually. Yeah, and we've seen one five three, point baddie that had six health. So we can guess like the five point will have five health or something. All the ones we've defeated have been three except for one was two. Yeah, so we can guess so we can a guess two or a three. three. And, you know, but it might be one HP. You know, we don't know. Um, but we're just guessing. So encounter success is cheese. If your guess within two of the correct total, collect additional rewards based on the number of revealed guessing. So even if we reveal two and we're correct, we get this loot and we get a, a training point and a progress point. If we only reveal one and we guess right, we get a trove loot on top of that. And if we reveal zero, uh, yeah. wait. Uh, we would just get additional. Oh, okay, sorry. If we only reveal one, we could get a trove loot a training and a progress. Yeah. If we don't reveal any, we can get a training, a loot, regular loot, and this. That's so cool. I would be tempted to say reveal zero. Assume they're all three, three, six, nine. Even if one was a two. We could do 20 points. It's just... I just uh, don't remember how much health they have. Yeah, like like Black, uh, we weren't... <laughs> uh, if you weren't here at the beginning, we haven't played too many bones in over a year. So trying to remember the health on 20-point baddies in Undertow, and it's funny, I picked Undertow and I told Mel... I'm like, let's just play with Undertow stuff because that's the least played baddies. And if we have to use the encounters, that's just the least stuff we played with. Yeah, we played with lots of stands and we played with lots of duster. So that's why we switched out the gear locks. Like, I don't care which gear locks we played. But the baddies in Undertow are like the least I've played with ever of Too Many Bones. I never mix them in with the regular baddies I have. In my regular baddies, my main baddie storage or whatever, I always mix in the 40 Days of Daylor, or the Splice and Dice, the promo baddies. They're all in there. But none of that is really mixed in with our Undertow. They're their own thing. I don't know Undertow off by heart. Mm -mm. Uh, we don't play too many bones that often anymore to know what are the range of 20-point baddies. If you play this a lot, yeah, you're like, oh, I know the 20-point baddies are always between, you know, six 7 and, and 9 yeah. or 6 and 10 or whatever. Uh, I have no idea, and I don't even care to guess. But 5-point and 1-point baddies we see the most often in a playthrough in general. When we play, we only really see the 20 point baddies when we're playing like three or four player, which isn't that often either. Or a much longer yeah. tyrant. So that's why I wouldn't. But see, Black says, in my experience, all 20 point baddies fall between seven and nine. And like I said, we didn't know that because we don't remember. Yeah. That's, but see, that's why I didn't mention 20 pointers. But if I'm going on knowledge that we know, all the baddies that we faced have been three points except for one has been two. So if we assume... But I know there's some one-pointers in there, I'm sure, that have, like, abilities that, like, you know, they're only yeah. one HP, but they're hard to hit and that kind of stuff. I don't know. But if we assume... I could be wrong. 
that at least one of them will we be a three. We could also do mechs and crown because we have those because we're playing with undertow stuff. We could take remember. a mech and crown. I think they're more all over the place. Yeah, though. I think they are. I don't think they're as consistent, so I probably wouldn't. But or I would say go with the three, the one points. Assume we're gonna get one that's like a two. Tara, Tara, you're supposed to add all the stuff in this in this book. You're supposed to add it all to your game. You're supposed to all this stuff is cool. Like picture this is all promo stuff that you play through it once, you experience it, and then you mix it all in with your set. So all of it is made to work without playing it in order like it is. But I like how they've made the order matter. So you saw that it was trying to stop us from scouting yep. or getting stats, and then the next card kind of also mentioned that kind of stuff. So you can see that they're definitely play tested in order. But they are also made to just go into your regular collection to add more variety and variability to your to your too many bones playthroughs, um, which is cool. I only know twenty point baddies as well as I do because there are less baddies to remember. Yeah, that's ah, true. True, true, true. That's true. True, true, true. Mm, okay, so that's the way we're gonna do it. Is um, is just. Yes, so uh, I don't know. What do you, what piles do you want to pull three baddies from? We need, right? Yeah, I want to pull Place from... three baddies from the top of any active stack or stacks. Oh, or so it stacks. could all be from the same one. Yeah, I think I want to do all the same one. Okay. Do you want to do one point? Yeah, we'll just do one point. They all get discarded after two, by the way. So okay. we're digging deeper into the thing. Um, okay. Okay. And then. Um, yeah, Decide. that's Janet, exactly. We, Jan says you can look in your discard pile if that helps you guess. That's and what that's I said. what I was yeah, saying. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All of these that we fought have been three, except for one was a two. But then there might be one pointers and they're in there. So, like, I don't know. Oh, see you later, Doc. Bye, Doc. Uh, Sai, I have to go. This looks interesting. You might give too many bones another chance for this. This is just, Doc, this is just a one time play thing, though. And then you're kind of done with it. Because, like, <laughs> I don't know. But yeah, it's definitely a fun experience. But it's more about like the experience and then getting cool stuff you can throw into your set of too many bones, which there is no shortage of expansion content and promo content to mix into too many bones. Not to mention, yeah, I guess the promo content, uh, yeah, it's in there. Also, the zeros in the stacks. Are there zero HP? Part of me wants to, this is just me making things up, but I want to assume that one's a three pointer. Yeah, but we can reveal a, a no, two. No, but I, unless you want the I, I troll want, of loot. No, I'm more worried the, about the daily progress. Okay, to not fail? Yeah, because then we have less chances to fight the tyrant and days to fight the tyrant battle. All right, you want to reveal hoping, one? I'm hoping there's some two progress points along the way to make up for Just it. Just in case. Because nine and 11 is like pretty, pretty low margin of error, I think, right? It's uh, HP. HP, step. yeah. So decide of how many baddies to reveal up to two. The number revealed affects your reward if successful. If successful. So we As could... a party gets the total of all three baddies HP stats combined. Then flip them all face up for the actual total and then discard them all. And you only achieve it if you're within two of the correct total, above or below. So if you're assuming they're all threes or twos, which I, I mean there's probably fours and ones in there. I would guess. But we could reveal two of them. Mm -hmm. And then leave it to just chance on the last one. Because also, just... that's knowledge of if we flip one and it's a one health, then it's less chance that it is a one health. If we flip one and it's like a four health, then we know it's like... I'd be okay to flip one. I'm just going to say my guess would be eight if I was playing this by myself. And I would flip none. You're going to guess eight? Yeah, that would be my guess. I'm yeah. just saying what it is, what I think. Yeah, I would get eight's a safe guess. Yeah. I, I think eight's a safe guess. But we can still one's flip. like a four and one's like a one and mm -hmm. then we have like a two or three. Yeah, we still would still hopefully be within eight. two. That would be my guess. But if you want to reveal one, I'm fine because then we would get the locked loot and I can unlock it with like my big rock. Loot? With, I want the troll loot. And I can use my big rock to unlock it right away. Yeah, let's reveal one. Let's well, reveal okay. one. Which one do you want to reveal? I don't, it doesn't matter. They're all reveal random. reveal this one? Right, whatever you want. <gasps> four. I told you there's some four. fours in there. What if there's two fours in here and then a three? Well, then we would lose if we picked eight. Four. Five, six, seven, eight. Stefan, Stefan says if you get four. seven, you're right with a one, one, and three, even with a three, three, three stack. Well, now, Stefan, we have a four. We have a four. How does that how does math work? How does that math work now? Yeah. 
Uh, I'm feeling like guessing four, a, a nine. Five, six, seven. Based on that four. There's no zeros, right? Uh, oh, they'd four. be dead. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> you put them on the board and <laughs> then leave the you're board. You're right, sorry. Uh, yeah, the four changes. Yeah, see, eight, eight is my guess go still. Go with ten? Because there's probably duplicates of this guy, so the likelihood he's in the stack, and the four, rest of the stack eight. we have... Um, we have left. There is three, four, five, six, seven, eight chips that are still in the stack. So I mean, he might not be in this mix, but we know we haven't seen a four yet. So the four could be in these other ones, but probably not. Yogi says nine. Jana says ten. I, Seven I would says go with eight. Nine, okay, we can we can increase it to nine. Nine. And, uh, yeah, I'm good with a nine. Yogi. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea. Oh my god, so stressful. Okay. I, I want to pull the chat, but then I don't. I think we just go with it. Go with a nine? Yeah, because I... Because kind of like in the middle, right? We've increased it by one knowing that we now have a four. Because I don't know the, the baddies that well in this set. Like I said, I didn't look through them before today. I don't know. Dominic says nine as well. I yeah. think we go with nine. Let's, go with Let's nine. increase it by one. Okay, here's what we do. Drop your guess in the chat right now. What you would guess. The total HP of all three of these baddies added up. We know in our discarded stack, we've only seen threes. And a two. One, and, two. And a two. And now we've seen a four. So based on, and there's still six or seven left in the stack that we have not seen. And it's only Undertow base game baddies. I don't think there's promo baddies mixed in that stack. So based on that, throw your guess in the live chat before we guess. I just want to see what everyone's thinking. But I think I'm settled on a nine. I think, a nine. I'm, I think I'm good with a nine. But let's just see. I just want to see people's guesses and then see what happens after and see if you're right. We you just need to be within two. Just yes. need to be within two. And I think with a nine. But if it's like a, a, if, if it's a two and a two, then we're four, fine. Four, five, six, seven, eight. If it's eight. a one and a two, we're still good. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep. But we still be good with okay, yeah. We, with eight. I see lots of nines the only, and tens. The only awesome. thing we would be not good with is if they're if all a five four. Health? If they're four, 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 then we'd be at twelve. <laughs> no, then Bob, Bob's guessing twelve. But twelve is too high because if these are threes or twos, we need to stay within. All right, let's do it. Flip nine, em. Flip nine. Em. So nine is our guess. Yeah, everyone got their guesses in. Everyone got Jerry, their guesses in. Jerry, thirteen is no. We're not going to thirteen. As we no, should. no, but they're guessing now. I know, I know. They're guessing for themselves. I know. And then after we can say who's better than whoever else, and we can rub it in each other's faces. So we can trash talk. Okay, so we're we're so saying nine. We can make nine. fun of Bob and stuff. It'd be great. Unless Bob's right, then we have to hang our heads in shame. Okay, we're saying nine. This one is six. Oh, <gasps> oh, 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 oh no! I didn't know there was a six in there. This is a one pointer, yeah. Yeah, it's the, the treasure guy. So this we has to be a one. Yeah, I don't think we. Because this is ten. Yeah. Eleven is fine. <gasps> Three, we lost. Bum, bum, bum. So it's thirteen is a total. Oh my god, Jerry, I feel so 13. embarrassed. I was like, thirteen is Jerry, way too high. <laughs> Jerry, Cosmic Slayer in chat is smarter than all of wow, us. Wow, Bob too, because Bob did get twelve. Bob also wins. Uh, so what wins? <gasps> 11 to, uh, what would you say it's 13? 11 yeah. to 15. If you guessed 11 to 15, you're a winner. I didn't know there was a 6 in there. Boom. Yep. So based wow. on our luck, yeah, we didn't even see one of the 6s. I wish I flipped this one instead of that middle one, because then I would have been... Yeah. Well, we lose. So we lose, so we get none of the rewards. Oh, Nothing. Not wow. a thing. Wow. Not a thing. That was a scam. <laughs> so we go, we skip reward phase, we go right to recovery. Oh, these are discarded. Uh, where we're not allowed to scout yet until day six when we can get rid of this one that's stopping us from scouting. So we could look for better loot, which <sighs> I think I'm okay. I don't need to yet. No, I don't need to. Do you have to. loot you want to look for better loot with? No. Wow, that's so disappointing. Okay. Uh, all right. On a day six. On to day six, which will get rid of the one that was stopping us from yep. scouting. Do you think we can take a quick washroom break before we flip this one? Absolutely. So, so we're going to take a quick break for a few minutes. We'll be right back. Stay tuned.
All right, we're back. <laughs> Matthew, thank you for the super chat. It says, for the washroom alcohol? <laughs> no? I don't know what you're talking about. And Mark follows it up with a toilet and a beer. A toilet and beer emoji. <laughs> yeah, that's where we store the beer is in the washroom. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I still am kind of sh shocked by that, what just happened there. Yeah. I didn't know there were six point baddies in the one. Yeah, again, uh, we don't play with the Undertale <sighs> stuff enough to remember like what their health points are. And we haven't played in so long, so I I figure we could lose that. That was fine with it. Yeah, clever but, little game. But yeah, I'm hoping, like you said, there's some... Yeah, two, this is definitely target. This is points. not a product meant for like the new Too Many Bones player. This is meant for like... This is obviously made for the fans of the game who've been playing a lot, you know, and it's like, here's something else to spice it up. Uh, so it's definitely testing the experienced player, that's for sure. Oh, Ninja says the adventure did start at the Tipsy Troll. That, that is, is true. true. Yeah, that is true. Here we go. Oh, what the heck is this one? Whoa, that's the one that was. Oh, oh wow. my gosh! Look at this. Oh my gosh! It like opens with a big mouth, but then it's like closes, and you see all this. Look at the person. <laughs> gear lock. Oh, is that a gear lock? Yeah. Oh, it is. Yep. From far away, I didn't so see there, the big gears. So they're on the raft. Looks, oh, looks like it's Tink. Cool, cool. Tink and Picket, and in the water is. I don't know who's that in the water. Who's got know, the who's goggles? Who's got the goggles? On? Patches, maybe? I think it's Patches, yeah. And then, uh, is that Boomer? Boomer on the boat? Yeah. Or on the raft? And then it's some big octopus. Oh, I see. Hold oh. on. Now that we know, there is a chip compartment here, I believe, and a chip compartment <laughs> up here. So we're about to see either. Two baddies, maybe, maybe two five pointers or a one pointer and a five pointer or something, maybe. This might be the water battle they hinted at. Yeah, yeah, maybe this is the one you need. <laughs> I'm assuming this was the one it talked about. You need undertow to play on the water part, right? I'm gonna guess. I'm uh, gonna yeah. guess that I, as well. I, is that a safe guess? That this one might be the one with the water option, <laughs> maybe. Well, well, I don't know. I don't know. All right, here we go. All right. So they left the fair refreshed but broke and stopped to chop a fallen oak to form a raft and skip a soak the Sibron days away. They hopped to, or sorry, they, they hoped to find the river idle, yet its flow was frothing tidal. Crossing would be suicidal, but needs must find a way. Waves beneath them split asunder. Boomers st stared, transfixed in wonder, as Crown sought to drag them under their tasty landborn prey. <laughs> yes, yes, okay. Oh, maybe it's some new Crown. Oh, and that's good because I have my harpoon pistol, which I can defeat Crown. Get him. Get him. Well, we might pick the land option. We'll see. But I feel like because we have the undertow stuff available at the table, we should do that one if it's if it's the option. Crown or high water? The Sibron's waters have been exceptionally choppy lately, making navigation or even a pleasant swim nearly impossible. While that's bad news for riverside dwellers in need of a bath, it's even worse for the crown who live within, as they've seen a significant slowdown in one of their regular sources of food. Still, duty calls... So navigating these dangerous waters has become a reluctant must. It's best to keep any toes far, far away from the raft's edge. However, these crown are hungry and they won't easily pass up the chance at a gearlock smorgasbord. <laughs> so the first option is a battle. Second option is a battle. Uh, the first option, these crown are extra aggressive. It's water. Note, if you do not own undertow, you must choose the other option. Battle cue baddie points including number of crowns so you replace we're at day six times to 12 batty points so we include one crown which takes away three that leaves nine left so a five point and three ones plus the crown that goes on top right mechs go on the bottom i believe yep uh gear locks may discard any amount of loot and reduce batty points in the battle queue by the number discarded oh i wish i had all those loots oh. i just used for no reason oh so cool oh. okay uh, I love the decision points. I love when they throw extra decision points like this. It's so good. Uh, double the HP stat of the first crown placed on the battle mat. When the crown attack the raft, their attack is automatically successful without rolling. Oh, that? 
Uh, so the raft, remember if the raft, you go to put a fifth wreckage chip on the raft, uh, we're done. We failed the mission. So they eat away at the raft and, and take away spots from the battle mat, which is neat. Or we do the land option. Land is looking mighty attractive right now. Battle queue baddie points. Add one five point baddie. Gearlocks may discard any amount of loot and reduce the baddie points in the battle queue by twice the number discarded. Oh, I think man. we could do the water one. I do have a way yeah, to... Yeah, I want to do the water one just because we have the... Uh, that's why I brought the undertow stuff. I was thinking, like, I want to see the water option because, like, it's probably going to be cooler. And uh, it goes with what's in the pop-up book, so let's do it. And I can cr I can kill one, Krellen, right away. Yeah, so we'll pick the first option. Um, but... The loot we discard reduce number of baddie points by the number discarded. So it's obviously the harder option. So we only, like if I toss, you know, this cackler nest or in this fortune discovery, that only reduces the battle queue by two. Sorry, it's at 12, it's and, at we 12. Have to, and we have to use- We have to put a three point crown in there. I think it's a two, right? Cause it's by the number of gear locks. Is that what it oh, was? Oh yeah, sorry. Crown two equal to party six. size. So that'll so take away six. Two crown, my bad, my bad. Yep. One, five point, one, one point. Yeah, I misread. No, nope, that's okay. So we have four baddies. One I can kill right away. One but, of the listen, if I throw away two loot, for example, I reduce it by two. That means we only have four one-pointers. Versus a five and a one. Yeah. And then the crown will come in, but it doesn't stop. Crown don't take up lane chips, do they? No. No, they go on the outside ones, but I have but the... But no, I think you can only have four baddies still. That would be four baddies. Six and six. Two, two crown, which is six, and then a five and a one. Yeah, but if, but we if had you four reduce ones. it, yeah. But I think we don't reduce it. Yeah, okay. I, th I think. And save those. But eight. how bad is this crown? This crown might be so bad. Well, I bad. can kill one of them. It says choose a non tyrant baddie in the battle mat and place it in, but, on a position adjacent to you. But if again, the baddie is a crown, it is instantly defeated. I understand, Mel, but you don't always go first. So I that know. crown could wreck the side of the ship. And yeah, you kill one, but they both could go before we get to deal with them. And we're already at two wreckage ships. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Oh yeah, we'll pull out the undertow battle mat. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's let's figure out what we're doing here first though. Alright, am I throwing away a loot? If I could reduce it by one, but I don't think so. I don't know. Yeah, I think we I think we'll have it. Unless you want to get rid of like your black rock, I'll get rid of a fortunate discovery. Once I get rid of the, the rock though, that's when we're gonna get that yeah, I know. trove loot that I wanna unlock. Yeah. But we might not get a chance to get any trove loot for the rest. We just saw a chance and we missed. But we'll see. No, I think, I honestly, I think we play it as is. You think we're going to go good? Okay. Yeah. All right. It's just giving us an option to reduce it. So I feel I like, know. I feel like these crown are more overpowered crown than we usually see. Like, I feel like they're going to give us some dirty ones here. Because even the one, the, the big one that says double the HP stat of the first one, I can use the harpoon on that one. Oh, so then we only have to kill okay. the weaker one because oh, it doesn't okay. say, it just says non-tyrant. All right. So let's see. Um... Oh, these might be them, actually. Yeah, but if they're face down, we're not going to look at them. No, it's a five-pointer. <sighs> it's a special five-pointer. So the, we could have eliminated seeing this. This is what I'm saying. Oh, okay, no. so I'll put that on top. And then, is this a crown? Yeah, it's a crown. Okay. So we're seeing two chips, Mel, and, and they're going to work together. They're going to be horrible. And okay. one's double HP. Is okay. that the only two that are in here? Oh, no. <laughs> I think it's like stuck up here. Oh no. oh no. Okay, I think I fixed it. No. Nope. Yeah, I think I opened it maybe too wide, but now it's not closing. Oh, I see. Yeah, I feel like I'm forcing it. I definitely bent something. Eh, it's fine, whatever. Okay. Uh, but I don't see any more. I don't see any more chips, no. No, no more chips. Okay. Search under the waves. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm looking. <laughs> yeah, I don't see anything. Okay. Oh, there it's working now. Yeah, it just feels like you're forcing it at first, but it just needs to, like, get past the point. There we go. No, there's still something. And I don't think it's just these lids. There's something that's, like, stuck that's not folding right. Maybe it's, like, this one needs to go the other way or something. Yeah, because like I can't close it all the way. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Oh well. 
We can look at it. I feel it's like this something with this one. It's supposed to like bend the other way. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just that one bent the wrong way. Whatever. All right. Okay. Not too worried about it. Do you it, have the yeah. water mat? Yep. All right. Okay, All right, so, so we're, on, we're on a raft. So our battle queue is going to be, these are the two. So, yep, including two crown, two which crown. takes six away from our day six times two players is 12 points. You got six there. And then a five, a five and a one. one. Crown always go on top. Okay. Okay. So we'll put our queue up here. Oh, sorry. I think they're all coming in anyway, but. Yeah. Do you want to show this is the new one? Yeah, so this one's getting double HP, right? Yep. Oh, 10. This is the one I'm gonna. This is the this one I'm gonna harpoon. This guy is so horrible. He has pull in and assault. Okay, assault is his attack stat is X. Is X is equal to the num number of the round? I think. So this guy at first he's just attacking for one. He's got rolls two defense dice. Pull in, I believe, is target like he pulls you into the water. I think, I think he does. Yeah. And then like, that's like the worst. Well, this is one I'm gonna harpoon. Just to FYI. Hold on, hold on. I probably <laughs> have it here. Oh yeah. No, pull I in. don't. The pull is probably from. Um, Target party member is placed in crawl starting position adjacent to this unit if possible. So it's going to pull everyone in, pull someone in the water, yes. And has double, double HP, so it's starting with 10 health. Okay. Yeah. I'm just going to roll a D6. I just want to oh, see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, target party member. Okay, so it's but only movies it's targeting. Yeah. So it doesn't matter if, like, he was ranged. If uh, I, he. How much. Oh, he's melee. Okay, so you, he's only gonna hit the strongest unit adjacent to him. So if he can't target you, they're just, just gonna move and try to target someone on the next space and then damage the ship if not. So I'm just gonna roll to see where he's gonna go. Four. Oh, that was not even on D4. Or where's my D6? And, and he gets how much double, double HP? Which I have ten here. So he's where's a ten D6? health. They're so dirty. I, I like. They're so dirty. Oh, right here. Please check assault. Uh, one. It's going to go in lane one. Oh, it's equal to its current HP. Oh, so it rolls... It rolls ten attack dice? Yeah, so they're, they're even even being worse than we thought. Yeah, well, what I'm was I thinking? I was thinking of compound, right? Yeah. Okay, I, I'm going to hope that I go before this guy who is a three. Yeah. And I can just harpoon him to death. So good thing you didn't throw away that loot before <sighs> to say like, but you knew you were fighting Crown. But. I just assumed that it would. Oh man, this book. I could use it for anything. It didn't have to be, but it just says if it's a Crown, it is instantly defeated. So, okay, so this is the other one. This is not new to the story. Crown un under Toad. So he has five health. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, we'll roll a D6, see where he goes. Five. Which is here. He has two as a initiative. Okay, this is the baddie that came in the in the book. Oh, a robold. Oh, look at that. Not a kobold. Not a kobold. A robold. Five. Uh, so scales a detonate two, which we just saw detonate two on one of our previous baddies, uh, and it's got return. And return is, where is it? I just skipped past it. Oh. If this is not the last baddie defeated in the battle, in this battle, place it on top of the battle queue when defeated. So it'll just keep coming back. So if you try to take him out early, he's just going to come back later. Okay. He'll be so, our last, our last friend. Uh, <laughs> okay. I can tell that you're... But the attacks are too... Oh, no, no, you see what they did here? He defeats, he could defeat himself. So based on playing Undertow, if we have some first strike crap, or one um, oh, blind hot, strike, yeah. blind strike. Something could. Or, or another unit that detonates and hits this guy. This guy could detonate and then come back and haunt us. Like, okay, uh, this is a very. This uh, is yeah. interesting. These these designers are trolling us more than they trolled us before, maybe. Maybe not. Maybe Splice and Dice is more of a troll, but. This is definitely, hey, Kanji, how's it going? Hey. Uh, they're definitely trolling us here. This is crazy. Uh, so he's going here. He has five <laughs> health. He has one initiative. He is oh, melee God. yellow. 
And then our last one pointer is just another one of those mink and monkeys. It could become untargetable. Yep. Uh, one, two, Which, three. Which that can be annoying when we're trying range. to kill this guy before this guy, and this guy makes. He's usually one of the last on the board because of his untargetable. Uh, and he's four. He's going to go like that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Again, I'm going to use my Harpoon Pistol. Let's go over that one more time because we are going to use this. Well, you hope so. Choose a non-Tyrant baddie on the battle mat and place it in a position adjacent to you. If this baddie is a Crown, it is instantly okay. defeated. So we are going to use a Harpoon Pistol on this big guy. Hopefully before he can go, I just need to roll a three or higher. Stefan, have a good sleep. Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Hey, Stefan, welcome back tomorrow. Uh, watching, this is Rob from the past. Thanks for coming back and watching later. <laughs> See you later, Stefan. All right. All right, go ahead. Four. Four, yes. Okay, so right now you're going first. I need to roll three or higher. Three or higher. Come on. Three. Okay, good. I can go before him. Okay, okay, that's good. That's good. All right, so I want to put myself... Hmm... I want to put myself somewhere and I pull him off of, out of the water. How is it working hard from pistol? Sorry, I was No, that's okay, that's okay. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, all right. Which is a non-timer baddie on the battle. I place on position today's do if the baddie's a crown. Oh, so you don't even have to be beside him. Nothing. No, that's what I'm saying. I can oh, okay, instantly okay. defeat him. And cool. even if he had gone one time, still would have been okay. So ignore him and place yourself wherever it would be beneficial based on the monkey going before you. I don't know what I'm doing. The monkey's going for the weakest, which... The problem is... We gotta go for this guy. We don't want to be beside this guy, so this guy is definitely gonna do a wreckage chip on... No, no, no he, he's, you No, I'm gonna first. kill him Sorry. before he goes. Only this guy. This guy. So, hold on. This poison guy two. we need to... He does poison to one attack. Like, we don't want them to wreck the ship and have to run around the mat trying to catch them. So, like, I might start near this one and we just start working on this one. The only problem is Poison 2 is, like, pretty ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to take this guy out first. There is a play where uh, we both just go after this guy, or you go after this guy, try to take him out before he becomes untargetable. Yeah. Because the faster we get rid of this guy... He will go before me, which is fine. If he does become untargetable, then oh, I just yeah, roll yeah. some... Oh, uh, that's right. Maybe I should go for him? Yeah, because I can't... And then we just let this guy also wreck this ship but then we're in a, a panic situation where we need to kill him and he's doing the whole he's what, what position five yeah so if he attacks and nobody's here to hit he will then go to six and i could let him hit me once the ship. yeah that's what i'm saying so you either you there and hold him there yeah or you go over here beside six where you know he'll come over here and try to hit you yeah, but and then, then you like, worry about then, this guy. But then you got to be worried about this guy who we're just going to let run around the mat and hit us for two attack dice over and over again. So is there a play where you can be in a position away from him? Like, I can start here. That This guy won't hit me. Yeah. But I don't know where you're going to start. Cause... Well, there's no other place to start to be away from him now. Oh, yeah. But, but I can then take this guy's hit. Yeah, but you'll also take poison too. Which is him. fine, because I'm going to hopefully roll my I think it's okay letting this guy hit the ship first. For one? Yeah, but he'll, or, or being over, because the poison too is rough. Oh, but you could get your heal going. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. The poison too is not so bad if I get my heal going. Well, that'll shred through you, like even with your defense dice, it's like, you'll, but then you might become the weakest. This guy's going after the strongest he wants to attack, if he has a choice. Um, I, I don't know, priority wise who I should just go after. Should I try to take out the mink and monkey before he's gone? Yeah, I think so. before he's untargetable, because we can't, because if, yeah, if he just continuously becomes untargetable, then it's a pain for this guy. Mm -hmm. I could just start here, it's fine. Then I pull this guy adjacent to me here, kill him, and then I just roll on this guy. Hmm. I would argue yeah. that you maybe start here. Okay. And then what's my first play? Pull well, him. Well, first you use an item, you kill him. Yep. It's gone. Yep. Then, um, oh, I see. Because I go before. You could start here then. So you're not near this guy attacking you and poisoning you. You take the hit from this guy, so I won't. I hopefully kill this guy, but there's a chance I don't. And then you stop this guy from coming after me. Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah. Because, oh, but I have defense to start. They were in my lock slot last time, actually. 
Uh, actually, yeah, maybe I don't care that that guy's gonna come and hit me instead of you. We just, are, are we letting this guy move over here and just hit the ship? If so, then, like, he will destroy this corner. Right? Mm -hmm. And then so we can move there and only one of us can hit him. It's up to you. Like, I don't know. What do, what do you want to do on your turn? You know what I'm doing. Yeah, I'm just going to kill the, uh, kill that guy and then I would I was just going to start to work on this guy. So then you want to be over here. Yeah, because if you're working on this guy before he becomes untargetable. Yeah, I can be hit by this guy. It's fine. Okay, so then I'd start here. Uh, so I'll just start here. But I, yeah, this guy I'm just a little worried about, but it's fine. Do you have any stones? Yeah. Oh, but yeah, you're that right. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. I don't want to waste them when I'm right near enemies. Only when I'm far. Okay. So round one. You are first. Okay. Uh, so I am going to with my five decks roll two defense. There's no other text, right, on this, just that this guy got additional health for this battle? Sorry. Uh, and and they attack the raft without rolling, so they, oh, okay. they don't need to... They, they won't miss on destroying the raft. Okay. So I think I'm going to roll... I'll just roll three attack, one defense, and, and the, the long blade. And attacking the monkey. Get him! All right. Uh, so I have four attack, enough to take out the monkey. Okay. And a defense. And one bone. Oh, pull mine out at the same time. Okay. We're gonna do like this. Okay. Uh, okay. here we go. Alright, me. I'm gonna first use my harpoon pistol. Yep. On this guy, pull him off uh, onto the yep. piece of defeat. Instantly defeat it. Instantly defeat it. Okay, that was huge. Yep. That was the best item ever. That's so cool. It's got like a gold border, <laughs> like all the ones that come in this book. It's funny because it like matches the gold trim on it, which is so cool. Yeah. Kevin! Kevin Smith? Is it THE Kevin Smith? <laughs> I doubt it. <laughs> Kevin Smith, thanks for everything you create <laughs> in Hollywood and podcasting and comics and all that stuff. Kevin, thank you for being an amazing director and filmmaker and writer and all that stuff and podcaster. Much appreciated, And Kevin. subscribing to our little and, channel. And subscribing, <laughs> Kevin Smith. Thank you for subscribing to our channel. The, the Kevin Smith. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. Next, I can roll four dice. Oh, I didn't roll my shield. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, I didn't roll yeah, my shield. I had to start a battle. Sorry, sorry. Oh, I got three. Okay. That's good. So, now I'm rolling... One, two, three, four. Four dice. Okay. On mm -hmm. this guy. All right. Well, we do hit for three, which is good. One, two, three. He's two away from death. Uh, we got a bone on that one. Sure. And we got... Not going to use that. Okay. Done. Uh, this guy. Poison two. He's going to roll an attack and a defense. Hit me uh, for one. I'll remove that. Two defense. Oh, well, that's kind of sucky, but... No, that's why I don't know why you don't use the bones there, so you could, like, increase the odds I'm, of getting shield I know, shield I'm just bash. hoping for the... I might just pull other defense out next time. But yeah. okay. I was just hoping for the... Yeah, I know. I need to roll as many times as I can. I know, but you can still spend the bones, get it back, roll it again later, or even take it out of there, I think, and roll it. Mm -hmm. I think. I can, yeah. Hmm. Uh, okay, sorry, he is done, and then this guy, he's gonna move, which direction do you want to move up? Probably here, right? So yeah, then it's whatever. closer for me. Okay, he's rolling what? Two attack, two, attack, two defense. Two defense, two defense dice, please. Uh, so he's he no got bomb. one defense and hits for one. I'll just take away this one. All right. Round two. I guess I can put this here now. And you're first. Okay. Uh, I will. Hmm. I need to kill that other guy. Mm -hmm. So I can stones. Yeah. 
I will do the three stones. I'm going to spend all three of my stones. Go down to zero. Well, three attack dice, one defense, and my tinker or my uh, long blade to do a range attack against this guy. Right, that's five. Yep. Yeah. All right, so I do uh, five damage. Two, three, four is dead. Boom. Dead, dead, dead. And I think I don't need to heal yet, so that's good. Oops. Okay. Uh, next. Okay, take two damage. And then one, two. Oh, yeah. This guy is going to blow up. I forgot he's going to hit us for two also. I don't know that I'm going to actually... Although you do block it with this, at least. I have blocked two, but... So I have two. I can roll two. I might, maybe I just don't hit him until next round. He's going for the strongest, which is you. You have three defense? Mm -hmm. I only have two. I'm a, yeah. Oh, I could roll, so, I no, could no, roll one it, yeah, and, and get rid of the defense. Yeah, but he, he might roll it on his turn anyway, so... Oh yeah, it's probably better. Let's wait, let's wait, let's roll defense. And he might roll twos, maybe roll bones, I don't know, it's yeah, up to since you. since I can only roll two dice anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin's here in the chat says, Haha, I am a Kevin Smith, not the one you know. <laughs> but Snoochie Boochies, yes! <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I'm sure you've been teased about that before. But Kevin, <laughs> thank you so much for subscribing. Kevin is like probably waiting his countdown from becoming a subscriber to be able to say yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> it's like these idiots. <laughs> Kevin, welcome, welcome, hello. Ah, oh, I didn't get it again. All right. No, I want to keep rolling it. Okay, I'm done. So he's going to go, he's going to attack the one strongest, defense, which is you. Two attack. He attacks for only one. Uh, sure, I'll knock that out. And, uh, yeah. Okay. Round three, so it's now, you. So now we go ham on him, right? Now we go ham on him, yep. Okay. Three attack dice, two defense. Got one more defense. Yeah, sorry, let me throw some on your side over here. Uh, I only have five though, so let's just take one defense out of the equation, go hard on him. All right. So I only hit him for three, unfortunately. So here's the thing. If you, let's just think about this. I'm going to spend does... two for revitalize. Uh, oh wait, what's my health? Six? Am I still at six? One, two, three, four. Yep, you're full. Oh, okay. Never mind. I'll just get building. So again, you, you can do the same or you don't hit him. Or, well, you could or remove at, these, and then you, if you remove one, he's at four. I don't know. If you get, See, this is why you're supposed to use these bones, so that on your turn you can do shield bashes easier. But you, you always keep throwing it away, and then you don't get enough for a shield bash. But if you definitely have enough dice to shield bash him away if you just rolled one more bone. Which I could roll this and two attack dice. I know you could just get a bone with that. I could also roll and use it, but one you know of what these. I mean, but. It's like if you locked in the bone. All right, so you want to take the one off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Either way, if he returns, well, I guess if he returns, he returns full health, which is... Well, sucky. no, he's the last one to die. He's gone. Oh, okay. But yeah, we, but we I mean, just yeah. take two damage. I'd rather kill him before he blows up and hits us for two each. That's true, Although that's we both true. would block it. We just, I wouldn't have this defense carrying forward, but... No, and we want to do that if we I can. like carrying forward defense. Okay. It makes me feel like picket. My turn. So, remove that. Poison is gone. And right. there's a play where if one, I got one more bone, two, I can disable him where I could have taken away his keywords and then he doesn't have detonate or return. All right, we're going to go with these four. <laughs> two attack, one defense, and then my stand ground. Okay, there we go. I got it. I got it. So I got one hit. And then I got two bones. Which I will use to do a shield bash, which will do. Shield bash, I know, sorry. Okay, that goes so back. he's in the discard pile gone. This is here. Okay. And this is here. I'll just clean that up. And we return home. And these okay. all fall out. These come out. Oh, say. Okay. All right, let's read what we get for rewards. Uh, one progress point. We're going to five. We need nine to fight the tyrant. Okay. Um, and then we get two training points. Hmm. Mm. I'm feeling like Tinkered Bolo and Nugget's Dagger. 
Although the movement I've been feeling. Yeah, I'm going to take Tinker, Bolo, and Dash. So maybe I get some extra movement when I need to shoot around the board and still hit guys. Okay, I'm going to take. My Dex isn't as important. I'm going to take a Dex. Maybe. And I'm going to take a Stand Ground, which can, if I can lock in a hit up here, just does one additional hit. <sighs> Okay, and then I think I need to get some more attack uh, after uh, that. Re recovery Oh, recovery, phase. I'm going to... One, two, three, four. Five, I will just six, scout, seven. I guess. Uh, I'll look at the next five-point baddie. It's this guy with mischief one, range hitting two of us. I'm going to throw him at the back. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Day seven. Oh, we've reached the devastation. What is this? It was like Fallout, Fallout, Fallout Three. I don't know what's happening here. It's like a definitely a evil looking village of some kind. Is this the village that was on fire that we were oh, going yeah, yeah. to? Oh yeah, yeah. I think reached, that's yeah. I think we've reached there. What was it again? Um, I forget the name. Come on. Oh, I see. Oh, oh. There be orcs hiding in these hills. Ambush! Oh, I think we're gonna have a fight. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. All right. Uh, at war spire, only gates remained. A door to ruins, scorched by flames. Oh, war spire. That's what it's called. Uh, ash smeared across its once great frame, no survivors in sight. Hastily they fled, the rubble silently their pace redoubled. Scenting the impending trouble, they marched straight through the night. Northward, once they caught the trail, off all known maps, beyond the veil, clattering blades and jingling mail, now chafing for the fight. Okay. Oh, more troll oh. loot. Okay, so... I'm just gonna put this, maybe... No. It's the oh, glare the that's glare? like, yeah, and then it messes with the camera, too. Um, kind of annoying, but it's okay. We can just close it up. Okay. Uh, so we got trove loot. Uh, We got two more new loot. It's, so that's a whole bunch of loot we haven't yep. seen. All right. Scavengers Endgame. The surroundings have grown unnaturally still as the smoking ruin on the edge of Daylor civilization draws nearer. Whatever this was intent on leaving no survivors. Or sorry, whatever did this was intent on leaving no survivors and even animals are steering clear. This place could be barren for years. Still, there is no use in letting good supplies go to waste and it wouldn't hurt to see if there's anything worth salvaging. Unfortunately, a stealthy band of ruffians who thought the same thing was has just been spotted, and they aren't interested in sharing. So, uh, there's a battle oh. option and a peaceful option, both on land. So you can flip that over. Um, fight amongst the ruins is the first option. So we can do a battle, could get an extra training point out of it. Battle queue is batty points. Party of one, subtract two points. So we are on day seven, so it's 14 points. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a lot. Wow. Okay. Okay, all baddies enter battle on melee batty positions. So even if they're ranged, they'll be right next to us, which is good. So we can maybe kill some of the, the annoying ranged ones faster than normal. Place a stack of three health chips on each ranged batty position to act as the crumbling ruins. At the end of any turn in which a batty loses two or more HP... Remove a chip from the crumbling ruin stack in the baddie's lane. The battle is immediately lost if two crumbling ruin stacks are depleted. Oh, so you have to maneuver where you're killing them from. Or just hit them for one HP, like choose your dice so you're applying yeah. damage when and it's like, like not chisel safe. them. But you have three health, so you could like hit them for more. So you have two, if you do hit them for two or more, you just remove one chip, right? doesn't matter, yep. one chip. So yep. in a single lane, you could 
potentially do two big hits on baddies and you're still good. But yes, you have to be careful if there's one health chip left on the mat in that lane and you're trying to kill another one or do a big hit on them, you don't want to lose it, but you can lose one stack is fine. But once two stacks are depleted, I think that's fine. Or we could sneak around and push the building on top of the enemy. You sneak around and collapse the ruins on top, waiting for uh, atop the waiting scavengers, but the structure lands on you as well. All gear locks lose one HP and skip the recovery phase. Not the worst. That's like a that's like loot heaven though. You're getting but yeah, we're three just, loots. We get there's four I think cool loot sitting on the top that we got that's new. Yeah, and you get to see but it's even not more. a training point. Like, do we want to be building up for the final battle? Like. Are we ready? Because the next battle we're going to have three five-point baddies. Are we like ready to take those on yet? I don't know. Should I have another health? Maybe. Maybe you should. I don't know. Yeah, if I can get my I health regen, I think I need one more health to need... be the same as you. So yeah, we... so we can pick. And... Yeah, because when you have defense up and I'm getting attacked from ranged enemies, yeah, uh, we got to stop that. Mm. Sneak around and push them. Ah, I don't know. So right now we're, what, 14? So we're going to have two fives and four ones. But also with the second option, if you're digging... Uh, you're getting so much loot. Like, I would draw four loot cards and discard one, and then I choose what I keep out of all that. You definitely, you're losing one HP, but you're going to find healing loot. Like, well, definitely, one of those will be a healing loot, I think. Yeah. You and know? one HP is not terrible yeah, going into nothing. the next battle. And we, yeah. I'm fine with that one if you want to try. But we're missing out on a training point. We're missing point. out on a training point. But again, we've seen some of this loot is better. Like, you were able to kill a crown in one shot with one of your loots. Yeah, which there is are, huge. There are loot that can help us offensively do some... You could get a... There's a spear, I think, that you could, like, do damage at range and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, or or the healing loot that will just help us survive in the long run later, you know? Yeah, if we can build up loot for the final boss as well. Hmm. I'm fine with that if you want to. They did just give us new stuff that... Might be interesting. Yeah, like I'm curious. I want to just look at more loot in the box, but but I can wait on it. We'll still get loot no matter what. We still get one, so we're gonna see three of them. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, maybe we let the chat decide. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna post it in the uh, in the live chat. I put a poll, so if you're watching, you can vote. What would you like to see us do? Would you pick the top option, which is the battle? Fight amongst the ruins. We gotta be a little careful with the crumbling uh, ruins. We could get a trading point out of it, a progress point and a loot. Or do we sneak around them and we push it on top of them with the bottom option? Um, but we get to see three loot each. I actually get to see four and discard one. And we each just lose one HP and we skip right to the recovery phase. Oh. Oh, skip the recovery phase. Yeah. I, I said that completely wrong, and I was like, wait, how would we get our rewards if we skip to the recovery phase? Wow. Wow. Yeah, so skip the recovery phase so we can't heal that one. So we'd be starting the battle if... No if... healing, no scouting, and no trading loot. Right. So we're stuck with whatever loot we find also. So I would definitely have to, like, discard a whole bunch that I get, although I could just get my fortune discovery right now at a battle and just... Yeah, yeah I should probably do that anyway. Go up because I have zero stones, so yeah. I'm gonna definitely go to five stones before the battle. And right now, I do have this big rock, but I could get rid of it. I'm just holding it as long as I have space. Oh, yeah, but I'm only gonna get three anyways, so unless something's heavy, I'd be fine. Oh, yeah, heavy. Most of the heavy stuff's only trove loot, though. I'm on top, so the choice is clear. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew, <laughs> Matthew, those beers kicking in. All right, I'm going to close the poll. Thank you, everyone that voted. Awesome, awesome. And... 80% uh, going for the top. Oh, right. you guys want to see a fight. Okay. Top option. So battle cube baddie points. Uh, so we said it's 14. Yeah, so it's two fives. And then One, all two, baddies three, enter on melee baddie positions. Okay. And then we put a stack of three health chips on each range. So you can start going yep, on that. Yeah, sorry. So we have Goblin Artificer, four health, two attack. Uh, that's level one, which is this one. One, two, three, four. Here. And his any is five. What's he have? Uh, uh, oh, equipment. equipment. So we have so to roll, roll D6. D6. Sorry, I didn't even look at his stats. Uh, five. Five. And equipment is... 
A five gets him, uh, increases any die by two. Okay, so it can only go up more, one more. So, so yeah, six. he's a six. And, <coughs> excuse me. Let's see. Thank you. Oh, oh, sorry, yeah. And then we have... <laughs> oh, this guy. Oh, gosh, a I dragon ground or seven. So he is going in lane two melee. Seven health, one, two, three, four. Yeah, those guys are six, annoying. Seven. They hit for three, and then they keep weakening Weaken over and over two. again. Weaken two. So it's, like, hard to kill them. Okay. And yeah, then... that's a shield bash target for sure. Oh no, these signal guys that are going to add one a one point baddie Can't for two him. rounds in a row if they're still alive. Goblin Broadcaster. He only has one health, so I mean he may be something that we focus on. Oh, I didn't put the die out for this guy. Sorry, so he's a five. And then this guy is a six. Holy, these guys are going to be going before us. And then one more. Oh, another equipment Cobalt guy. Cobalt Collector. We rolled a two, and two means it increases HP stat by two. Oh, oh whoa. He's got five health. Okay, this is going to be a challenge, this one. And three is his any die. Okay. All right, so we will roll for us. Five. Okay, that's good. That's good. I don't go last. Four. Four. So you're going in here. I rolled four, and I'm that far down. That's yep, crazy. They all had super high ones. Okay. I'm tempted. And this is the battle queue? Oh yeah, sorry. So we have two one-pointers sitting in there, plus he's gonna add a one-pointer at least. Oh he yeah, goes because he us. goes before us. Oh man. That's a lot of baddies. Wow. It'll be all about defending and surviving. Like, mm. But remember, any round that one of them loses more than two HP, two or more? Two yeah, two or, or more. more. We have to knock a thing out from behind. But again, so we once, can kill once, this guy, that's easy, because this is not going to do anything. Yeah, we just, as long as we, like, yeah, we only hit for one. And maybe this guy, we kill him in this lane. Yeah. And he goes after you, so there is a play, like, based on your start of battle stuff when you roll it. You could have enough defense here, you roll these to hopefully get bones. And then I do and a your shield defense. bash. Yeah, you fill it up here, and then you just attack him with your attack dice, and then shield bash him all the way in one shot. Because all that damage will be added together and only takes away one chip and you could kill him before he starts doing the weaken two thing and three attack dice thing over and over again, which gets okay, super Okay, so then annoying. I'll start here then. Yeah, I think you're the one to eat his hits and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, this guy is really annoying for you too because he's mischievous two dice away. But if he goes, if you start here... Yeah, I think that's who I work on. Then he can't mischief anything away from me. Yeah. And this guy, I could just range attack him and ignore this guy at first. So I just start like here... So the first round I just roll the tinker thing on him, roll a bunch of defense dice. Yep. And my movement stuff. Yeah, because at that point he'll have already... But then he'll remove any... He'll mischief two on the start of the next round. So anything you build up... Me? Yeah, but then before your next turn again. Oh, yeah, true. He'll mischief them but away. But he won't mischief these away. No. Just the active stuff, right? Yeah. Mischief's but if you, only active? Yeah. I want yeah, to targets active slots, yeah. yes. So okay. not lock slots. No. Okay, so then I'm going to roll my shield wall. Oh, this is so good. I got five. Oh, I also could nerf the guy in front of me. Damn it. But I don't want to let that signal guy go add too many baddies. Too many baddies. <laughs> this is really good for sh uh, shield. Yeah, yeah. Shield bash as well. Five, if I can roll. Okay. Um, so let's start Oh, let's up. start. Okay. So this guy's going... Uh, nope, sorry. This guy's going first. He's blue. Uh, so he is going to mischief. We said nothing. I have nothing in my active slots. Uh, okay, he's going to roll two attack two die on attack you. Dice. And hits oh, me for three. There goes my defense on my lock slots. Bit. That's okay. Okay. And then this guy, he's range, but he's well, going to signal. He signals, add a, a one point baddie to the top of the queue. Okay. And then. Uh, he's going after the weakest, which is me. So he's rolling one attack. And one he's defense. range, so he doesn't need to move. Yep. Uh, okay, so he hits me for one. Take away a health chip if you don't mind. The bonus does nothing. Okay, and then it is me. Yep. So I'm gonna roll so two to... attack dice. Whatever gives you more two. bones. Remember, defense gives you more bones, but you can't roll any. Unless I pull out this one. Yeah. Because I can roll five dice. Let's pull out this one. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I'm hoping for yeah, maybe sense. even if it's a two. Yeah. Okay, and I'm attacking here. Okay, I think we got him. I think we got him. So the two 
bones are going to go in here. One defense is going to go up here. I hit for three, which will do one, two, three. Yep. And then I spend the two bones to do a shield bash for five. Which kills which him. Which kills him before he gets to and go. And lose a chip off the back column because you definitely did. He and lost these, two or more yes. HP. That's and for sure. These come back. Uh, so two. Goes and before he gets to go back of the and pack. weaken. So that was good. That was yeah. good. Okay. Okay. And then you. Nugget. Um, yeah, so we say I'm going to try to stop the signal guy. And I'll roll two defense. And then, I mean, I can roll this, but I don't need to. I'll just roll this. And yeah, my target is this guy, range attack. Okay, so I have two extra movement. Oh yeah, that other guy will knock this right out of here. Mm -hmm. Oh. I'm well, not... he's only gonna knock away two, so you can put your defense in there. Oh yeah, true. Because this guy will hit me. Yeah, that's true. Okay, yeah, I have defense to protect it. Yep. Okay, and I hit him for one and kill him. Okay, nice. Done. Okay. Okay, and then okay, this guy. guy. Here, let him cross. And then I assume we wanted to go. Now, I don't know what's going to happen. If we sh put him here. Oh, one, two, never mind. Never mind. Hmm? Just thinking. If we put him in, in here, then I could attack him. Again, hopefully, not a one shot, but. Do something yeah, similar. Yeah, we have a two buffer here, so that would be safer. But I mean, we can lose one column; it's fine. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If yes. we like focus on one instead of having him come here. But still, you'd only take away two chips on that one, so who cares? I'm gonna fight this guy here. Hopefully, take him out in two at worst. I think we're fine. Oh, but there's these ones still. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Yes, yes. Move so him I in. think we move him yeah, in yeah, here, yeah, yeah. and then he attacks for one and one. Yes, yes, yes. I see. Oh, he's going to get two defense, and he's going to hit me for one. Great. So now, oh, no, I'm still one higher. Okay. End of the round. So we're we have gonna two bring guys in to come in. So number two, two. first. Oh, it's another equipment dude. Uh, D6. Right here. Got it. Four. Four is increase attack stat by one. Place an attack die on him to show this. Okay. So three oh, health. Sorry. And he's going, he wants to go to melee one. Then checks two, then goes to three, is here. I'll we'll put that on him. Okay. And okay. then the next guy is a oh, little hardy. Oops, sorry. What plated kobold. And he's going to go right in here. Oh, and I didn't put this in. Sorry. This guy is a three, but he goes at the bottom. Mm -hmm. And then, okay. And then we're back to the top. And we're starting with this guy. So he's just attacking for so two. Mischief two. Oh, mischief two. I apologize. Yeah. Eight those go out. And he's attacking for two. Two dice. Two dice. Uh, hits me for two. Wow. Down to three. That's mm. crazy. Okay. Then it's me. And then it's me. I can roll five. One, two. Hmm. Did you? Yeah, this is bad. Very bad. Hmm. One, two, three, four, five. Maybe I don't roll any attack dice. No, I gotta roll at least one. Let's do this. On this guy. Oh, I finally got my health regen. I got two bones. And, and that's I got when two it's going to apply at the start of your turn, you get a health pack? E yes. Hello, uh, Drew. Hello, Locator. Yeah, at the start of your turn. And then this one's a bone. Oh, hold on. What does the do-over do? I think I can re-roll. But I don't think I have anything I can re-roll. May immediately re-roll any number of dice rolled. No. Okay, because I would put that in there. Okay, let's keep that like that for now, I guess. All right. And then it's you. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Still love your channel. Oh, thanks, Drew. <laughs> Good to see you again. Thanks for all the great content. Much appreciated. Thanks for watching, Drew. Thanks for the support, by the way. Uh, you're awesome. All right. Yeah, you dropped in at an intense moment. We're trying to win yes. here. This is a tough one.
Yes, this this book of fun encounters has been very interesting. I, I like what they're doing so far. All right, I have five decks. Definitely rolling this. Three attack, one defense. Three, four, five, six. I can heal one. Uh. <sighs> it's risky. I need to get this guy for four. Should be okay. This guy right I'm debating front of you? healing, but then I can't roll defense dice, and I kind of want the defense either to give me bones. We just can't have two of these less than two, right? Of these back walls? Yeah, we can have one fall down, but not two. Okay. This guy needs to go away. Yeah. Yeah. Got him. Oh, I did get him. That's nice. Okay, this will go in a lock slot. So it doesn't get knocked away. Uh, we get a bone, and then he's dead, so we gotta take away one health from this pillar at the back. The ruins. That's good, you're... That's a two five-pointers gone, so that's better. Mm-hmm. I just don't like how there's a one-two attacker still. This guy yeah. hits for two. This guy, these guys only hit for one, that's not bad. Uh, okay. And I think... Oh yeah, I did have two movement, but I didn't want to move, so we're good. I don't think I can use that movement whenever, but yeah, that's fine. Uh, okay, go ahead. I don't. Uh, that was you, right? So then green is this one. He is just going to roll one attack die on me. And he gets one. Okay. And then purple is this one. He's melee. Move him into. Move him in. Or keep him in the lane he's in, actually. So, like yeah, so that way I only, like, whittle down that one. I, I'm worried that, like, it might take out one, and then you're going to take out this one, and we're, we lose. Yeah. I'd rather spread it around. All right, so he's attacking you for two and a defense. Hits for two and a bone. Bone so does nothing. defended for two. Okay. And then yellow. So he's just going to move down. He's just going to move down yeah. here, and one attack, one defense. That's actually not bad. Oh, two bones. He doesn't even hit. So that's perfect. And then this is not bad because Hardy reduces all damage down to one anyway. So this guy's perfect, actually. Oh, yeah, true. So. And go with the flow. It just says, want to say hi. I'll be watching it. I won't be watching live. I'm going back to the beginning and watching from the start. No worries. Oh, no worries. Hello. Thanks for stopping in. Hello, hello, hello. When you catch up, hello. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah hello. Welcome back to catching up in the, fu in, in the future. <laughs> okay, that's the end of the round. So we're going to bring our last baddie in. Oh, he's a signal oh, guy. No, but over. he's going to go last. Oh, yeah, that's true, because at one point he goes to the yeah. end of the queue. Okay, so, so oh, boom, I he's here. In. And I guess we could put him so, right here, right? If you want to... Uh, well, he has to go where the chip Oh, yeah, goes. he has to go where his chip goes. Unless sorry, it's sorry. Busy, then he goes to the next one. No, you're right. All right. Round three. Round three. It's me. Start of the turn. I get to heal one. Now I'm at full. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, you can take out that one. Because now I'm like, this attack, they're both the same attacks. So I'm wondering if I just whittle this guy down. Maybe I try to build up some bones so I can... Like do an all-in-one hit on that guy too? Well, yeah, so then I can... Oh, and some defense, so then I yeah, can one-shot yeah. him when it's time. So let's do... Let's attack this guy. I want to do one. Which guy? This guy. Oh, the Hardy. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. One, so there's like no two, way you'll, you'll hurt any of the pillars. Three, four, five... Yeah, yeah. We're going for this guy. Alright, we've got lots of bones. We got the one attack, which is good. Maybe oh, I can get the innate going yeah. as well. Take that as your fifth. Yeah, take yeah. this as my fifth. Yeah, Hit let's... for one. That doesn't do anything. It's only one. Doesn't do anything to the wall. Do it to the wall, yeah. Sorry, yeah, sorry. He still lost an HP. And if I get one more bone next time... Okay, that's me done. You. Okay. Uh, I have five decks. I think I just hit the signal baddie guy in front of me. And oh, Lisa also says, just leaving a like, we'll watch later. Happy to see <laughs> hey, more too many bones. Hello, going? Lisa. Thank you, thank you. No worries. No, you guys want, I appreciate the highs and the likes <laughs> and all that. I appreciate it. 
Uh, I do appreciate the support. Don't feel bad watching later though. Like I totally understand. Not everyone's available at the time we stream. And anyone who's watching this later, you're just as awesome. I always joke that the people here live are more important or better or, you know, whoever showed up on time is the best. But no, I, I'm a cord cutter. I've been a cord cutter forever. I'm one that likes to watch my shows or consume my media when I feel like consuming it. I always appreciate that, like the YouTube and that kind of stuff, the way live streams are archived. Like, you know, on Twitch. Sorry, one thing I didn't like about Twitch back in the day was uh, your streams can be archived, but it, it, Twitch doesn't have a good way to search them and they're only there for so long then they get deleted. I like on YouTube the way it's like kind of like it's easily searchable later and findable and saves your position and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, totally understand. You watch it later, I, it's all good. But I, I, hello to everyone watching later. Uh, it's all good, it's all good. I appreciate you guys a lot. Was that just a regular dice that dropped or your own personal? No idea. Okay. <laughs> oh, it's just a defense die, sorry. I was going to say, I can try, I can try to grab dice. it if, if you I'm need sure it. I'm we'll have even more when uh, Unbreakable comes out <laughs> later. We're going to have way more. Uh, okay. Okay, so this is you. So I am going to... Do I move? I don't need to move. Are you going to target this guy before he signals? Is that your plan? You know what? I am going to... Yeah, 100%. Okay, good. But I only need to do one damage, which won't hurt that pillar. Right. So I'll just stay where I am. Uh, roll two defense. I'll roll the attack just to try to get some bones. And let's go for it. Tinker Bolo. So he's definitely dead. Okay, doesn't hurt the pillar. I do get a bone. Doesn't get the signal, that's good. I'll put these two one defense up in my lock slots, take my long blade back. I won't apply this attack to anything. Uh, and I'll revitalize for two. My two bones back at plan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm done. Next. Done. Green. This guy. He's just rolling one attack die on me. It's me for one. Okay. And then purple. This two one. attack two dice. Two attack on dice me. and one defense. Sorry, one defense. He gets no defense. He hits me for two. That'll take away these defense. Okay. Done. And then yellow, this guy, he's just rolling one attack, one defense on me. Hits me for two, oh, I will spend he two one. Oh, he only hits me for one, sorry, sorry, one. I was looking at the two. Takes that out. Okay, right. that was yellow, yep. Round four, back to me. Okay, I'm going for this guy. I want to get the innate going, so we're rolling three defense. We're rolling two attack. That's all we can do. That's five dice. I don't need to heal up the start of my turn, so I'm full. I didn't even, oh, I did get a bone. I was like, I didn't even get a bone. All right. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, this is my attack. This is my attack, this is my attack. Yeah, just, we already said that. Oh, two. So yeah, you do need two. to apply all three hits, which will take away this two shield and one health. Still doesn't affect the ruins at the back. Okay, put these defense up here. I now have my six. Well, you could actually do it in a different order where you can fire off your backup plan and then allow you to put these in your lock slots. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're yeah. right, you're right, that's right? better. That's what your backup, that's an 8 plus 1 or whatever is? Yep, and I'll just read it for everyone just to know. So my an 8 plus oh, 1. Oh, I have it right oh, here, okay. actually. Yeah, I'll just remove all these. This goes back home. Did I take the wrong? So on the right there in the yellow box, I you did. have Pickett's innate. So it's like a built-in ability. At the start of battle, Pickett may roll all his defense dice, white dice only. And place rolled defense dice in his active slots. For this roll, bones cannot be placed in the back of the plan. Then the innate plus one is gear lock wall, which in addition to shield wall benefits, Pickett may also put rolled defense dice, white dice only, in his locked slots even during battle. Locked, locked defense dice will not reduce the available defense dice. Like eventually you want to get this in a lock slot, yeah. but at least have one lock slot that can like keep dice for the next scenario and you can open up the scenario with like all your things filled with dice and big, big backup or big uh, shield bashes and stuff. Okay. That was me. So he's down to one. Okay. You. All right. I guess I'm going to do this. Maybe I can get rid of this guy's attack if I can't kill him. Although I kind of really want to kill him. So maybe defense dice are not the play. Yep. Um, yeah, I'll just target the guy beside me, and yeah, I nerf him by one attack, but is he dead? He uh, is dead He is anyway. dead, I think, yeah, right? Yeah, so let's not apply this. Yeah, three. 
Yeah, I hit him for four. Take one away from the ruins in the back. And I get one defense up here. I should just roll defense. Oops. Done. Next. Uh, next is green, which is this guy's rolling one attack on me. It's me for one. I'll just remove this one. And then yellow is this guy. He's rolling one attack, one defense on me. He gets one defense. Hits me for one. All right. Hello, Edgar. Round Edgar five. Edgar says, ate some strawberries from our garden. Found few grubs. Mm, fresh strawberries. Fresh strawberries are so yeah, good. Yeah, homegrown strawberries. Oh, oh, my God. We love those. Yeah, local local strawberries are the way. Yep. That's the way. Yep. Okay. All right, round five. Uh-oh, we're almost it's fatigued. Me. Fatigue might be good, though, because it'll do some damage to yeah, them. Yeah, it only does one at a time, which yeah. is fine. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to, again, I'm attacking this guy. I'm rolling three, four, five. Yeah. Actually, I need to get one through at least. Let's do that. Two attack, protein. two defense. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, those grubs are the good protein. Yes, yes. <laughs> All right, we did get it. Oh, I can't get the for the life of me here. I don't know if I'm going to keep that, actually. Uh, no, I'm not going to keep that one. And one hit. Oh, one hit only does who are, who are this guy. Yeah, just take off shield. Yeah. Sure. Just wanted to. Cool. He'll decide to start the next round anyway. Yeah, so I don't even know true. why you attacked him, but. Because I don't want to. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, you're but right. you could just knock defense away from you're this right. guy. You're right. I should have probably done that. All right, my turn. Uh, yes. So I'm going to use my free movement from down. He will attack both of us if you move there. I don't know if you want to uh, just... He's got to die eventually. I'm yeah. not wasting stones on him. Okay, okay. I uh, will try to tinker bolo him. I'm going to roll some defense. Like, I probably only will take away one or whatever. Yeah, I'll just roll this. Let's see what happens. Oh, I could have put that in there. Sorry, sorry. All right, so I do two damage. We'll just take away this. Uh, I could reduce his movement by one, but that's pointless. I uh, will take a bone and... Oh, I didn't flip. Take this defense. Oh, you flipped because you're an eight oh, plus one? Oh, for my eight plus one. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I cool. forgot to flip my actual card. Oh, Jerry says 3 a.m. Going to pass out. Good no night, worries, Jerry. Jerry. Good, good night. night, good night. <laughs> Sleep well. Yeah. <laughs> Lucky 13, Jerry. <laughs> I can't believe you got that, Jerry. Wow. All right. Wow. Uh, so I'm done. Next. You're done. Green. So he's going to attack. So he rolls against the weakest, which is me. Yep. Uh, he rolled a bone, so no defense. Hits me for one. Takes away this. He rolls his attack against you. And he rolls a two. So whatever that defense is. Defense blocked. Okay. Next guy. This guy, he's just going to roll one defense, one attack. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. He gets one defense. One. Hits you for one. All done. right. So start of fatigue rounds, we all lose one HP. This guy is Gonzo. Okay, done. Uh, he goes in the dead stacks. These are all our three that we've lost. Okay. okay. And then, then it's me. Yeah. The start of my turn, I will recover one. I will then roll this one, two attack, and two defense on here. Oh, I finally got it right before it ends. That's perfect. That's perfect. Uh, hit for three, but we probably one, two, three. That should be four because oh, be... you have this plus one. Oh, right? which is fine, right? Because we're allowed to do one more here. We can do two more there because we can lose one. Okay. It's fine. So but yeah, do I we can... want to kill him yet? Uh... I don't think we want to go with me hitting him. You could put him down to one health so I get to go, and maybe I can revitalize myself. Sure, sure. So I'll just use Cause only. Because I'm at four HP right now. Uh, you are at one, two, three. Yeah, yeah you're at four. I would like four. to roll bones and maybe heal. This will go and, and lock a defense slice and maybe. Okay, so then I'll only I'll only use three of my my hits. Okay, so it took away one from the I back. I did. Yep, yep. So he's down to one left. So there's no way we can make him lose more to reduce the wall or whatever. No. Nope. Or the ruins. And now it's you. Okay, uh, so I'm gonna roll two defense. Uh, this doesn't give me bones. No. I'm gonna roll three attack. I want bones, so I'm not gonna roll my long blade. And I got, oh, you got no, no bones. bones. Seriously? <gasps> wow. Uh, I don't want to keep losing health, so yeah, we'll just finish them off. I'll put one up here in my lock slot. Done. Yeah, that sucks. That's annoying. It's like no bones when you want the bones. And, and, you know, I was joking about that. The game should be called Not Enough Bones. All right, so I we play. were fine back here. We only had one. Yeah, yeah. 
So I'll remove all these. So that means we're successful. So we each get a loot. We each get a training point, and we get a progress. We're going up to six progress. Again, we need nine for the tyrant, and we have to beat him by the end of day eleven. So sorry, we each get a loot. Each get a loot. So, so here's two for two. you. Yep. And this is, should be new loot. Yep. They even feel new. Yeah, yeah. They're different. That's why I say like our base set and the undertow are completely different than the rest of the loot we keep getting from other expansions and promos. So it like makes me want to rebuy the original loot, or I don't know, rebuy the core set and, and undertow. But like that seems stupid. Uh, charred rations. Party of one. Heal yourself two HP. Oh, sorry. Party of two to four. I should care about. Each gear lock in the party may heal to three under full HP. So it's like oh, it's, it's only food that's really not low. that great, but yeah. it's the whole party. Slightly overcooked, it says. <laughs> that's funny. Uh, ruby red goblin shoes. Oh, look at those the are toast. hot. Look at the toast coming through that. <laughs> uh, at the beginning or end of your turn, place yourself on any available gear lock starting position. There is no place like Gnome. <laughs> that's not bad. <laughs> oh, you have to choose which one you're going to keep, right? Oh, yeah, I discard one. Um, heal to three under full. I don't know. Later that might be good, but I, I don't know. I'll just do the ruby goblin shoes. I don't know. That heal is like, I don't know, not the greatest, but it could be great in like a four player game if we're like almost all, like we're all getting beaten down. Yeah. And it's like, if we're all down, especially if we're going through fatigue rounds. But, but now that I have this, it's better. I know. I, I, it's fine. Yeah, we'll see. Okay. The wingless dragon, single use. Place your gear lock on any available position on the battle mat. Please, Please sign, sign this insurance, insurance waiver prior to use. Carnival. So that's from the that's from the carnival. <laughs> awesome. It's a carny equipment. Oh my gosh! It looks it's like uh, there's a seat on there, so you can yeah, like yeah. just catapult yourself somewhere. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. That's good for me. Oh, this is dragon. gone. And this is gone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we get a training point, I think, right? Mm -hmm. All right. What am I doing? I'm taking a health. Done. Um, boom. I almost want another deck. Set. Oh no! Now I'm not rolling these. Those are locked in. We have three, four, five. Maybe I take another attack? Or... Another dex, maybe? I don't know. Like, right now I'm rolling everything I have. I can... Yeah, but you're not really moving ever. No. I don't know if at some point you'll need to move, but... Well, I could take... I sure call. Or yeah, I take could the... Yeah, could be nice, but... I don't know. I remember you have ones that help you move around and stuff, I do, too. I yeah. I just haven't taken them yet. Uh, I think I'm actually going to go with, I'm going to try for attack. So hopefully like some of my defense will be locked up. So yeah, true. we'll see. And we got it. And then we can just base on what, what we need to happen. Okay. All right. Uh, that was reward recovery. I'm just going to heal up to full. my seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm full. So do you want to scout or trade yeah. for, for better loot or? No, I think I want to keep both of my loot, yes. So, <laughs> didn't know they had lawyers and dealers. Oh, you betcha. I'm scouting. Uh, One. Oh, that's not what I wanted to scout. I wanted a five pointer, but you probably sure. already seen it. No, maybe not. Oh, it's a hardy and compound kobold tenderfoot. Okay. Oh, he's fine. I'll keep him at the at the front. Even if we put him at the back, we're probably still seeing. Yeah, him I know anyway. that's true. Because what are we going on day? We know the last guy is that one mind guy or something. What are we going on day eight next? So we'll be at 16. So yeah, we would see, yeah, we would see him. But then he's fine, I All think. All right, let's go to our next page in the Automaton of Shale. Oh, I like this one. Look at this, like a forest. Oh, we know we got baddie chips or whatever in Two here. Two of them. Uh, so what's going on here? We got gear locks hiding in the woods, it looks like. Oh, I see. You can see them kind oh, of. based on. You see them kind of duck as I open it, yeah, and then you see them hide. peeking. Oh, that's cute. I like this one. Like where'd they go? Oh, this guy's still showing. I think he's. I up. think he's supposed to be. I think he's like peeking. I don't know. Looks like he might not be bent correctly, actually. I don't know. I can't get my hand in there, but. Yeah. See, he looks kind of bent. And yeah, see, I think he's supposed to bend. In, not stick out. I don't know. Anyways, it's all good. Still looks cool. I could be wrong though. No, because yeah, because I can see white. So maybe it's supposed to be there. Either way, I, I, it doesn't bother. I don't know what's going on. What's this guy? Is there someone there? Oh, he's on the other side. Oh, I see. 
So you see Tink like hiding there. Yeah, I just feel like this guy's supposed to be hidden at this point. But I could be wrong. Whatever. Okay. I dwell too long on these things. <laughs> Being too critical. Eh. All Did right. you peek out from the bottom holes? Oh, oh so then it's oh. wrong, right? Ours is kind of... Yeah, I think he's supposed to fold down. He's got bent. He's bent in there, but I can't... It's fine. When I get my other copy, I'll check. <laughs> it's like, and this is one I'll send to somebody. <laughs> uh, all right. Upon a mountain lost a myth, which rose up like a monolith, they sensed that soon they'd reach the pith. They paused then to prepare. Unsure what tyrant lay ahead, and like king staying alive, not dead, their boisterous armor soft they shed, exchanged for subtle, subtler wear. Branches, leaves, and twigs they gathered, across their bodies tar was slathered, until each gear lock looked rather like trees but debonair. <laughs> so they're, they're disguising themselves. Okay, let's see what we get here before we open the chips. So I see an encounter. Oh, oh, and a tyrant encounter. Oh, okay, spicy. We got earth tones, which we'll read in a second. A tyrant encounter, which I'm assuming is going in the next one in the deck. I'll just put those in our encounter pile. What? Oh, are these backwards? Oh, they might be backwards. Flip them, flip them. No. I think they should be oh, that should way. Oh, should they be like this? I feel like yes. Oh, so was, I had it upside down. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. So trove loot and then three loot. Yeah, we didn't see what they were, so it's fine. Yeah, whatever. Okay, uh, so we'll leave the tyrant encounter over there. Oh, yeah, we put this here. Whatever. Uh, the forest is crawling with enemies sometimes. You just know it, despite not having seen nor a hair of anyone else in miles. You know what? Uh, this is bothering me. I think it's only when the book is under. Like, if you close the book, I think it fixes it. Mm, no? That's fine. So we're going to go like this. Bear with me. Uh, uh. And then I want to try this one. There we go. We're getting better. Okay, I'm going to try this side. Yep, okay, I fixed it. I should have just did that at the beginning. It only took two seconds. Uh, yeah, because if I put this loot here, yeah, see this loot, because our undertow copy, like I said, we got a first print run of it, and they accidentally put like too much coating on this side and none on the back side. So we actually have like a dual, dual layer of coating on here, which creates like this epic glare and reflection. That's why they look so different. Yeah, they're even hard to read for me without my glasses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes the text blurry. We've talked about this before on stream. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I could have requested it, but everyone had it that way, and I don't know if they were replacing them anyway, but it's fine. One day I'll reach out and see if I can buy, like, a new copy of all the loot cards that I have that are weird. Um, but it's fine. Anyways, just annoying on camera. Uh, so, yeah. So that's the reason why these will not... I mean, that's better. Maybe I can do it a bit more. No, nope, other way. Okay, I'll take it. Yeah, I'll take it. That'll work. All right. That will work. Dominic has a good question in saying, uh, shouldn't you then start with the Tyrant encounter? I don't remember which order they came out. I just think that, the, I think that it wasn't, you didn't open it upside down, I think. Just those other ones were upside down. Oh, uh, they're numbered, I think. Uh, I don't know. Is Tyrant encounter numbered? But I think I think it goes in this order because uh, it the way it talked in the riddle is like earth tones, like we're preparing and disguising ourselves and preparing for an upcoming Tyrant battle. But then again, so our Tyrant encounter cards are kind of getting prepared for that Tyrant battle. I, I don't know. 
But they were in there like this, but then again, the loot was in there the other way. So should I have been going at it from this side or this side? Like, how, how do you know, right? I feel like just the loot was upside down. Y yeah, like, I, I don't know. And maybe, it, maybe it wasn't, maybe... It... But again, the way we've opened it, all these have been showing this way too, based on us keeping the loot face down. Are we supposed to keep the loot hidden? Probably not. Maybe they're okay with you reading the loot as you open it. So maybe oh. maybe they're okay with you seeing the backs of these too first. I, I don't know. Oh. So yeah, I'm going to go with this order just because that's the way they were in the back of the pack or the front of the pack. I don't know. Um, but we'll just do it in that order. I, I don't know. Probably won't make a difference. Well, maybe. Well, maybe yeah, because they want them in a certain order, right? But oh well. All right. The forest is crawling with enemies. Sometimes you just know what I think I read all this, right? Uh, no, I think I stopped when I was getting annoyed by it. Uh, the forest is crawling with enemies. Sometimes you just know it, despite not having seen hide nor hair of anybody else in miles. In fact, the lack of activity in these woods is suspicious enough on its own to justify a myriad of fears. Some may call that information bias, but seasoned adventurers call it gearlock intuition. In the event of someone approaching in stealth, gearlock intuition has also decreed that the best defense is to cloak oneself in the garb of the wood, camouflaging any body parts in brush, poultices, and powders that blend in with the landscape. Now all that's needed is an outer outlet for this paranoia or er, intuition. So option one is surprise attack. Wait, how do I get this stuff off? Battle queue is batty points, add number of points equal to party size. So we are on day eight. We're on day now, eight, right? yep. Day eight, so 16, that is 16, 18. and we'd add another two, that's 18. Wow, okay. Gearlocks have surprise, so that helps like take out some guys before they take us out kind of thing. In round one, Gearlocks may use no more than two decks. Oh, that's annoying. That's annoying. So you get to attack first, but you can only roll two dice. That's annoying. Or it... brace and prepare to strike. Shockingly, your disguise is quickly exposed, but it does buy you a bit of time to get a defensive stance. Battle cue batty points. Add number of points equal to party size. At start of battle, that's when you roll your little armor, whatever, wall, shield wall, gear, in, or what's it called now? Uh, what is it gear called? Gearlock wall. Gearlock wall. Gearlock wall, yeah. Um, each gear lock may roll all their defense dice and place roll defense in their active slots. So we get to do the shield. Oh, we all you, get, get shield you, all, you get mine as but well. But you get to do it too. So yeah. if you didn't fill them up with your other one, uh, rolled bones are not kept. Oh, so I get to do it twice. I see. Okay. Yeah. So you can like, well, yeah. Huh. Okay. Um. Hmm. That's crazy. Only having two decks on surprise. Uh. I don't know what to say about that. Because they're going to be five pointers. So we're going to have three five pointers, which I, rolling two dice against five pointers, like unless I get my Tinker Bolo, which like nerfs to attack or something, it, we're still going to get beaten back hard. Well, we don't get any benefit from either one. So why don't we just take the second one? You will be able to build up oh, some yeah, shields in defense. Yeah, true. We just don't have a surprise, but that's fine. Okay. Yep. All right, we're and going we're with number gonna... two. Okay. So we have 18, is our battle queue? Uh, yeah. 5, 10, 15, yeah. 16, 17. Yeah, Dominic says I would go with the bottom, I, I agree. Yeah. And then I got to shuffle these ones back in, because we've made it through, made it through our one-pointers. One more. Okay, so here's our battle queue. We are starting with a dragon, dragon breacher. Yeah. Has compound and careless two, six health. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh yeah, the, these guys Range. too. I don't know, hold on. Oh, these sorry, ones. sorry, sorry. Yeah, we need a five point baddie and oh. one, two. another five, uh, oh, a 20 pointer. Okay, so, we just, so the 20 pointer, pointer on the goes top. on the top, and then it'll just. This so will be our first. 5, one. 10, 15, this one we won't see. Oof. 
that one was already up. Okay. So sorry, this guy is the guy from the book. We got an Orc Shaman rating a poison two undead. I don't know what undead is. Five health, one hit, or one attack, three defense. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. He is range. Yeah, it doesn't say anything on the tyrant encounter four. about special baddies or anything, so I don't know. All right, don't then. Did I do that wrong? Oh, no, that's our dragon. <laughs> Greg's here, checking in from Disney World. Sorry I missed this. Hope it was fun. We'll watch later. Greg. Oh, no need to apologize. Yeah. Greg, way to rub it in. Way to come in here and put a little salt in the wound. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Enjoy Disneyland uh, yeah, with your family. Hope you're, having a good time. hope you're having a good time. That's awesome. Do you open the chip compartments only when told to? No. I, it it hasn't told us ever. There's no explanation. <laughs> That's what I was saying at the beginning. There is nothing on the instructional sheet to tell us what to do. So it just says add as you find the stuff, you just add it to your, the top of whatever stacks or card decks or whatever it goes on. That's it. So I think we're supposed to open them like right away and throw it wherever it goes, but they don't seem to be tied to the card specifically. No. Okay, then we oh, have a goblin no. artificer. So he has equipment if you will roll. Oh, they're all ranged so far. These two are ranged. And that guy this too? guy is oh, he's melee. melee. Three, he's going here. Do you want to roll equipment die for me? Five. So we got a two, which is? So two additional health or something. Stupid. Uh, yeah, increase HP stat by two. Okay, and then this guy we'd already scouted. He's a kobold, two, he's melee, lane four, and two is his. And then here's our Q still. Oh yeah, I was gonna just look up. Three. Ugh. Just wanted to look up undead, because that new guy has rating, poison two, and undead. That means like, does he come back with like half undead. his HP or something and rolls extra attack or the something? first time this unit is defeated, place it back on top of the BQ. When it re-enters play, it starts with only two HP and its attack is doubled. Yep. <gasps> and then he's rating. Yeah, all right, here. Will you look up rating? Is that the one where it gives additional... Yeah, see, that's why he buffs up the orcs. If we're not playing with orcs, it definitely affects uh -huh. the difficulty. Well. Uh, rating is this unit gains one extra attack die for every additional orc-type baddie on the map. But again, if you're only playing with undertow stuff, you don't have orc-type baddies. Interesting. Okay, well... Yeah, that's weird. But, oh well. You got a three, so let me roll this one. I got a five. Oh, I can go first. Okay. Okay, so now we now do, we do our... this... Um, I get to roll my two defense, and I get to put them in active slots. Oh yeah, this should not be here. I'm also doing the same. Oh, I only got it once, but you said I get to do it twice, right? Well, because you have your own. Because I have my own. Right? We already, you, you know how that so, works. So I'll do it again. And Whoa. I'll take this one and this one. Nice. All right, I am loaded. Yep. So hopefully you roll some bones at the start and can smoke somebody. Okay. Or just use it to survive longer. So I'm gonna go first. Compound. Oh yeah, we should have been already on the mat when we were. Oh yeah, that, sorry. Uh, I'm thinking about going here and then moving up to this guy because maybe I can do some sort of two, three, four, five. I have already oh, one. Poison two also. Yeah, poison two, undead. Poison two, undead raiding, which we don't care. This uh, guy's go does careless two when he rolls a bone, so he hurts himself. But he's compound, so this guy compounds the one that this guy also has that they get. Harder attack the later round, so each round they get higher attack stat. So you kind of want to take care of them as fast so as I possible. Could, I could go for this guy instead first for the poison, because I go before him, or else he'll get an attack on someone. It's up to you. Because I can probably one shot him. Up to this you. guy's going to be a problem, but I get to go first. Yeah, this mischief guy is also a problem. We yeah. just dealt with this guy. Yeah. But I I think it's fine because I can put stuff in my lock slots as well, my defense in my lock slots. Which I won't roll any defense to start anyway, so he moves to... I think it's fine. Yeah, I can go for this guy. And then I'll worry about this guy next. Unless you want... Oh, he's attacking three people range. Unless I try to one-shot him before he goes and we... I just... 
I just take the poison. Who's the attacking three people? This guy. Oh. He is a fiver, right? Yeah. But only one die at first, but then two die the second round. Yeah, yeah it's gonna get annoying. Yeah, this guy I just worry about because he's gonna roll three defense die as oh, well. Yeah. So maybe wow. I go here and I go for that guy first. Because I can maybe one shot him with some of these defense before this guy knocks him out, anyways. Okay. Hmm. So then I should just go to try and take care of this guy, maybe. But he'll go first, and I'm the weakest. No, we're tied right now. But we can pick who he mischiefs and attacks. Yeah, and based on my roll, he maybe he'll mischief me. Which I'm only rolling two attack dice. I might have to take some of these out. Some of these singles. For, to, yeah, you could. To get some bones. I'm doing one hit already, so I just need a four. Uh, yeah. But then you risk not having enough damage from your shield bash by taking out too much. What if you roll all bones? Well, I would probably take out two. Then I would have two attacks. How much health is he? Five. I have one already here. Yeah. But if you get bones on all your stuff and a bet worst roll ever, then you miss and he's still alive. Yeah. So I would just keep as much in for a shield bash as you need. And like, if you don't roll bones, then you have enough attack. And, but you need yeah. to roll bones. So I don't know. Okay. But it's your call. Okay, I think I'll just start there. You good? Um, yeah. All right, so yeah. I'm first. I'm going to move up one. So you have four decks. So I have four decks. I'm going to roll definitely three attack. Yeah, you might not and then take I'll this take day. one away. Yeah. That's my four decks. Which, yeah, we'll see what happens here. Uh, okay, so let's put this up here. I think I got him either way. No, I don't. I think I'm oh, one you're shy. you're missing a bone, as I said. Yeah, if you don't get bones, you're in trouble. So I hit for four. Yeah, I'm one shy. But it's fine. He can poison me. I have re I have he uh, yeah, heal, that's so that's fine. All right, well, it is what it is. Okay. Then this guy. He is range, so he doesn't need to move. He's going to attack the weakest person, which we could say is me. He's also has well, kid. No, yeah, okay, he starts with you, sure. I don't think it matters to me. Alright, he gets one defense, hits you for one. Uh, then he rolls an attack on me. This one. Uh, I get hit for two. I'll take away these ones, that will get mischief out anyway. Next. Okay, yellow. This guy. So he's gonna mischief. mischief. Nothing in my active slot, and okay. if we choose me. Okay, but then you don't have, uh, are you okay with the two hits? I don't know. Otherwise you're losing two dice here, and I have defense here. Sure, I'll take okay. it this time. And he only has for one. Bones he's a do bone nothing. to nothing. Okay, and then okay, nice. blue is this guy, so he's going to poison two uh -huh. to me. He rolls three fine. defense, one attack. Uh, hits you for two, and he gets two defense on him. Done. Done. Uh, you. Next. You. Me? Okay. Yeah. Uh, five decks. Hmm. So three attack, this and this. Mm. Yeah, it should just go really offensive. Yep. Uh, yeah. All right. I can nerf his attack. Yeah. I'll nerf his attack by one. I'll hit him for three. Okay, I'll take a bone here. Okay. Next. Next, this guy is going to move in here for one, and he's going to roll one die on me. Hits you for one. All right, round two. Nothing at the end of the round because we have no available lanes and chips and all that stuff. So me, yep. poison Take. two. I guess I can just do poison one, right? Because at the start of the round yes. I can choose. So, and then this Well, you take the poison, then Take the heal. poison, then I heal, yeah. Okay, then I'm attacking here. Uh, we'll do three attack dice. I have five, three, and two. Okay, we got three bones. We got three hits, which is enough I don't even need to use. Yep, so you okay. knock away his defense and you take him out. He goes to the top of the stack, right? Oh yeah, for the, the undead. Works, undead. Yep. And then he comes back with two health. Place it on the top of the BQ. When it re-enters play, it starts with only two HP and its attack stat is doubled, which is just one. Okay. And he's only a five pointer, right? So he goes to the bottom of the queue when he comes back. So we can probably kill him before he does any damage. Okay. 
Purple. This guy. Okay, so he rolls an attack against you. You're the weakest. Uh, Bones rolls an attack He's against careless. me. careless. Two. One, two. And Sorry. hits you for one. Knocks this out. Done. Done. Uh, yep. Yellow. This guy, so he's just going to attack you for one. No mischief. I got nothing. Attacks me for one. One damage, please. Next is me. All right. Uh, I am going to... I guess just try to take him out as best I can. Three damage he needs. Three damage. Yeah, roll this. So two here, two extra movement. Okay, I only hit him for two. And I get a bone here. And next. Oops, this is green. He is going to roll two attack day this time on me. Actually, I don't want to be... Oh, yeah, because he's going to mischief too. Who are you hitting? This, uh, oh, I can hit this guy on my turn. Yeah, so I can hit him. Yeah, okay. So keep them uh, So he's attacking me for two because he's compound. Mm -hmm. three. Oh, three. That's great. Got three defense. Okay. Uh, end of the round. Yeah, he's going to come good. back with two health. Oops, sorry. Okay. I think he's ranged, right? Uh, yeah. Okay, so he's going right to back right here. There. So he's only got two health. And he's attacking for two now. All right. And we're round, round three. three. Yep. Oh, these guys are dirty. Oh, I only rolled one attack die for this guy, and he's compound. Oh. So one more die on you, which would have hit you for one. And then one more die on me, uh, which was a bone. So careless on him. He did He did careless one time already. Yeah, on you. Oh, yeah, he yeah, can only trigger once. Yeah. Yes, never mind. No, that's okay. Yeah, uh, once per turn, once per round, right? Or turn, turn, turn. turn. Yeah. So then I'm going to take the poison, heal the poison at the start of my turn. Uh, we'll go attacking here. So we're doing three attack dice. I have no Unless you want to kill the guy who's going to just poison you again, then I just say I wouldn't take this, you know, so I don't, like, he doesn't get rid of it. Uh, if you're fine. Yeah, go ahead. Go if ahead. you're fine with go that. Ahead. Uh, okay, so on this guy, yeah, his attack die is double. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. The audio for the transition screen okay. kind of bugged out for me. Nothing major, just a heads up. Yeah, sometimes it's weird, but I'd rather have it than not have it. <laughs> so, yeah, sometimes it makes like a buzzing noise I've heard, and yeah, it does some weird things, but I don't know. Okay, and then I hit for three, yeah. so he's dead again. It's definitely weird, but I don't know how to fix it, so. Because not every time, either. I know, yeah, it's, it's, it's weird. I, it doesn't make sense. Weird, weird, weird. Okay. Yeah, I debated um, just muting it, which I have in the past. I've muted it before, but... I'm done. Purple is I think this the guy. longer the stream, maybe the worse it gets. One, two, three. <laughs> I just need to stream for like only 30 minutes and we're good. <laughs> All right, he's going to... I'll say Zach me first for three. And he got three. He got a bone, so that does two to him. And then he's going to roll the same three on you. Oh, he got four. Four damage. Okay, a block two. Take away two. Okay. Yellow. He is going to roll mischief, nothing. Roll one attack die. Bones. Bone, oh. nothing. You. Okay. I am going to roll this. These. He's one away. I know, but do I care about him or do I start working on these idiots that we've ignored that are really damaging us? This guy might be able to damage himself with one more careless, but... Yeah, I think I need to move two. Well, I guess he's hardy, so maybe I could just range attack him. Yeah, let me do the long blade range attack. You can do your defense if you want. I'll go for this yeah, guy yeah. next turn. So I'll just roll these. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I do have stones, actually, but I won't miss, so I'm targeting this one. And I do hit him for one. And I'll throw a bone in here. Defense in here. If you want them to... Two extra movement. Yeah, I'll go for that guy. And then I think I want to revitalize. For two? Yep. I'm at six right now. I think so. Yep, six out of seven. Okay. Good. Next. Okay, he's going to attack me for three. Oh, I have no defense. Yeah, this is the problem. These so guys. Like one more can heal. These guys have been three. left too long. Three damage. 
Down to two. That's good. If I get one more bone, I can heal, so. All, All right. right. End of the uh, round. End of the round. new guy coming in. It is a uh, chimp acrobat who's got blind strike one and dodge. Two health. One okay. attack. He is range. Uh, melee. No melee, so he wants to go here. Okie dokie. Round four. Me first. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, start the turn. I get to heal one. So if you can move up and take out this guy before he does two, four attack dice on each, like one, four attack die on me, one, four attack die on you, actually opposite order. Will you be okay then? Do you want to remove your movement? No, it doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, oh, yeah, so I'll spend just, one. Just do it. Who cares? And then one, I two, three, care. four. Nope. Uh, I need to go the other way. One, two, three, four. Because I need. And then I'll That's, just try to take yeah. this guy out so that we don't have those guys rolling. That'll, that'll take out 12 attack dice off the board. Oh, I rolled too many dice. Because I only have four. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So let's yep, do all again. Do only two and two. Two and two. Sorry. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, we got one attack. Two attack. One, two. That's unfortunate. But I could do... Oh, I don't have any shields. Okay, I'm going to... Use, oh, here we go, okay. I'm gonna use four, which lets me heal, heal two, and place a two defense in my active slot, and then I'll just take these two. And I can't trigger that again, unfortunately, so it's one away. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Next. Next is him. Maybe he's gonna roll, we'll roll on me first. One, two, three. Maybe he'll roll a bone in this. Oh, he's rolling four attack dice. Yeah, I forget which order they do backup plane in, but go ahead. Maybe we don't need to worry about it. Four attack dice and one defense. If we get one bone, which we did, we got two. So he does hit me for two. I'll okay, block hold on, two. No, no, no. Hold on. What order do baddies do their stuff in? Uh, start of turn effects trigger. They move. Then skills the baddie does not list specific timing. Roll dice. Resolve the roll in order. Place defense on them first. Apply total roll damage to target. And resolve any backup plan triggered skills. There you go. So he still okay, does attack you. So he would you, still yeah. do that. Then he would attack me for two. And then he did get careless. So he's dead. He kills himself. Okay. All right. Yellow. So mischief, he exhausts this, and attacks me for one, uh, does nothing, bones. Okay, okay you. All right, five decks. So I will just uh, long blade this guy. I'll roll two defense. Yep. All right, can throw this here. This Not goes here. This kills him. And... Yeah, I'll revitalize, just taking one more health, please. Okay, and then he'll go, blind strike, there's nobody there, so then he's gonna move one, two, and he's gonna roll one attack die on me. It's me for one. Okay, end of the round, this guy comes in. Oh, it's another little plated kobold with hardy. Attacks for one, one defense, three health. Going to the bottom of the queue. And he's purple. He's range. Yeah, melee, melee. Melee. Okay, round five. Mm -hmm. Pick it. Start the turn. I heal one. I can't hit him. I think I just come. Which guy would you prefer? Uh, Need it. I don't know. We're about to go to fatigue round, so the hardy guy will like go away really fast. Um, yeah, because I think I need you to take this, this guy. This guy will die at the start of next round if he, like, yeah. So I'll, I'll go this I'll, way I'll then. I'll just hit this guy probably just so we can take away one so he dies at the start of next round. Okay, so I have four decks. So let's do two and two. Oh, I don't even need to roll these, actually, Let's because I have the one here. So let's do three defense and one attack. All right, so we got two attack. We just, just need one. Yeah, but the same applies to this guy. You could have done one damage. Oh, attack. yeah, it's I forgot, I forgot. Down, but whatever. Two bones. I will use them to heal. I'll use the benevolence to heal two more, which I think I can take. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. And place a two defense here. Okay, so this guy at mischief and hits me for one. I'll just take away this. Okay, and then you. Okay, and I'll just uh, long bleed this one and just roll two defense. You got him? Yep, just for one. Just for one. Okay, next. Next is blue, uh, blind so strike. Oh, is there this we go. Guy. That's good. Yep. And, and then uh, he is looking for the weakest, which I think we're both tied, right? Seven and seven? Yeah. So we can say it's me. Sure. And we'll go like that. And then he'll attack me for one. Actually, I'll just knock that down. Okay, and this guy is going to roll one attack, one defense against you. Uh, no one. defense, it's you for one. Okay, fatigue rounds. Where is it? I think that kills all of them. Yeah, and, and we, we just each lose an HP. And then we're home. All right. Clean all this up. All right, that's end of the battle. That's yours as well. All right, so we get a loot, a progress point, and a training point. So up to seven progress points. Holy, this thing's a long. Okay, two loot for you, right? Yeah, two for me. I look at them, discard one. Oh, these are new ones. So we got uh, war paint, single use. After uh, placing any die, move any one gear lock any die to the top of the enemy. Well, I wish I had that earlier. That's not bad for a boss fight because the boss. Yeah, I'll definitely need to use that when I, I roll low or you roll low. Yeah. Uh, and a cracked chalice until depleted. Oh, oh wait, I gotta read the flavor text. Uh, typically made from a mixture of glump berries and ground agate paste. Okay, cool. Uh, cracked chalice, use until depleted. On your turn, place three health chips on this card. At the start of each round, remove one health chip and heal a party member for one HP. When the last chip is removed, deal one true damage to any unit in play. Interesting. Chalice from a palace, thrown with great malice. Uh, I'm going to take the go to the top of the any meter one. Yeah, that's, that that's is huge. What we've been lacking a little bit. All right, I found tactical strawberry, single use. <laughs> Place an untargetable effect die on any gear lock. <laughs> Appears to simply be an effective practical shrubbery. That's awesome. Uh, okay, so that's not bad. <laughs> so we can have a untargetable effect die if somebody's getting low on damage or something. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm one shy. So I think I'm... Oh, sorry. We have more over rewards. Uh, then a training point. A training Which, point. Mm, I think training. I want to take... I'm going to take a dex. I'm going to take confidence, which just gives me more defense, which is die number 11. Yeah, give me some more defense. Then we got rest and recovery. Uh, I'm just going to heal. I'm just going to heal one as well. Ah, uh, it's starting my turn. No, I'll, I'll heal just in case. Yeah, I don't you go. can go without it. Yeah, but I still... you get still... those shield walls, the gear lock wall, all that stuff, and... I mean, I have all oh, this. We're going to here. nine, so we're going to be at 18. So we're going to have a similar. Oh, wait, this should be in here, I think. I meant to lock it. Yeah, no, I'm going to I'm gonna heal. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, day eight. Mm -hmm. Tyrant encounter. Rock and steel. Cavernous. Echoing clangs tumble from the mouth of the cave, peaking it's likely peaking is likely dangerous, but perhaps there's some clue hidden within as to the nature of the hor horrific creature that's been haunting these parts. A head poked around, a stalagmite reveals the first glimpse of the heretofore elusive foe. A shambling behemoth whose skin seems to be covered with a dark, grainy substance akin to rock. Sighing heavily, the monster picks up a stone hammer and begins working on a new creation at its makeshift workbench, a recreation of a direwolf made entirely out of scavenged mechanical equipment. Just then, a gearlock slips, a gearlock slip creates a clattering that echoes through the cave. The monster turns its head to listen and then is gone in a flash, leaving only its mechanized minions as a formidable vanguard. Land battle. It's been tinkering with these baddies. Question mark. 
Battle cube value points, party of one, subtract two. So we are on day eight, so this is 16, right? Mm -hmm. um, all baddies are immune to, oh, I see, they're like robots, I get it. Uh, immune to poison, bleed, and fatigue. Poison, fa bleed, and fatigue. Okay, I don't have any of that stuff. Good thing I didn't take Nugget's Dagger there with my training point, which I debated doing. Uh, okay. Roll the d6 at the start of each round. Oh, this is like teasing what is to come with this guy about rolling a d6. Because usually the tyrant encounters are kind of like a glimpse at things to come. Roll the d6 at the start of each round. The result is applied to all baddies. Attack form is ranged on one. Two, attack form is melee. Three, could roll plus one defense dice. Four, roll plus one attack dice. Five, have the skill assault. You Six, have the skill blind strike two. <laughs> okay. Wow. For each HP a baddie would lose, the party may forgo removing the HP to increase the D6 by one. If the final baddie is in play is defeated while the D6 is set to six. Oh. What? Treat this card as loot. Okay. So if we give them blind strike. Treat this card as loot. Automaton wiring. At the start of any round during the Tyrant battle, change the Automaton's mode to a different mode of your choice. Single use. Oh, so we need to kill the last baddie on a six for sure. We need this. If the final baddie in play is defeated while the D6 is set to six, treat this card as loot. Yeah. So it's kind of like your last baddie. You're just playing with your food until you can get it to be a six. Oh my god. Or we keep increasing it. But we can only do two attacks. So if we roll the no, five. No. For each HP, a baddie would lose. So oh, every for point every of point health. of health. So you you know you hit that final baddie for like three damage. He's losing three HP. You can tick it up. Okay, but I if it's you can't tick it all the way up to six, you're you're in trouble. Okay, we need some we need some good rolls here. Is okay okay. This is doable. Or if it's like two baddies left on the board and they have like a total of five HP, you could like. Keep increasing it for sure to get to the six before they are dead. Yeah. But it's okay. funny, as it changes though, and the next baddie goes, they have whatever it, the number it's at, which is crazy, which is fun. I, I, this is so cool. All right. Okay, we probably need that somewhere around us. Yeah, I got it right here. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So BQ is baddie points, and we said we are 16. Yeah, eight times Nine, two. 10, 15, 16. All right, so we have all four coming out on the board. Ape Imposter, so he has untargetable and one mind, five health. But only untargetable if he one, rolls two, the three, four, baller. Five. Oh yeah, that's... And he's attacking... He's attacking range. Range by default, but it could change. And he's attacking two weakest, so yep. both of us. And then he's going at three. And then... Gilles says, good night guys, watch the finale tomorrow, love this, thanks for the playthrough. Thanks oh, for good watching. Night, good night, yeah, good night, have a good night. Next one is a Chim Sentinel, he has dodge one mind. He is melee attacking the weakest for four. One, two, three, four. He is, I say melee, and he's going, oh, he's going early. He's going at six. Okay, then we got, I'll just do, I'll just do show you both and then get them ready. So we got a, oops, sorry. Goblin queen guard, poison one, signal one. Okay, going for the strongest at melee. And our last one is another Ink and monkey. Okay. And he's ranged. So this guy's three. Six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have three beasts on the board. So this whole one mine that's going to be triggering twice means like they'll all get to roll like one attack die against their target, I think. Yeah. Hopefully we get to go before one of them. Yeah. On this unit's turn, all other beast type baddies roll one attack die against their target or targets. Yeah, so maybe we could take out one of so them. So the range one will get to like roll twice, you know, like one attack against each of us, and then on its turn roll two attack against each of us. Yeah. All right, let's see where we're gonna go. Two! Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I don't have any re rolls. Five. Five. That's good. So I'm going last. All right, where are we going? Where are we going? That's right. Dodge one mind. Oh, another dodge. This guy's pretty yeah, yeah. I can't take out him. Well, yeah, you can with your shield wall. That's oh, like what yeah. you need there. Shield bash. Shield, shield bash. bash. I could work on this guy with the poison. Like, I could be his target because I get the regen. Mm -hmm. But he's not part of the one mind. I know, that's fine. So. But he has signal. I don't 
I don't. You won't be able to take it before he puts that one in there no, anyway. No, no, I'm going last. Huh. The one's coming in. I think it's fine. Oh yeah, round one. Yeah, the blue dice are the day counter. The green are progress. I, I did the blue the same font as the blue on the card, which I know a lot of you don't use the card. Normally use the mat. So day and then progress. So seven out of the nine we need. Uh, seven progress. Seven progress. And we need nine. And we're on day eight. Oh, day nine. Day nine. Oh. So we mathed it wrong. Okay. Wow. That's fine. Why did I think it was eight? Five, ten, so fifteen. Verena 16, H is one of those people that likes to ask the question. 18, 18. And not say like, hey guys, you guys are wrong. Like just say we're wrong. <laughs> No, no, it's fine, it's you fine. Don't, you don't have to dance around and ask the questions. 16, 17, 18. So we're at 18. You can say, hey, idiots. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's the blue dice are nine, not eight, Rob. Well, yeah, maybe for, they weren't sure which ones to know which ones we were counting, but, but even so, they would too. both be wrong. They're both wrong. <laughs> yeah, our BQ's 18. Yeah, 18 points, thank I've you. I've added two more here because we have 16 on the board, 17, 18. Doesn't change anything for, for <laughs> did what we, do we it did. we right last time, last round? I don't know. I think we did because last time we had plus two, right? Oh so wait, what, what were we on, 16, 17, 18? I feel like we did. I don't know. There's one that we had plus two. I'm not sure. I don't remember. But this shouldn't be off by... It should be off by one. Well, no, but we have the chance of gaining it before we go. Uh... Oh, this one actually has a chance of getting us... Oh, just one. Never mind. Huh. I feel like there's only one time we miss getting any. Yeah, so hold on. Let's let's we can calculate it. One, two, three, four, five... Six, seven, eight. So I probably didn't give us what we just had, but minus one. So it should be seven, which it is. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the days would be day one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we're on nine. So these oh, are right. Oh, so they're right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so we did it right. Okay. And then about, the yeah, it's nine times two. Yep, so 18. Right. So we have... 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. We so. did it right last time? Okay. I Perfect. Just, I was worried I didn't tick this up or down. I, I did it wrong or something. So it All didn't right. change anything. Added our two more that we have. Okay. So Perfect. that's thank good. You thank, you, thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, help. that's good. because Green dice are okay. You're on start today. Perfect. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So thank I you for think, the help, Brenna. I think I'm going to focus on this guy. But if you're going to start on like this side, I could go here to take these two. Oh, he's ranged, so he's going to attack from anywhere. But if you wanted to be on, like, this side of the board, I'll go in here. Or I'll just go here, whatever you want. I don't know what to do. I kind of want to just take out one of these guys that hits for two attack dice, but this guy's actually hitting for kind of four, plus the one mine stuff. Off this guy, he actually makes him and attack he, for, like, six dice around. Yeah, and he may become untargetable, which will be a pain. Yeah, so I, I want to just go at that guy. I can stones from anywhere, so it doesn't matter. But this guy's three attack dice also, I plus know. the poison. This guy's I'm the gonna, worst. I'm going to try to, and he's going to signal, which is going to be annoying, but I'm going to try to work on that guy first. So I think I'm going to just be a big chicken. Okay, so then I'll go here. Big chicken. Okay, then I'll roll my three defense dice. You do your tank job. You take all the well, hits. I got only ones, the but that's fine. That's fine. It'll still block some. So I'm loaded again. I like that feeling. Okay. Uh, and I think that's it, right? Anything? I think we're going first with purple. So he has one. Sorry. What? One mind is before or after, or why am I forgetting? It's just like at, on their turn before they do anything, basically, right? Yeah, all other beast baddies roll one attack die against their targets. Okay. Yeah. So he is going to force both so of these. they move first, then they do the skill. Okay, so I think he's just going to go like this. Then he's going to do the skill, forcing both of these. Oh, was it a Warcraft Easter egg? No, I didn't catch that. Can you pass me the, the orc shaman we just fought against? Yeah, I can. This one? Yeah. Is he Warcraft? I don't know. I mean, it looks like an orc to me, but I don't know Warcraft very well. Raiding poison undead orc shaman. I don't know. There are orc shamans in that, but there's 
or yeah, orc shamans in a lot of fantasy stuff. I, I don't know. Yeah, it probably is. Probably is that. Yeah, it, it, I can see where they the guys who design this they they do like that that stuff, but I can see them pulling from Warcraft for sure. Orc is an orc. Yeah, exactly. That's what but I thought. It's an orc shaman, <laughs> but yeah, I know orcs are just something that's been in fantasy for a long time. Yeah. So Warcraft just basically jacked all that stuff from like Tolkien's work, right? All right, so his one mind is going to force both of these guys to attack. It said one attack die against, or what did it say, attack die against her? On this unit's turn, all other beast type baddies roll one attack die against their target. So, so this guy's ranged against the weakest. So, so we can say we it's me. Sure. Nothing. Bone. Bones, so who's untargetable. This guy is going to go against, you said you're the weakest, so he'll attack yep. you first. One. And then he's going to attack me for one. So just lose one of your defense dice. Yep. Uh, this one. Okay. Now okay. he's, now gonna, he's gonna attack. Two attack, right? Yep. And one, and defense. one defense. So two more, and he gets a defense. Okay. He's done. Your turn. Hmm. Minka Monkey's untargetable now. That's annoying. But I wasn't going for it. He any. didn't roll bones, did he? No. On the defense? Oh, he hasn't. Oh, that's this guy. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, wrong guy. Wrong guy. Yeah. So I'm going to try for this guy, I guess. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to use three stones, going down to two. My long blade. Um, and I'll roll two defense. Although I could nerf his attack, but I think I'll save that. Yeah, I'll just go with this. Okay, I put that in a lock slot. I deal, whoa, I deal six damage, just enough to take him out. Wonderful. That's awesome. Okay, get a bone, which I will pop the bone to collect a stone. That's awesome. Done. Okay, green, this guy. So he is going to roll one on me. Is the weakest. Fine, Are but I'm going to, oh, I'm going to take. For sure. I think so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Can you take it actually? Because I'm going to take sure. this guy's hit. I'm the weakest. Bah. Okay. okay. Next. And then and he's not untargetable anymore, right? Yeah. Oh, so you should roll a defense too. Oh, I didn't even see that one. Sorry. Uh, which is a bone, so he's untargetable. Okay. <laughs> then this guy's going to go. He wants to do this. Poison, Poison one. Poison one. Oh, sorry. I didn't do the signal. Poison one, and he's going to signal one. Oh, well, you're doing them both right now. Signal one. Oh, he poisons you. Oh, he poisons me. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> yeah, they move signal first, one. then do their skills. Unless they're timing related. Then he's going to do three attack dice, one defense dice. I only have. Uh, okay, he got a lot of bones and two, so I just have to take one. Not the worst. Okay, and then now me, I take a so poison, poison and, you regen, and I heal the poison. Out, yeah. And then I'm going to attack here. Let's do one, two, three, four, five. Okay, I got one defense. I hit for three only. One, two, three. And I got one, one ball. Let me try to get him. Okay. And then the start of the round, or the end of the round, we're going to get one guy who's going to come in who is a <laughs> goblin, goblin devastator. devastator. One, two, three. And it goes he's bottom of the queue. In melee. Round two. Here. Okay, purple guy. Purple guy. Uh, he's he's gonna, he doesn't need to move. He's going to do Follow. one mind, so he's just going to trigger this guy. Oops, to roll one attack, one die, attack die on, on the weakest, which is you. One. I don't, oh, I have one here. Oh, is that? I got to look at that one. Sorry. Uh, yeah, I don't remember. How I don't remember work. if that one just. That one is. Prevents damage. Treat uh, as defense when active. Uh, for, on picket for shield bash. Okay, so I think it just goes away and is exhausted. I don't mm. think I like that die. But they're good. If but I needed to if get you to the other, other dice one to protect it and line up a good yeah. shield bash. And but stuff. I needed to get. I needed to take that one to get down to this one, oh, okay. which has four defense on it. Okay. Uh, now he's going to attack me for two attack dice. Two. Two. I might be in trouble here now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, slide it over and then slide oh, yeah, it over, sorry. please. I just don't want to keep reaching over. No, you're fine. Sorry. 
All right. Um, so I am going to use Ruby Red Goblin Shoes. Single use at the beginning or end of your turn. Place yourself on any available gear lock starting position. I will place myself here. And those are gone. Okay. I will then roll for six decks. Three. This one. Don't think I'll miss, but there's a chance I do. Could nerf him. Nah, it's okay. All right. No, he's dead. I rolled six damage. Wonderful. More than enough. Thank you so much. Okay, those will go there. And Done. next. Okay, he is gonna roll one attack, one defense on me. Uh, hits you for two, oh, and he's good. untargetable again. Okay. All right, me, I will heal one. So you're at three health? I'm at three health. If Ooh. I get a couple more defense, or a couple more, one, two, three, four, five. This guy, one, two, three, oh, he's got detonate, but he's fine. <laughs> I think I just go for this guy, and then maybe we focus on this one mind thing again together. Me and then you. Mm -hmm. Oh, dodge. I can't hit him unless I get shield wall. Mm. So maybe you want to smoke the guy beside you that's going to blow up and hit you for two? Yeah. And hope you, hope if you kill I him. If I don't, if I don't roll enough to kill him, I just won't. Yeah, you can't. You don't need to apply it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But you oh, did. I did. I did. You I did. Okay, him. so I got four, which kills him. I got one bone, and I got two defense. Put the chip. Oh, there, yeah, sorry. Okay. All right. If I can get two more bones, I can heal myself for two more. Okay. End of the round. Oh, I could, sorry, I could place an untargetable a die effect on me if I'm worried. But are you able to take some hits? I, I don't care. You do whatever you want to do. Yeah, I'm going right. to I'm gonna do that. It's all good. I think we're in a good spot. Okay, so we got a dragon biddy coming out with three health. Uh, he's melee, position one, bottom of the queue. And this guy is a goblin mutant. Mutant. Goblin mutant. Mischief one. Okay, four. And bottom of the queue. All right, round three. All right. Purple, this guy. So one mind. Uh, it's so just he's got to move. Guy. Oh, so he's got to move first because I'm untargetable. So I think he's going to do one, two. Sure. And then this other guy is going to. Attack Target. me because you're untargetable. Yeah, I think. Okay, boom. He knocks this away. Okay. And this guy's gonna roll two attacks eye on you. Hits me for two. Bones do nothing. Okay, you. Okay, I want to. Hmm. I like the guy beside me is the play. So, three attack this. Well, oh, Jack, you are so right. We haven't rolled the D6. Oh, at all. We totally forgot about this. That's my bad. So I forgot as well. Shoot. Should we start over? That sucks. Well. Yeah, totally forgot about this little rule. Oh, this is not the first time I've done this, that's for sure. Oh. Uh, yeah, that sucks. Wow. Yeah, we got to do the battle again. Okay. I think, With the same I think enemies? we do the same enemies, but we shuffle them up so we don't know what order they're coming out in. Okay. I don't know. No, that's fair. I think that's fair. We yeah. just... Yeah, that sucks. Okay. One and one. Damn it. Yeah, it's my bad. I put it here and then totally two forgot signal. it was a thing. Because I just wanted one, to, like... Two, I thought the battle would be really long, and that made it even longer by not being more careful. I think so. That's technically, I think it was 5, 10, 15. <sighs> Why do we have 20? Did I bring something on that we shouldn't? Hmm. This one, we don't need. 5, 10, 15, 16, 17, 18. And there was a signal in there somewhere. What is our day at? 5, 9, 18. Yeah, but then there should be another oh, one. Oh, so there should be the, the, the detonate. This guy. Some. Okay. So let's do so these we'll three are going to come out. Whatever. Okay. And I'll put three of them on the bottom. One second. We'll put this one back on the top. Whatever. Yeah, I don't know. These okay. go here. Okay. Uh, let's put you back home. So when does this happen? At the D6 at the start of each round. So we miss it like <laughs> One, three two, times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we also miss the the opportunity to like increase it or low. Uh, I guess only increase it. I don't think we want to worry about that at the beginning. It's yeah, only at true. the end. 
All right, so we have a our. Yeah, because if they got assault ape. and blind strike, that would have totally changed One, two, it. Two, three, four, five. Plus extra defense, extra attack. And he's melee. Where's one over here? Okay. And sorry, he's going at three. Rewind. Oh, man. What did I have up here? I think I had a two and a one. And then he's six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Poison. And my he loot is I spent. Here. If you can get me your loot and my loot back. Oh, and yeah. <laughs> and then we wow. have our chimp going. One, two, three, four. He is melee. So they're just in different positions now. And we have our weakened dragon biddy for three. One, two, three. And he is melee. Okay. Oh, I didn't put any of these out. One, two. Yeah, three. and we also ignore fatigue. Poison, bleed, and fatigue we ignore three, on the baddies that are immune six. to it. Roll a d6 at the start of each round. The result is applied to all baddies. So, like, I okay. could just, like, I don't, I don't know. But that's kind of could bad. put it, like, around the yeah. mat somewhere. All right, let's I don't know. Put it there. Four, four, four goes here. Okay, do you want to roll your die? Where did it? Where'd they go? Yeah, oh, we're right playing here. too many bones. Resets happen. That's true. Yep. So. I think I had one. Yeah, that's definitely one. they do. This is not our first time this we've had to do Five. this. Five. Okay, this is better. Better start. So. <laughs> Five. Five. You can go right. before me if you want. Sure. I don't know. All right. Okay, I'll do my shield wall of three. My gear lock wall. All right, we got two. Oh, yeah, we should be on the board already. So okay, now, they're in different right. spots now, so. Yeah. You can one poison signal. One mind, one mind is still a problem. But now we go. Uh, oh, and I probably was also attacking that guy just a minute ago with attack dice, which I shouldn't do because he's dodge. Woo! Okay, so maybe I'll start here. Maybe I can do a shield wall to start or shield, shield bash. bash to start. Maybe. Because I can but... roll. I don't know. I have one. I just need to roll. Or I go here and I, I take care of this poison. Yeah, as you said, you take poison because you can regen. Yeah, because I can regen. And the same thing applies. Maybe you shield bash him away if you get yeah. enough. And then I would just be a chicken and hide again. And then you can roll the d6. I don't even know where it is. d6, start of the round. Let's find out. Oh yeah, did I use some stones? You did. Yeah, I think it was at five at the start also, because I think I spent some to do a big attack, and then I collected one. Four. Four. What's so roll plus they roll one plus attack one die. attack die. This is gross. Okay. This is gross. This is okay. So. With one mind, too? That's, that's so bad. <laughs> Let's not forget. Just for this round. We'll take them away as their turn goes. Okay. So yellow is going to go for Oh, let's put this back to one. Yellow's gonna go first. He needs to go. Uh, Black Cheval says, I used health chips on the encounter card to track how many times I've increased the die from the encounter effect. Uh... Yeah, I don't think it matters because we can do it unlimited. And we will only probably want to do it when we're going for the last baddie. Yeah. So we don't need to, uh, like, I wouldn't. I, it does make sense though, but like, yeah. It, it's not limited per the round, right? I don't think so. For each HP a baddie would lose, the party may forgo removing the HP to increase the D6 by one. So literally every time you hit a baddie, you have to decide how much HP you're taking away from them or you're increasing the die. If the final baddie is in, in play is defeated while the D6 is set to six, treat this card as loot. Yeah, there's no limit. You can keep increasing the die until you get to six. So I, I don't think you need to track how much you've done it. But I guess more information tracked is better, but I don't see the need for it in this one, but... Alright, so he is going to go... Because you would just modify the die, right? So we know it's a four for the round, so yeah. Yeah, re-roll the die each round. Yeah, you do re-roll the die every time, so... Alright, so one, two... I probably should have started here thinking, knowing that he was going to go first. Unless I'm missing something. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I knew he was going to go first. Oh, I should have started here. First round, so I wanted to keep track. Okay, okay. Yeah, I didn't know if we were missing something. Or there was an errata on it, too. That, that could be a thing. Yeah. All right, one, two. 
Okay. And then, sorry, I just moved because I knew he was first anyways. There's one mind, is just this other guy back here who is attacking each of us. One attack die. Yeah. And uh, I'm the weakest. Hits me for one. You're next. Hits you for one. Okay. Then he can't hit anything. Okay, then it is you. Hmm. I think I want to go for this guy. He's going to be doing three on me and three on you. Mm -hmm. All right. So we'll do the same thing. I'm going to spend three stones. Oh. Yeah, he can't hit anybody. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Never mind. Just brain fart. He, yeah, and he doesn't roll a... He didn't, he, he, he oh, he rolled defense. these. Yeah, he rolls a defense. Sorry. Bones, nothing. nothing okay. okay. So I spend three stones so I can throw three attack dice at range. I'm going for this guy in the back. Okay. I'm going to use a long blade. Uh... Two defense, I think. So I can handle being hit back if I miss. I debate rolling this, but this is not guaranteed that I nerf what I want to nerf, so... But I'd rather have the defense, I think. Alright, so I'll put this two up here, one here, and I hit him for four. Is that enough? No, it's one shot. Oh, no. One, two, no. three, four. Uh, I could use my wingless dragon and get in there, and like I could get into here, so he's still I'm still the target of this guy. I'm not gonna say no. Yeah, I'm not gonna say. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm gonna. Okay, you're good. Yeah. Okay, so I'll do that. I'll use the wingless yes, dragon. Yes, like. Place your gear lock on an available position on the battle mat. On any available position. Right? Yep, any. Uh, Doesn't need to be gear lock starting or anything. On nope, any. Okay, any. perfect. So let's go. Whoops, let's jump to here. Wingless dragon, wee. And I think I'm already full health, right? Because we just started, so I don't need to do my regen. I'm gonna attack here with. I roll f five. One, two, three, four, five. Probably gonna get too many mm. defense here. Yeah, let's go like that. You're 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 short of defense because it's in your active slot, right? So. Oh yeah, sorry. You know, can only roll two. I can only you roll take two. that one no, out no, of there no. to roll. Uh, but you could roll this and not take it, and or use it as a bone or something. At your call. No, I'll just leave that for now. But it could, yeah. Okay, I probably shouldn't even take that one, but. Oh wow, we got him. Okay, so he is dead. And then I got. Three defense, which I'll put up here. Okay. So that's good. All right, and I so the, am done. Okay, the green, green one. He is gonna move. We can to one, here. so that's good. Oh, well, now we can. One. Sorry, we can die on myself, and then he's gonna attack for two dice against me. Hits me for two. I'll just reduce the defense. Man, I keep forgetting the whole second part of this. Uh, if a dragon was defeated during this battle, you may trade it for an unlocked Dragon Center scale. Troll loot. I just don't remember what that is, but I think it is better. But <laughs> I, I really know. love this putting dice in the lock slots and carrying them forward. It's like very OP. And you re you rolled two dice, right? You rolled extra? I, uh, I think you did, because you took... Yeah, I did. Okay. I did. Okay. And then this guy, he's already adjacent to me. doesn't need to move. Poison one. He's going to poison one, and he's going to signal one. Yep. Yeah. Adds a one-pointer to the queue. And poison one. Okay, he's gonna roll four attack dice. Oh my god. And one defense. I have good defense, so that's okay. He hits me only for three, so we will remove. Oh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, something? Edgar's saying, um, no, I think we wanted to kill, uh, we killed. Yeah. But there is a play. Oh, of giving them. Yeah, the way we gave them all one attack dice, if we change the stat, they would not have that extra attack die if we raise it up, but. We raise it up by two, so then they have blind strike, which would be fun because then they can start hitting each other too, maybe. Yeah, we have to position them in the yeah, right place. Yeah, we have to think about that because there is a play where, like, on purpose, like, I don't kill this guy and I, you know, hit him and then I raise it up so they have blind strike and then, you know, base them. But these two would uh, still hit you because you're the strongest adjacent. But yeah. yeah, we could definitely manipulate this more and use it more in our favor if we were doing it properly. But all right, I'm gonna take so away Jot, three. How's it going? And then bones do nothing for him. Hi, Jot. All right. So at the end of the round, we're going to bring back whatever we signaled, which was our goblin mutant. He is melee for four health. So he goes in lane three melee. Okay. 
Mischief one he has. Round two, if you can switch it. Uh, round two, you roll that dice. Okay, D6, start of the round. Five. Five. So they have uh, the assault, assault skill. So it's attack dice equal to their HP. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So this one is one where we may want to just move it to blind strike. Correct. Okay, I, I see, I see. Okay. So, That's, but number six is so going first. This guy's going first. So he has he doesn't no move. move. So one mind. There is no other. And then mm -hmm. he's going to attack with one, two, three, four, four. Four attack oh, dice, no. one defense. No. One. He hits me for four. I have two. <sighs> I'll take two. One, two. Okay, <laughs> and you got one defense. Drive by chatting as to chat in and out, just like that. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. You all doing fine? Yeah, we're doing fine. How how are you doing? How are you doing? Hope you're doing good. Actually, it has been, I'm not going to lie, it has been fun to bring this back to the table and play it again. Definitely. Just <laughs> a little frustrated that we messed that up and like, oh, it, had it, to it feels like it's going a little long because I knew this, I even said at the start, this is going to be a longer adventure because it's nine points, 11 days or whatever. So I knew it was going to be a longer one. We haven't played in like over a year, so I knew it, we were going to like stumble a little bit and, and then plus experiencing what's going on with this pop-up book, uh, it's going to add some time to it. Yeah. And if we fail a couple encounters, it'll, it'll lengthen it also. Um, yeah, long but fun. But yeah, then then when we stumbled on the whoops, we forgot the ability. It's like I've been there before, so it's frustrating because this is not the first time I've done that in a, in a live stream where I've totally forgot completely what was on there. But everyone always comforts me in chat, going, "Oh, I did it too," or "I've done it with encounters all the time. It's all good." So it's we, fine. We but do it just, appreciate you guys reminding us of it, Jack. Thank you so much because yeah, yeah. had we got I all do. the way to the end, yeah. Only five hours in so far, not long at all. I know, I know. I know, it's not. It's not too long. I am starting to get a little bit hungry, but That's I mean, we, thing, we can yeah, worry about like, that in a bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like getting close to dinner time for us, and yeah, and we still haven't even, even seen the tyrant yet. We're not even close. Like, we're only going to go up to seven progress points. So, like, how, how many more encounters eight. do we have to do? Oh, we have seven now. Seven. We're going to have eight. Sorry. Yeah, so we'll have to do one more. At oh, least. okay. So it's not that. But it, that but, means there's at least one more encounter before the tyrant. Maybe two. I, I, I don't know. Sean, hi. I feel like it's been a while. I'm doing a drive-by chat, drive too. Chat hi, everyone. Hey. <laughs> you guys are funny. <laughs> so all you get is a drive-by chat. By <laughs> <Sajat TM. laughs> Trademark. <laughs> okay. Okay, so it's now you. I think you... Uh, I don't know who you're hitting, but I, I would suggest you do one less damage to give them blind strike. Instead of assault. Unless... Unless we can kill things. I am just so worried about the blind strike hitting like all these, three of these guys. Will this hit. guy's already gone. Oh, okay, okay. So it's just the, this, these two. And that's like four damage coming at you and you have... Oh, you'll go next, right? And you'll maybe have some shields up? Yeah. So you can take a bit of that blind strike. I would strike also probably attacks. try to attack one of them to lower... Oh yeah, true, the assault if they had it, but... Yeah, so I mean it's up to you if we want to try to take some of them out versus... Change. I guess you can put some damage in. Like if you did two damage, you could do one damage and change the number by one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I wish there was a way we could get them to blind strike each other. I could also. But none of them are beside each other at the start of their turn. The assault so blind is strike target, sucks. or not? No. It, 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 because I was like, I can make myself untargetable, but that doesn't help with Yeah, those assault. come at me, and, but I can only get hit by two enemies. But this guy's going to roll six attack dice. Uh, I don't even know the play. Who am I targeting? This guy will dodge most of my damage, so I ignore him. I could just go for the guy in front of me who would be rolling three attack dice unless I make him blind strike, but he still hits me for two and then rolls one attack dice, so it's kind of the same. Mm -hmm. This guy is freaking horrible because he'll be doing That's who I'm gonna blind strike plus three attack dice. But if you're going to hit him anyway, leave him on, on assault might be better because then he'll roll less dice. So I don't, I don't know. Uh, I think you could go for the one right in front of you. Yeah. Six? I, I could also I just do. go for this guy and we try to eliminate him but I gotta move too because I don't really want to spend more stones if we're getting close to Tyrant 
So you gotta be careful because he's gonna go for the weak, uh, the strongest, and he's gonna poison you if he's still alive. If I, if b both of us oh, don't yeah, kill him. True. So I mean. Oh man! Hopefully you get lots of defense because three Can or we two blind strike. It's two blind, blind strike two. two. Okay, so I would take. So it's just two. two damage, but your shields absorb it. Yeah, which I will roll all the defense I can. Okay, I will just attack the one in front of me because I don't want to keep being weakened. I only have five decks because of that. Mm -hmm. I'll take that away for now. Uh, let me roll. I mean, does it wrap around back to one, or we no, can all get to six? Increase, oh, okay. increase. Uh, I'm just gonna roll this. All right, I got a bone there, so I just won't accept that. Uh, I definitely kill it for three bots. Am I increasing it to blind strike right now? You have? Oh, I see. I'm not killing him. I can also do it on my turn. I have one for sure. Okay, yeah, I'll just kill this guy then. We can see what defense I roll. Go on. So I've defeated a dragon. Remember that for my dragon scales. Okay. Which I'm going to put like right wanna, here oh, okay. to be like in my face. Do you want to put the dragon on it? Will that remind you? For now? Oh. Dragon scales. No, it's fine. Okay. I'll just put it here. Okay. Okay, bone. This goes here. I collect stones. Yes, collect a stone. Okay. Good. Yeah, I just in a peek at the trove loot. I'm not gonna change the order because I don't want to lose the ones that are on top. But uh, I just want to peek. I played with it before. I just dragon center scale. Backup plane extension. One bone, place a defense die at two in an active slot. Yeah, see, I don't like this as much as the being able to put defense dice in backup slots. Because it's this does, it doesn't get around um, mischief. Yeah, so I don't even care about doing that. I'm going to keep this and get rid of it. That's that not bad back. for me, though, if you took it and then gave it to me. So? This is better for me because it turns me into like you basically at the oh, start okay. of a battle. I have defense. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. So I don't get toasted. That's fair. Okay. Uh, myself, I will poison and heal the poison. Okay, I'm going on this guy. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going with three attack dice. Three, four, five. No, I'm going mm -hmm. with three defense dice, two attack dice. I have one here. I'm gonna see what happens before I decide if I change it to blind strike. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. One defense. One, two, three. Three bones. Two hits. Three hits. One, two, three. I mean, I could shield bash for one more. If I shield bash for one more, he's only. Or, I only do two damage and I give him blind strike. So he's gonna hit me for two, he's gonna roll three dice. I think I might be dead unless I use this untargetable. So the blind strike will still hit me, but they both won't be able to attack me. But then he's gonna come down and attack you. So, Is that fine? Yeah, sure. All right, so then let's do, we're only gonna do two damage. We're gonna increase this to six giving them blind strike, and then I'm going to give myself an untargetable die, so at least they can't target me for the attack. Because I think I would die. All right. And I'm done. Three. So he's going to blind, blind strike two. One, two. Which can I, I can use. Yeah, that does I can use. That. Yes, okay, does. sorry, so I only lose one. And then he's gonna go one, two. Yeah. Poison one. You put a poison oh, on yeah, it. Oh, yeah, sorry. And he rolls three attack dice and one defense. Okay, hits me for three. Boom, all gone. And one defense. Okay. All right. This guy, blue, is this guy's gonna blind strike me for two. Well, I mean, you're down to two. Hold yeah, one me. more, though. I'll heal one at the start of my turn, and I can heal two more if I get one more bone. Oh, is that what that is? Yeah. Ambulance? Okay. And it'll give me a defense. And then he... Uh, bullet and 
Andreo, thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Um, he, he wants to go like up and around, right? Because this is where he needs to go to target you. Yep. So one, two. Yep, okay. Yep. Okie dokie. So we'll bring... The uh, detonator guy. Oh my god. It's a goblin devastator. <laughs> He's melee? Oh, sorry. I have three here. Uh, yep, melee, wanting to go and leave I didn't take, for... oh, you, oh, you have it, I was gonna say, I didn't take it out. Bottom, slide him over, round three. Do you want to roll the d6? D6. Please don't kill me. Five. Five, again, so again, they have they assault. Have assault. Okay. Oh, man, so then, one mind, there is no other, so yep. that's fine. Oh, he's gonna move though first, I'm so sorry. And then he's attacking me for four dice? Oh. Yeah. One, two, three, four, yep. And I get hit for five. Oh no! Am I dead? One, two, three, four, five. No, you're two away. You won't die from poison either. Oh my god. This is so bad. I'm so sorry. Yeah, this one. Do you have heal over there somewhere? Yeah, but okay. then I can't roll defense dice on my turn, so it's like kind of like. But I can use it three times. All right. So I'll have to use it. Uh, it's you. Okay, so uh, I will let the poison hit me, take it away, and then I will use this three times to heal for six HP, but then I can't roll defense dice on my turn. So you're full again? Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I also have my shoes that I can jump around the board at any point to a gear lock starting position only though. But I still feel like they both, if I go here, then this guy can't reach me. Oh man, I'm having assault, that's crazy. So he's already gone, maybe we, do we both focus on this guy? I'll come, oh but that guy will probably. That guy won't hit me. Like this guy's not bad, but he just, uh, we need to turn off the assault. And if you're not beside him on blind strike, that's great. Yeah. So it's like we need to so get I this guy we, down to like one left, yeah. and then you come and, but then he's not dead. Or no, I need to change him on mine, and then you come and finish him off. Or you don't, based on how much you roll, because you can't oh, yeah, roll the defense roll side. Tons, yeah. yeah. Well, I probably won't, though, but. All right. Love your games found you when looking for some Arkham Horror gameplay. Oh, awesome. awesome. Thank you, thank you. Okay, I'm um, targeting the Goblin, or the, yeah, Goblin Queen Guard. Hmm. Two, three. So I get some movement. I get some bones. I hit him for three only. Would be, I'm just gonna take yeah. it off for a second. Yeah, do it. One, two, so he's actually, down to two. I'm going to leave one and turn this to blind strike. Okay. But then you'd be okay if he blind strikes you? If I or who will he blind strike? Who's blind striking me? This guy hasn't gone yet. But you go first and hopefully can eliminate him. Hopefully. Once the play. One, two, three. Yeah, hopefully. I, I, but then you have to move all the way down here so that you're not blind strike by this guy. One, two. It's a gamble. And then I roll three attack dice. I could reduce his defense, which would have... Yep. Well, that just means he rolls his yeah, defense. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think yeah. you don't... No, I think it's no. fine right now. Okay, I'll keep that and maybe hit someone else with it. Damn. I can now, at the end of my turn, move away from him. Oh, that's to true. To stay alive. Or not to take extra hits. Yeah, so I'll ruby red shoes to go to a different gear lock starting position. Okay. Good. And then I'll use this to collect stones. Yeah, let's collect a stone up to four. Yeah, okay. All right, so my turn. I will heal one and get rid of this untargetable with my regen. I will then spend two decks to move down here. So I have three decks remaining. I have one hit already. I think I just roll three attack dice. Yeah, hopefully you get us bones to do benevolence to heal and add a defense to die to your active slot would be good too. So there's there's two plates here. I either roll three attack die, which is probably going to kill him with I have one hit here, or I roll two attack dice and one defense for if I miss the 
But I'm not going to die either way, but then this guy's going to come down. And rolls one attack die on you. And rolls one attack die. I mean, that's not bad. And then that no one else will get in there. But if you do wipe this guy out, then you have uh, this guy who can't reach you, so... Alright, let's go for the three attack die. Let's just go for trying to get this guy out of here. Oh, okay. Four damage. So he's, he's dead. But I'll still get the one attack, which is fine. Which is fine. From this guy when he comes down. That's okay, not gonna blind strike, so that's okay. That's okay. Before I can heal. So and this comes up. Okay, and I am done. Green, uh, blue, so blind strike nobody, and then one, two. He's gonna mischief. There's nothing there. Also and one attack, attack die. die. Please miss. One. All right. All right, and then green. He's trying to get into here. One, two. And he just rolls a defense. Yeah. Oh! A careless one. That's fine, that's fine. So he's yep. gonna just loses one. Yeah, so he's gonna detonate for two. After, he after moves, the, yeah. Which sucks. I could kill you. Okay. So okay. end of the and, round. Yep. We're gonna get one more guy, Mink and Monkey. Oh no. A Mink and Monkey Minik and Monkey. Oh, it's called a Mink and Monkey. I don't know what Minik, it's called. Minik Minik and Monkey. Minik and Monkey. Okay, Minik bottom of the queue. Slide yes. this over. Three health, purple range. Right. Round four. Roll that D six. Six. Oh yeah. D6. Oh, I don't even want you to roll it. A five, five again. again. Five again. Uh, so unlucky. Five again. So that okay. means this yellow guy is... Oh, he's going to wipe me out. Yeah. He's going to move one, two. Uh, there is this beast guy who goes after the weakest, which is you. Yeah, I'm going to be So this here. is one mine. Hits you for one. I have one health okay. remaining. And then, because they're assault, he gets... He has four health left, so he rolls four attack dice. Yep. Oh. oh, this is the worst. And he hits you for three. Dead. Dang it. These are all gone. These get exhausted. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Nugget. I don't know if I can pull this out. I should have not maybe focused on that guy. Maybe the blind strike was not the right play. I don't know. I don't know either. But then this guy would have moved down and attacked you for four dice. Like, you would have been dead last round. Just minimum that guy. Like... All right. God dang it. Oh, now this guy's in a nice spot if he moves to try to get to me. Yeah. So just the blue guy will go. He'll move in. Oh, no, but then this guy will move across. Damn it. Can I Not if you go in here. Yeah, I do need to go in there, don't I? So yep. I have the movement here. I'll move in. I think... Okay. Oh, Dominic says, I think I have to leave for bed. Have fun. I'll watch uh, this no, later. No, I need your help, Dominic. Don't go. <laughs> Thank you so much. Don't leave us now. <laughs> have a good sleep. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let later. Rob roll. I know, right? He keeps rolling fives and sixes. But then when the the last guy comes out, or the last guy he's trying to kill, he's not going to That's when I'll roll a one. Exactly, exactly. Exactly. Mm. Which you could, if, oh, if you take that guy out. No, that's bad. The other... So just, he's going to blind strike. I could just stones for this guy. At the beginning. Yeah, which will be against one of these two guys. I say it's this guy because uh, he's a uh, oh, dodge, so that'll hit him. You could also attack this guy, leave him, leave him with at least one, so he only hits you for one die. He's going to detonate and kill him. When he tries to come around, but then he's going to do his blind strike on this guy, making him easier to kill. And then you only have to worry about the three dice from this guy. But I want this guy gone. I know, but this guy's the one that's still going to attack you this round. Oh, I see. And then you don't need to change to blind strike because the blind strike isn't going to do anything to anybody. What? Well, I guess it would. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> one, two, three. So the problem is this guy's going to move up here and detonate like this and hit that guy. I need that to happen. Yeah, so if you get him down to one or two. But then like... Uh... Oh, but he's going to go next. I don't want them to be on assault. I think that's bad. Because that means when this guy goes, he's attacking me at range for three. Which is why I'm debating taking him out. So it also prevents one mind attack earlier, or later. It's like this guy, if I reduce him down, doesn't get blind strike, because this guy will be the stronger one. But there is a... Uh, I don't know. 
I know, I was just trying to save damage, and this guy hasn't gone yet. So he goes. So if you put him down to one, and you leave it on assault... But what does it mean he hasn't gone yet? He's still going to get to go if I don't kill him, so I don't know, I know what but you're if saying. You, I'm, I'm saying if you keep it on assault, he's only going to roll one attack die on you. Yeah, but I don't think I want to keep it on assault, because I think I need the extra damage from blind strikes to happen. It's just from this guy's, but I need him to take well, off. This guy's going to blind strike here, and then he's yep. going to move and detonate and kill this guy and himself, so you'll only have these two guys on the board, I and know. this guy will have only two health. But so I can't kill this guy as quickly because he's got dodge, so I need him. I'm debating taking off this shield, just doing that alone, so then he gets taken down by two, mm -hmm. so then he's off the board faster. Or I take out this guy completely. I don't know. Well, he's not untargetable. But then there's this annoying guy. Yeah, okay, I'll just attack this guy. Yeah. Um. There's a play where I just nerf, maybe I get lucky and nerf his attack, and then I just leave him and I don't care what he's doing, but he'll still get blown up. Yeah. All right, here we go. I am going to just attack this goblin mutant. And all right, so put these up here. Uh, so I will apply, I guess, three damage. The fourth damage that I got, I will say it's going to go here instead of removing it. Okay. And this guy will go. He's mischief one. Mischief one, so this is exhausted. And then just he's rolling. Oh, blind strike, so he'll. You're the strongest. Do you have defense? Yep, you right here. Okay. Boom, boom, gone. And then one attack die. Hits me for two. Okay, and this guy. Blind, green. blind strike. Oh, sorry, green. Blind strike's here. Okay, and then he's going to try to move around. Boom, boom. And after he moves, he's not at full health, so he'll detonate. Detonate two. I wish it was diagonal. Kill this one and this one. Okay, so he is gone. Green and blue. Okay, then purple little monkey. No blind strike, okay. Hits me for one, doesn't become untargetable. Hits you for one. Yep. Okay, round five, there's no one to come in. Do you want to roll the yep. D six? Three, Three. Oh, they get plus one defense dice for their rolls. All right. Uh, this one is first. So he's attacking you for two. Well, first one mind. Oh, one so mind. So the other guy will attack me for nothing. Oh, now he's untargetable though. Uh, yeah. I don't know if that happens not on his turn, but I think so. I don't know. And then he will go. He gets extra defense, sorry. Oh, yeah. One more. One more defense. Die. Two defense. And hits you for two. You don't have defense. Down to two. Wow. All right. Uh, it's you. I don't know. Oh, did we forget to him to roll an extra defense die too? Probably? He hasn't gone yet. How did he get that? He well, got that the entire. Yeah, round, yeah, right? yeah. Huh? What do I do now? How much do you need to heal? Two bones? Yeah. Hmm. How much does he roll? I mean, nerfing his attack is not bad. Yep. Use the force. So if I move three like this, or actually I move one, two, three. Then this guy can't reach me for his attack, but I still can hit him at range. Yeah, that sucks. <sighs> Maybe I can nerf his movement too. Do you have any more heal there? No. No? Yeah, no, it's like rough. Okay, uh, I think, do I roll stones so that I break through some defense first and then... Yeah, I'll go down to one stone remaining. So I'm gonna roll all three attack. No, I'd only have three decks, so let's not be stupid. So let's go. Yeah, this is so lame. 
Yeah, I gotta roll defense. Two defense. And I just try to nerf him. That's my three dice. But that gets me no further with him. I gotta survive. I'm in like survival mode. I don't know. Yeah, you want to try to get, I guess, some sort of heal so that you can survive the fatigues, because maybe they won't. Oh, fatigue and you round will. too. Oh my god. Or do we ignore fatigue? Is that not this one, right? No, that's not this one. They ignore fatigue. Oh. I am going Yeah, there's no way we can beat this, I don't think. And like, unless I have two bones every round, but if I'm rolling bones, that means I'm not defeating them because they keep getting defense. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we can do this one. Because uh, even if I stay here and fight this guy, I, a regular attack dice don't do anything to him. So best case, I knock away two defense, hit him for one, he's down to two. I uh, don't know what to do about that. And this guy I can't even target, so I'd love to take this guy out so he's not doing extra attacks. And I just kite this guy all around and trying to heal, but... I only have two health, so I can't survive that many rounds. And my dex right now is very low. So yeah, let's just see what happens. Okay, so I nerfed his movement, I guess. <laughs> like, but he could become ranged on the next round, right? So mm. I'll take a bone, which I wish I never collected that stone before. Get one defense. Oh, okay. Purple guy. He's no longer hiding. He rolls an extra defense, but he's got one locked. He knocks away my defense, takes a defense. It's not untargetable. Okay, okay, end of the round. There's nothing to come in. Round six. Fatigue rounds. So I just lose a health. And we roll this die and see how bad it's going to be. A one, of course. Oh, it is the range. So attack form is ranged. So this guy can hit me wherever now. So that sucks. That was a risk. And he rolls two attack dice. I mean. Yeah, yeah. so he's just rolling two attack dice. Uh, no defense dice. Oh, first he doesn't need to move, then he has one mind, so this guy actually attacks me for one, and I'm dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boo! Okay, so we lose, which means we don't get a progress. I think we can end it, right? Because I don't think it's possible we can even fight the tyrant. I don't think so anymore. Um, so we don't get training points, we don't get loot, we don't get this cool automaton wiring. Yeah, tyrant encounter is rough. Okay, so that was a loss. Um, so we go to recovery phase, obviously we just heal up. Okay, so I'm going to seven. Boom. This is gone. Okay, um, so that means no progress. Uh, we go to the next day, which is day nine. Right, we're at seven. So on day nine, if we can get a progress, we're at eight. Oh, we have one day more shot. Day ten, we get a progress. We have one fight. Yeah, so we have one more so loss. So I guess it yeah. Okay. All right. So then we have this automaton thing. Oh, holy, look at this guy. It's day ten? Oh, we're on day ten now. Yeah, we're, on, we're start of day ten, right? Oh, so then... Yeah, so it's impossible, right? I think so. Yeah, because we, we have one more day. Yeah, so we can just end it. But I do want to just look at the rest of the book. So we're not going to play anymore. We'll leave that for you guys um, to do on your own. Um, but what we will do is look at the cool pop-ups and spoiler more stuff. So if you don't want That's any more spoilers, run away. Uh, you know, we're about to open up more stuff. Oh, we need a double progress court card, which... There, there might be. be. There might be. So I mean, we can see. Whoa! But... What is this? What is this? Look at this fold out. Oh wow! <laughs> uh, soon through the trees, the gearlocks spied their foe upon the mountainside, tall as a house and twice as wide. Foe built to ten times scale, although unseen in recent ages, built and hid by ancient mages, only known by weathered pages until told a gruesome tale. Yet there could be no mistaking the curse or the cause of all the cruel groundbreaking, their enemy in scale, breathtaking, automaton of shale. The battle raged for hours on end, the gearlock's line refused to bend, as crushing fists they sought to fend by keeping stances low. Pickett's shield was burst to silvers, Gilly clutched an empty quiver, Boomer then at last delivered what proved the fatal blow. 
Once they tallied their future scars, they bid the mountain au revoir and limped back home to Obendar, to where we find them now. <laughs> what? <laughs> Okay. JF in the chat is also saying we could just do the Tyrant battle even though... Uh, like, yeah, we could, we, but it's could, fine but... if they designed it to be this hard. But like I said, in a future stream, I want to take all this content. We'll play the Automaton of Shale as a separate playthrough with mixed in with all the stuff we already have for too many bones, have some fun with it, you know? Uh, I just want to experience this one time through the book for fun, you know? Or we could play it still in order, but I'm not going to put it all back in here. But yeah, there is a chance we play this in the future again. We attempt it again, but it's fine. We'll see, we'll see. But again, playing the Tyrant counter with not enough, like, we're already losing, so just playing the Tyrant counter, unless we're going to house rule and get a few extra training points, the fact that we've missed out on so many loot rewards and training points by failing, uh, we're not set up for the battle, so why play a battle that we're just going to get crushed super fast in? It doesn't make sense, right? Yeah. So that's why I'm saying, like, why bother playing it unless we, unless we house rule a bunch of stuff. Um, oh, there's a Tyrant card. Okay. Yeah, I think that's why it said if you didn't have enough points, you have to take from your own. Yeah. So I don't know how many but are it's twos. So basically, you have to win everything, I think, to play this guy. Otherwise, you got to mix in other stuff if you lose once. If you lose twice, you, you fail, right? I thought there would be a two progress, maybe a couple twos in there. Just to get just you through, fun. just in case? Yeah, because it sucks if you're like losing halfway through the pop-up book. Then it's like uh, awkward, like... Put it all back and start again like what do you do right yeah i thought they were gonna make it super easy this playthrough for fun and then you mix stuff in but they definitely made this for the hardcore crowd this is definitely like i know everyone will say well, that's what it's supposed to be rob like duh but you know it's like it's just a fun thing i think and i think it's fine the way it is but i definitely want to mix it in with other stuff i, I don't really care about this playing in order again really but Automaton of Shale. Hidden for centuries, the Automaton of Shale's origins are still shrouded in mystery. Even its makeup is uncertain. Do ancient robotics animate its massive rocky frame? Or is it some kind of golem controlled by kobold technology or some other mysterious force? Regardless, it's allied with neither Eben nor Obendarian, and destruction seems to be its only agenda. Yeah, because you know what? I want to play this again in the future with actual the oh, base. Yeah. I want to have like all the baddie types. I want to have promos and stuff, everything. I want to go crazy. And the fact it says this length is only a three out of six, is that Seems accurate? Seems low. I thought 11 is like one of the, I thought 12 is like the longest. So why is it only a three out of six? Is that a typo, I would assume? But that sucks. Tyrant a la mode. Battle cube, baddie points. Party of one ignores this. Add automaton to the bottom of the cube. Okay, let's see what automaton's about. Okay, this is the automaton. Okay, black and white. <laughs> uh, he's got mode shift, which we know is on the back of the setup card, which was all this stuff we read at the start of the stream. So you can pause this now if you want to look at it. Um... But it says, when the automaton enters play, place it as a standard baddie rather than mech. Oh, he's mech type, I see. Oh, okay, okay. Okay. So don't put him on a mech starting position. So obviously, if you only own the base set and don't own Undertow, you wouldn't have mech starting positions. Okay. Uh, reminder, a mech. The automaton is immune to poison, weaken, terrify, stun, bleed, and fatigue. Oh, spicy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tyrant skills, mode shift. At the start of battle, roll a d6 and place it on the automaton. This represents the automaton's mode. Each mode has a different effect. Explain on the automaton's mode card. Increase the d6 by 1 at the end of any turn in which automaton loses HP. So it's not a choice like in the tyrant encounter. Or sorry, the, 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 the like special encounter whatever. The tyrant special encounter. Um, this is in the final battle. It just happens anytime it loses HP. Okay, Tinkerer. Oh, it's so what's that? Okay, I see what's happening. So at the start of battle, we roll the d6. He gets one of these modes. And that's why it makes sense when he hits mode six and it fires off, it's so bad. It sets it back to one. It's because you don't roll it at the start of every round. That's what oh, I it... thought was going to happen. And then I even thought it was going to happen based on what that last encounter was. But it's a little different. So you just roll it when it enters at the start of battle one time. And that's what it does. And then slowly it ticks up as you keep hitting him, and he gets worse and worse, getting better modes, like healing and, and retaliate, basically, and all that kind of stuff, until he gets to six, which is horrible. Then he resets back to one. That's very neat. Okay. Tinkerer, 
Place all HP lost by the automaton on this card. At the start of each round, distribute this HP between all non-tyrant baddies in play, ignoring their HP stat. Wow. If there are no non-tyrant baddies in play, return the HP on this card to the supply. Wow. <laughs> and then it's got taunt, which place taunt effect die on this unit until the start of its next turn. Adjacent opposing units must attack this unit. Units with multiple targets will attack this unit multiple times. Okay. Interesting. And he attacks uh, melee, attacking the two weakness weakest if he can. And there's his Tinker and Taunt abilities. 15 health. 15 health. Two, so he goes really late, oh. but when he comes in, he is a Tyrant, so he'll start at the top of the queue anyway, or yeah. top of the initiative meter. Two defense, three attack. Okay. Dirty. Dirty. So yeah, that's cool. You guys get to see this, but like, I'm okay that we don't play it today, honestly. Because um, I think it'll be sloppy. And we'll have to house rule stuff to play it and all that. I'd rather just save this in the collection and we play this in the future on the channel as like a dedicated playthrough. Targeting this guy now that we know him, we will play him like a normal tyrant where we examine our card, we see the full baddie types, so I'll make sure we have orcs next time, you know? And we can decide whether we play the encounters in this order all in a row again the same way, or we just mix in those encounters and maybe they show up in a future playthrough, maybe they don't. I don't know what I want to do with that yet. Maybe I could do a poll to see what you guys would rather see in the future, but I definitely will do a stream playing against this guy and doing a proper run without the pop-up book shenanigans, because uh, that's what I'm looking forward to the most. All right, uh, so that's him. And there's no pulley stuff here. He just looks awesome on this page with this giant sword. That's crazy. Yeah, that's cool. And then it looks like after um, we go here and then it's like, all right, we won, but we didn't. And then I already know what's in here because this is where they accidentally put the instructional oh, cards. Oh, no, it was in there. Yeah, so I had to open this um, and then there's a little thing there which you guys can see. Okay, spoilers, 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 of course. And then all they do is give you the... Um, Epilogue card, so you can include this guy in uh, Undertow campaigns or Age of Tyranny campaigns, or I'm assuming Unbreakable campaigns when that comes out. So you have a little reward card to get if you're playing campaign mode, which is super cool. It's just cool to get another Tyrant and a whole bunch of encounters, day one, oh, yeah. two, and three encounters. Like more variety for yeah, sure. Yeah, I always want more day one, two, and three encounters. Those are always helpful because you see those every time you play, right? I really like the art of this one. Like, I wouldn't be opposed to hanging this up. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. That's cool. <laughs> that should be on a play mat or something. That's a cool one. Yeah, I like that. Uh, okay, and then uh, there is one more thing. So again, spoilers, run away. Uh, we weren't told to open it. But I, I kind of don't care, so I'm gonna go. Would we have been told if we won? Do you think? No. Oh. Because you know why? I saw there was FAQ and oh. people asking online, going, "When am I supposed to open that box in the back of the book?" And they went, "Oh, whoops. Um, yeah, you're just supposed to do it after you beat the guy. Oh. Or okay. something. But maybe it says it in the riddle, or in the the high or whatever. Maybe it explains it there that I just ignored. I was yeah. thinking maybe it was like in the reward part. No, let's read this. Uh, here at home, month is gone, their deeds immortalized in a song. Crowds around them sing and throng inside the tipsy troll. Tantrums dancing on the table, <laughs> spilling most of each fresh ale. Louder each time he tells the tale, trotting cross plates and bowls. The others sit close by and smile, glad to drink and rest a while before they're dealt another trial and choose to play or fold. No, nothing in there tells me to open this Chamber thing. says, yes, you've just been told, but how, did we miss it? Or are you joking? Yes, you've just been told. <laughs> if we were told, I totally, it went over my head completely. What? <laughs> Do not open until instructed. Maybe just like the chat's telling us. Yeah, but anyone who knows too many bones, like maybe this is, look, look carefully, carefully at, at the, the picture. picture. Oh, it's subtle. Yeah, but that's what I was going to say. Maybe it's a, a riddle thing. Uh, let's just take this off. Wanted, dead, or alive. I don't see it. Or is it this or picture? Or is it that picture? It's like he's got like the ring <laughs> from Lord of the Rings. It is I, subtle. I really don't see it. Are you... 
So that's what I was going to say. If it's part of the riddle, if they do a riddle with this product. Um, last picture. The last picture. Holy. Maybe because we've been playing so long, but. Oh, I see. I see it. I see it. Oh, wow. So there's people out there that will get this and are so hardcore that they'll never open it because they'll never see that picture. Oh, my God. <laughs> but again, I, I wouldn't wow. care either way. I would still open it. So where is it? Wow, that I would never have noticed that yeah. uh, if you guys didn't tell me to look at that picture. That's funny. Wow. Wow, that's weird. Uh, that's weird. That, that should be in the like final, like uh, in that little pack should be a card to tell you to go open it now or a little piece of paper. Like be a little obvious, right? That was weird. Oh my God. Move take completely from tuck box as well. Okay, I know why. I see what you're saying. I was even thinking that when I was looking at this box, uh, I'm probably going to stop the stream in a minute because uh, there is obviously symbols here. And I answered my own question about riddles. Uh, there is QR code stuff on here. And there's riddles. And then there's a whole deck of cards which have symbols. And we're getting into like the TV show Lost kind of stuff here. Um, which you know... Like, this is a whole deck of Oh my of gosh, cards. I love it. We can actually play with this. <gasps> but look at, there's codes on the back. No, you can't because... No, like after. No, they're all different. Oh, you I know see. You know the back of the, the backs aren't unique. <laughs> I see. Oh my god, what the hell is going on here? Look at this stuff. So this is why, when I looked at this, I even thought, uh, Mysterious Box by... Kayahari Foss of the Enigma Emporium. So they probably make like escape rooms or like online oh. escape rooms or, or those kind of escape room board games. I bet if you look them up, they do these kind of riddles. So this is like kind of like a escape room puzzly riddle thing. So this is its own game within a game. Oh, so when we scan the QR code, it'll give us more information. Yeah, right? and okay. it's probably a website where we have to like answer questions and try to, you know, I'm not going to say what it could give us, but or what, how it could work, but uh, we'll leave that for us later to yeah. play around We're with. We're gonna have fun with that. I thought, I thought there was gonna be more loot and stuff in here. Same. I thought this was gonna be full of more encounter cards, more loot, uh, you know, maybe more tyrant encounter cards or something. Um, yeah, that's not what I expected to be in there. Okay. That's awesome. Yeah, see, right on here. Uh, Riddle designed by, yeah, so they went out third party for this. Uh, some illustrations, Chris Beck, Anthony Letourneau. Yeah, handwriting typography by Amanda. Yeah, so this is its own like game within the game. That's cool. So this is not even like part of that whole playthrough thing. This is like now you have hours of this fun afterwards. So the value in this little product just went up for me big time. That's cool. Yeah, because that'll be like a whole night of us playing around to try to yeah, or more. Or play with that. Yeah. Amazing. Cool. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. Anyways, yeah, that's it. So the Tyrant Counter, you can kind of know how it'll go. That's kind of, yeah, like... They definitely made this challenging. Maybe it's easier with certain gear locks or certain player counts. But again, we lost one encounter because of a guess. Yeah, that seemed unfair, but hey, but we could have revealed, revealed more, I guess. Sure. Uh, we could have revealed more, which we probably should have. I was very worried we would not get enough progress points. But Yeah, you did mention that before we even started. But I thought they would give us a bunch of two options. Or at least one that was maybe like a simpler one to kind of nope. even you out if you were losing. But that last battle was really tough. Like this tire encounter, uh, it sucks that they forced you into playing it. Because anyone who plays too many balls knows you might not see the tire encounters or maybe see specific ones. And if you see them at certain points in the playthrough, they might not be as bad or it could be worse. Yeah. So it kind of sucks the way they like forced it upon us and like we definitely weren't ready for it. Or maybe just based on the baddies we played. But again, I want to play it where. We have orcs mixed in, and we're not playing with the undertow stuff. We're playing with the splice and dice slash 40 days sailor slash corset, you know, stuff. I, I, this definitely would give it a different feel if we had different baddie types and stuff. Yeah, and because we didn't have those baddies in there, the one mines then also trigger off they're maybe more, more so, and, right? Because they're And that's why I don't mix undertow in, because it would dilute that stuff. But the one mine, there are more beasts in the other stuff too. So it's like, there'll still be lots of beasts. Um... But yeah, I just always keep Undertow as its own little thing. I've just always yeah. been that way because I like the mechs and crown and the, the baddies you see kind of fit with the loot you see in the location and stuff. 
I know it's designed to all be mixed together, but I just never do. I just have this other set. Oh, plus when I mix in the undertow baddies, they don't fit in my nice little five tray oh, holder. Okay. But the splice and dice and stuff fit perfect. Now with Unbreakable, it's going to throw that completely off. Yeah. Um, so maybe I'll keep Unbreakable as its own little thing. I don't know. We'll see. I but, carried yeah. around this big rock and never got For to nothing. use it. Yeah, so this Trove Loot, I'm not going to spoil any of it, but how much did we get? I think there was four. I think there was four. Four new Trove Loots, too, that I'm not going to spoil. But I'm definitely going to mix these in in future playthroughs, so they could get spoiled in the future, but oh well. Um, but yeah, there's some cool stuff to discover. I don't know if we saw all the loot. I don't think we did. Uh, there's still one loot, it looks like, that's left that we didn't see. But this loot looks, yeah, this loot's the same. Um, so we didn't see one loot um, that was hidden. So we'll okay. leave that for your discovery. Um, but yeah. I mean, it was fun, for sure. Challenging, but fun. That's crazy. This is crazy. This is cool. I like what they did here. Uh, having a full adventure involved and giving you so much loot, a bunch of trove loot. Like I said, a day one, two, and three encounter to mix in. So that, that's like prime. Like getting these is huge. And then you have, uh, there was some fun encounters, five encounters, plus a tyrant one to mix in when you play with the automaton. But only one, right? That's weird. Like he only has one that comes with him. Yeah, yeah. But then it also gave us five point baddies. It gave us twenty point baddies. Oh, yeah, it gave the us baddies. Krellin, Krellin baddies. Oh yeah, Krell. We have some Krellin more Krell to play with. Yeah, so I, I like that just for more variety, yep. right? More, more variety for up. our campaign if we ever do campaigns again. Yeah. He can be thrown in as an option, so just another tyrant that can show up and mess with us. Yeah. Plus this little like fun riddle thing. Uh, that's cool. I don't know. Plus the pop-up book. I mean, the pop-up book's like a one-time. You kind of look at it and you're like, oh, okay, that's cool. But I like the way it worked with the story. This was definitely very well made. Very cool. Um, I didn't know what to expect for a pop-up book with uh, game content mixed in. But I think they did a good job. Now this one's getting stuck again. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely fun. Definitely a little fun adventure. Yeah, uh, now we can let our daughter look at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We were like afraid to open it. But that's definitely cool. I like the way it's just like a fun promo. And it looks nice, too, if you had it on a shelf. But it's also like an expansion. Like, it's it's an expansion, kind of like a legacy-feeling kind of one-time play to, to experience it blind for fun. But then after, you get to play with all the content. And anyone who knows Too Many Bones, like, buying more expansions or promos, everyone's always loves getting more to add to the variety of every time you play Too Many Bones. And having another Tyrant to choose from it is always good. Is it the best value for an expansion? Uh, probably costs a little more because they put the work in and effort for this. And the, the pop-up book... So it's like, you know, it's not completely gameplay. It's more of kind of like fun and more overproduced stuff. But it's like what's awesome about it. I think it's fun. It's definitely unique. Definitely unique. I don't know. What do you think, Mel, about this? I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. I thought there was a lot of work they put into that. I thought. <laughs> uh, again, like I said, just bringing too many bones back to the channel, having a way to, or another reason to bring it out and play it is fun. Having more variety, I love being able to add more variety in. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to trying it again as a one-off, like, uh, encounter or adding it into a campaign. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah. But yeah, so, I, yeah, I do want to play it again. I want to try this guy out. I mm -hmm. want to try him out with the full enemies, like I said, putting him into our other, like, another scenario. And then now we know what he is. So picking a, a gear lock according? Yes. Yeah. So we might have picked the worst combination of gear locks to play this, this playthrough with. I don't know, but... Um, yeah, I feel like I should have brought patches, just maybe, just for the heal. Well, I don't know. Patches, uh, two-player, I don't know if it's the best. But this guy has built-in heal. You just have to get the bones for it. But maybe you didn't pick the right dice. Like, maybe right, instead maybe. of this die, you should have picked one. I don't know if one of these two get you, like, more bones. Yeah, they, I could have done some different stuff, yeah. yeah. you could have been using the re reusable bones to try to fire well, those off. ones I had them locked up here but for a right while, away. but not right but yeah. away, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. And then also the loot from Undertow... Uh, is underwhelming, I find. It's not my favorite loot, that's why I don't yeah, mix it in with the other loot. Also, I keep Undertow separate. Not a fan of Undertow loot. I've never been a fan of it. Um, which is why I keep it to its own little flavor thing. Um, but, with the other loot deck we have, with all the promos and the expansion loot and the fun stuff that's in there, maybe we'd have find some more heal or some more things that would have done a little more. Obviously, you're Harpoon pistol was like prime. Yeah, that was huge. I don't know how we would have survived that without it, but because well, like, maybe we would have chose the different option, right? We chose that option knowing we could have got rid of that big guy, or at least I was highly pushing for that, knowing true. I could get rid of him in one shot. Because he was 10 HP, yeah, and he would have assaulted, so he would have been rolling 10 attack dice. 
from round one. And if we yeah. if we stayed away from him, he starts wrecking the ship. So at some point, we have to decide to go and start smashing at him. After he hits the ship one time, yeah. both of us. But then the problem is where he breaks the ship. You it, can't go. It, no, we can we go can on go, it. It just but... causes extra decks to get on it, right? Yeah. And then we have to go on it and get to him, which costs decks. We have less dice to roll. We we'll hope to hit him hard, take him out, or at least reduce him down so he's only rolling a couple attack dice. But 10 HP, holy. And all that while you still have other baddies left on the board because you can't leave them for too long or you'll get your fifth wreckage ship and you're sunk. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. clever, definitely cool. This is a, definitely from what I've seen here, and I could be wrong. Again, we haven't played in over a year. But I've played hundreds of hours of Too Many Bones, and the vibe I get from this, it's again was designed to be pretty hardcore. And if you found it easy on your first blind playthrough, if you played it blind, I feel like you got lucky and picked the right gear lock. Maybe it's easier in solo, as you see a lot of the battle queue stuff gets ignored or reduced and all that. Yeah, there was a lot of one player battle queue reduced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even if you look at a lot of these at the bottom, they say solo. So you yeah. put them in your solo games. No, but if you play this solo, Mel, that's yeah, what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I don't know if it's easier solo. I feel like it is because at two player, it wasn't reducing the queue for us. No. But at one player, you already have a pretty balanced queue because, well, but then again, you ignore the queue a lot in one player normally, right? I don't know. But this is definitely a challenge, but it might be more of a challenge because of what we came to the table with. Our gear maybe, locks, yeah. our undertow loot, and our undertow baddie mix maybe was bad. I don't know. But it, And we played on the, the heroic adventurer medium difficulty too. But again, we only really failed one scenario, but, but we failed two because of a guess, which put us behind. And again, this game suffers from the snowball effect. You keep moving forward and your day number is increasing, which increases your um, your baddie queue points. But if you're not getting the training points, this is the one flaw of this game where like your level, if you're not leveling up, the game is still getting harder. So it's got that snowball like imbalanced effect to it. But that can be offset by some luck and by managing loot correctly, I find. So if we just had like more healing loot that could have maybe kept us in in one where we're falling behind or like you had the loot to get rid of a bad guy yep. or you know stuff like that. But sometimes the loot can help offset that. But again, if you're not winning, you're not getting loot either. So that can't really offset it. So mm -hmm. I don't know, that's the one downside. I'm, I'm coming back to too many bones and I'm, I'm feeling that, but. I think it's also the decisions that you make, right? When you have two options of what decision yeah, you, you can take, take the and maybe, option. yeah, maybe you take the easier options. Yeah. yeah. So maybe we should have took the easier option on a couple of them too. And yeah. Not risk it, but I don't know. But anyways, okay. it's definitely challenging, definitely fun. Uh, definitely looking forward to playing it again, knowing stuff this time. Yeah. And playing too many bones proper, where you pick your gear lock, you level up your gear lock, knowing what the final battle is about, and maybe now we know about this stupid tyrant encounter. And this Tyrant Encounter, yeah, this is like... Yeah, it's uh, challenging. It's definitely a challenging one. But, like, obviously knowing in this encounter the immune to poison, bleed, and fatigue, and then knowing he's a mech, like, taking dice that do bleed or poison or gear lock. So you're thinking taking Patches, but Patches' whole deal is the poison, is, like, his OP thing. Mm -hmm. And that's not as helpful in this situation. Or Gasket, for example, you know? Yeah. Uh, takes away that kind of poison and stuff. I don't know. There's other gear locks that might be better for this. I don't know. But if you're watching this later, drop it in the comments below. I'm curious. What were the gear locks that you, based on playing this and seeing this, what would you, who is your gear lock you take? One, two, three, four player, like, you know what I mean? Um, and yeah, obviously too many bones is usually less difficult the higher the player count also. Um, and there is the discussion that at two player, it's like the most difficult because solo, you get kind of a benefit from it. Three and four player, it becomes easier. But two is like that, like in the middle, like the most difficult. I think that's what the deal is with this game, if I remember. So, yeah, there's also that fighting against us, but I could be wrong. Black Straval says, I play with Lab Rats and Dart. Oh, okay. Interesting. And JF says, agreed, Undertow loot are mostly pointless or too weak or situational. Yes. I like them. It's themed to what the Undertow does, which it gives me the vibe of like keeping the Undertow loot deck with the baddies, with the encounters of Undertow, makes sense. Just mixing it in with other stuff, it kind of like poisons my loot deck, and I don't want that. Yeah. Because I'm like a loot goblin, I, I need my loot deck to actually hit hard. And like, uh, if you're not playing with Nugget, who gets to like 
filter the loot deck, it's it's better, but it's worse for other gear locks. Um, but yeah, that's all Automaton of Shale. That was fun. A cool, unique product. I love what they did here. Very clever, very risky that they did it. Like, it's a freaking pop-up book. Uh, maybe people might not be interested in it, but of course, they know the hardcore Too Many Bones fans are always looking for more Too Many Bones. You can see that based on the response from all their Kickstarters, including non Too Many Bones Kickstarters, when people come in and go, how do I order more Too Many Bones? Or I've never played Too Many Bones, how do I get that? Like, some of their Kickstarters, I'm sure, get like, probably more people backing Too Many Bones in the Pledge Manager than they do backing the actual game they're <laughs> making. Which is sad, but that's just the magic of Too Many Bones. Like, people are always interested in that game. Uh, it's definitely their best, pop, most popular game. So we're always looking for more content to add to it. You know, to spice things up, right? To make yeah. it more interesting. Um, so I'm a sucker for the gameplay stuff. Like I was talking about earlier, I want to buy the coffee if I could get it in Canada just to get more of these, you know, chips and cards that come with it. Even though it's like, you know... I wouldn't probably buy the coffee if it didn't have that. <laughs> I wouldn't. Pro I wouldn't buy this pop-up book if it was just an art book. I don't buy the the, the lore books. I don't buy non-gameplay stuff usually in crowdfunding and that kind of thing because it's just like a waste of money in my opinion. I'd rather spend it on more gaming experiences. But they suckered me because this comes with a bunch of cool content, uh, gameplay-wise that I want to play with. So it's smart. Yeah. To add that in. Because they wouldn't sell otherwise. You'd only have the very hardcore and hardcore that would just buy anything that has the words too many bones printed on it. Mm -hmm. But the fact they put gameplay in it, it now makes those like me who don't need the fluff, I, I want the actual gameplay stuff. So Ben says Automaton is hard. I agree. I agree. I bet he's harder too if you failed a couple days and lost out on like three or four training points. Hoplo will be amazing. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. I'm looking forward to trying that too in the future. Um... <laughs> And CTG Logan is a part of Enigma Emporium. Oh, oh I, I don't so know that's who that how is. they have the connection then. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I don't know who Logan is. That's cool. This is less like Fight Club? Oh, okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha. This is less like Fight Club? Okay. Okay, well, I'm looking to dabble around with this later. Oh, uh, this little fun box. Box of fun. So cool. Dr. Paul's asking though, did you buy any lore stuff even before the channel uh, before the channel became uh, no. full time? No. No. The only thing uh, that I can think of uh, is for video games. Like I never buy the all-in or the elite editions of video games that come with statues or helmets or toys, remote control cars and stuff. Uh, I always just get the base cheapest game. Don't care. Um, but the only thing I actually buy extra, and I don't usually buy art books. Um, is what I'll buy as strategy guides. I, I just love the physical strategy guides. They remind me of collecting video game magazines as a kid, like Nintendo Power and, and EGM and stuff, and Game Pro magazine. Uh, those I loved because they got me excited. Um, but the strategy guides kind of help gameplay, but I don't use them for the strategy guide. I get them just to have as something I can look through at all the art and the graphic design inside, kind of like an art book, and just have it on my shelf as something to look at later. And, you know, kind of once I beat the game, I kind of look back at it to see what secrets are hidden in the game and get fascinated by all the crazy stuff the developers did that we didn't even experience in our first playthrough. The only thing I can think of, I do have art books, but uh, the only art books I think I own are for Game of Thrones, the original ones uh, Fantasy Flight Games produced. But I bought those because I love Game of Thrones, the show, the books. The whole lore of it. And the lore. And uh, I don't play the Game of Thrones RPG or anything. I know that's another way to get more of that stuff. But um, Fantasy Flight Games back in the day used to publish books. Now they don't do that anymore. But when they did, they made two Game of Thrones art books. They're good, cool coffee table books. Um, but I was just love the art in the Game of Thrones card game and the board game. And it's full of that stuff from art that they commissioned for. Um, and you'll find that in some of the official books too. Uh, you know, that are HBO and Game of Thrones books and stuff will have some of that art. Uh, or the George R. R. Martin books, like the Fire and Blood or whatever, that the whole new show is based on. Mm -hmm. um, there's art in there that's from that original art book and, and on some of the Game of Thrones game products. So. Oh, you have me thinking now, too, that we do have the novellas for Arkham Horror, which is kind of like... But that's because it had gameplay content in it. Oh, yeah, had game... And that's well, why... No, it did. It did. It did, it did. 100%. You're that's right. the only reason I bought them yeah. is because they came with uh, alternate... 
uh, cards you could use with your uh, investigators to spice up their signature cards. Yeah, you're right. They and then the, the other two I can't find, I don't care. And recently, they re -released, they're they releasing a book that has all the stories in it, but it doesn't come with the gameplay cards. I have no interest in buying that because I don't care about the extra uh, stuff. Mm -hmm. There is the one book, though. Um, there is, to help me get in the lore for Arkham Horror, I did buy that one-off book. Yeah. Uh, the Investigators of Arkham that FFG made. But that's because I feel like the lore in the game, like understanding the world, I had trouble with that. So I was playing all the video games and, you know, trying to experience more Lovecraft lore and watching movies and shows and stuff. Um, so I got that book um, for that. So that's kind of fluff. Yeah. I haven't read through it, but I've read bits and pieces. But yeah. But in Kickstarters, I like, I'll buy stuff maybe premium components if it like upgrades the experience a little bit but i've been doing that less and less like you know like i like the plastic tokens we got originally like uh zombicide came with like plastic doors and hedges and all these kind of things but over time i realized like i didn't really need those they didn't really add to the gameplay so i kind of have gotten away from that and i always just want to get more games and play different games so it's mm -hmm. like i only have a certain budget uh and thank you everyone scrolling right here for helping with that budget uh, being able to buy more games than I normally would to play on the channel. But it's like, I also have a feeling, and I didn't do this with my own money, but using my own money plus your support, I still think of it as like, how would you want your money spent? Would you want your money spent on me backing two Kickstarter-based pledges or backing an all-in pledge that's full of 30% fluff of art books to put on my shelf, a statue, uh, a miniature that's the size of a baby, that does nothing for gameplay. I wouldn't even get to play it on stream. You know what I mean? Like, th that's maybe a bad example. Or even expansions that we may Mel not could get to. Mel could paint that on stream. <laughs> yeah. uh, but you know what I mean. So yeah. uh, I tr I've gotten more stingy with that stuff because it's more about the gameplay experience. That's where I have fun in tabletop gaming, not at stuff collecting dust on shelves. So that's where I'm at. So, yeah. And even some gameplay content, I've been kind of hesitant towards because, like, stretch goal stuff that's added onto Kickstarters and not play tested and just kind of like I never get to it because I play through like a legacy game or a campaign game or play a base game a handful of times then I'm bored and I move on to something else then I don't get to all the stretch goal stuff I, I don't need the stretch goal stuff adding the setup time and you know and some expansions like you know I've kind of gone a little different on that but again the lore stuff like you know Chip theory is cool. You can go read the waterlog books and stuff online. You don't need the, the actual physical lore books. They're cool what they did with the whole burnt edges little books. But yeah, they like, look nice. But they look nice. But I can't put those on my shelf. They don't look good in us in all the kind of books I I have on my shelf. All big hardcover coffee table looking books. Um, and then it's just gonna go in a box somewhere and collect not collect dust, I guess, because it's in a box. <laughs> but you know what I mean. And just never to be looked at again. But just something you have to move and you have yeah. to store and yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So I would have never bought this pop-up book unless it came with all this gameplay content. And, and it was the promise that they were going to add some gameplay content to it. That would be worth a playthrough at least. That made me even think about purchasing it, um, which is cool. So that's just me. That's me personally. But yeah. it's still I'm still putting it on a shelf. It still looks cool. But Yeah. Uh, I'd rather spend your and my money on games on the channel that are actually play, not stuff you don't see ever on stream that sits on a shelf. That's mm -hmm. just me. I mean, at some point, I'll pull up the green screen again. You guys will see what's on our shelves. Uh, at some point in the future, I need to do that again. Um, and we'll put some like cool stuff on the shelf. But yeah, that's just where I'm at. That's just me. But yeah, when I was working like a full time job and had money, I still was like that. You can yeah, ask we still Mel. didn't really. Yeah, no, nope. no. I would I would back a Kickstarter. Rare. Yeah, and I would only add on like gameplay stuff. And once the gameplay stuff gets up into the two hundred, three hundred dollar range, I look at Mel yeah, and go, okay. Mel, should we add another hundred dollars to add on a bunch of fluff? And she's already like, we're already spending like two or three hundred dollars on this Kickstarter. Why do we want to spend four or five? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, three or four hundred or whatever. It's like, yeah, no. I'd rather back this other Kickstarter. Or usually on a crowdfunding, there's two campaigns that you'd want to back, right? And usually most people kind of pick one or none. Most people. There's the exception of people who just back it all. But let's say once a month, I kind of pick a Kickstarter to back. Would I rather back two of them I'm choosing from or just one? all in or extra stuff right that's just where it comes down to or even one kickstarter and maybe a game or two that are just in retail 
Yeah, right? so exactly. I'd rather have that. more games than more of one game, usually. Yeah. We have to really, really love it. Yeah. So Too Many Bones is that for me. I obviously, on the Unbreakable campaign, I backed more money into that campaign than I've ever backed on anything. Yeah. And it's only like really a standalone expansion game. It's not even like a big Too Many Bones game. It's just like a little game with like add-on stuff. I don't think I'll ever do that again. I, I kind of regret some of it, but hopefully when we play it, 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 it comes <laughs> back. But I don't know if I'll get my 500-ish Canadian dollars plus shipping all back and all the content there. Yeah, it was a lot. But. Because as time goes on, Too Many Bones doesn't get played as much because other games keep adding to the collection. Oh, I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> but I just know I love Too Many Bones and players that have played with us all love Too Many Bones. So it's like good for my game group too, so I keep investing in it. I don't think anyone that we played Too Many Bones with has not enjoyed it. Yeah. So. But I am learning as I keep uh, 10 years in the hobby now, I look back and even the best of best games the only games I can think of that we played so much that makes the value there is Too Many Bones, Game of Thrones, the board game, second edition. I don't know. That might be it. Maybe, maybe, maybe Tina Grail. Tina Grail because oh, we Tana. played through the whole story of the core set. And the core set isn't that bad price-wise if you look at retail and stuff. And we played through the whole full thing of that. So that's lots of hours. And some of the campaign games. but Yeah, but what, what about something uh, like Mansion of Madness, would you say? Like the amount yeah. of hours we've played? Uh, I don't or know, but there's still even. lots of content we never played in it, so I, 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 there's lots of, you know, scenarios and expansion stuff we never played with. Maybe in October we'll round that out yeah, to being know. almost complete. But yeah, it's, it's a different discussion. Yeah, so, that's yeah. interesting. I don't know. I don't know. But it's like, I, I, I just rather spread the love, so that's me. Because mm -hmm. for like, also if you think about it too, if you're like trying to grow the hobby and you're thinking of the hobby in general, and you want to help some smaller publishers, when you go into a bigger publisher, like let's say you go into a Simon campaign and you back it all, and you go all in, all the extra fluff, you get the upgraded components and player boards and extra expansions and baby size miniatures, Maybe that means you're spending less money on a game that really needed the money and a publisher that could have brought something to market that maybe was more magical and had more love put into it rather than just mass produced and forgotten about mm -hmm. and maybe something supported more. So it's like I also think of that too is like how much do I want to give this publisher for this thing versus spreading out that money into other crowdfunding campaigns maybe to help grow the hobby and maybe support some things that are more unique and more interesting that are being done too. And round out our collection, yeah. right? Instead of having all games that are yeah. like X, we can have a variety of different games for different people. Yep. Yeah. Uh, ben says, as you said, Rob, I think there's some assumption in Automaton, and I think we'll take a handful of playthroughs to get it, which is really neat. Yeah. But you want it to be challenging. I agree, because yep. it it's coming out years after Too Many Bones was released. And people need a challenge, right? So I do like, and that's what Splice and Dice did well, right? Splice and Dice content came out and said, hey, players, <laughs> deal with these tyrants. Yeah. See how you do now, and we'll show you. Um, but it says they've definitely dealt with some uh, with some of the criticisms of the original. You can't just max stats and ignore skills to some degree. Yeah. Yep. And you can tell they're trying to nerf you from upping skills. And then also, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's weird. Yeah, there were some interesting decisions in this one, for sure. Yep. But now knowing the the tyrant, yeah, I definitely would approach it differently, for sure, than what we just did. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if I'd play this in order again. That's what I'm not sure about. I, I kind of don't like what they did in the order they did it. But I like how some of these things will come up in other playthroughs and give us weird dilemmas to deal with. I just don't like the way they were kind of trying to nerf us in stats and training points just to make it more challenging and then right after throwing stuff at us that like we're kind of negating one option over the other based on a, another choice you made. So like I see what oh, they were doing. Oh and it affected the option you didn't yeah, have. Yeah, which I like how they did it. It's thematic, it's cool the way you play it in order. It's, it definitely makes it a challenging run and it's fun and I do want to solve the puzzle that these all in order made which I think is super neat. But it will be more fun to me, I think, when these day one and two and three come in and it's saying things like, you can get training points, but you can't put them in stats. 
well, okay, that's going to make this gear lock I'm playing or this tyrant or, you know, this adventure a little messy. Yeah, I like that. I do like that a lot. I, I do like it, these being mixed in, and I think it's going to be hilarious. But yeah, this uh, uh, t automaton tyrant, like, yeah, he's a challenge, I can tell already. Yeah. I want to see what he's like again with orcs and the different scales and beast baddies without the undertow stuff involved. I want to see, because we won't have equipment, you won't have one mind, you won't have... I don't know what else is in Undertow that's kind of different. I know some of that stuff could come in with the Splice and Dice baddies, but... But again, uh, you could also play this guy again in the future and come at him with Undertow plus 40 Waves of Daylor or whatever it's called. Oh, yeah. Where you mix in a whole bunch of Undertow baddies, which also is the reason why I kind of want to keep Undertow separate, because I want to use that 40 Waves of Daylor or whatever it's called uh, mixed in and then play with Undertow with that involved and see how it, it spices up the baddie pool. That's the stuff on the Unbreakable campaign, right? Yes, yeah. yes. So there, uh, all of this talk leads to tons of more To Me Bone streams coming later, for sure. Like, I can't wait to mess around more. And this has just tickled my tickled my interest again in this game to play it again. Yeah, um, this definitely brought back all the feels. Oh my god. For sure, I yes. love this game. Yes. But it's like, this can't be the next thing I try. Like, I have to go back now and play some normal Too Many Bones and build myself up again. Um, because obviously we were not ready or worthy to to attempt Automaton at this point. No. But I feel like we were close, but we weren't there yet. Yeah. So maybe Automaton is something we do after we play Unbreakable. We take Unbreakable as a, its own thing, and we play through it with some of the gear locks that come with it. Mm -hmm. You know? You build that back up again. Yeah, we play through it. And even if that kicks our butt, that's fine, but it warms us up, you know? Yeah. And then we maybe play Undertow with the new stuff mixed in. Maybe there's a campaign mode in the future where we play a campaign now with all of the uh, epilogues with this guy involved, all the new Unbreakable tyrants involved. We Ooh. go back and play 40, 40 days of... Di no, yeah. no. What's the... the Age of Tyranny. Oh, Age of Tyranny yeah, yeah. campaign. Imagine doing an Age of Tyranny campaign. We use some of the new gear locks. Uh, new tyrants mixed in, all the new loot, all the encounters from everywhere, all the baddies from everywhere. We do some epic all-in Age of Tyranny, where our stacks of enemies are like this high. <laughs> like our one-point baddies, like one baddies are like swaying on the table because the stack is like this tall. Because you don't have a chip. We have to put like six chip holders in a row to hold all the baddie stacks. <laughs> yeah, one day. Oh, Justin's here. Hi, Justin. Yes, Justin. Uh, and I need you involved in this at some point, so... I need you to focus on Take your health. Take care of yourself, yeah. Take care of yourself, please, sir. Uh, but yeah, I am ready for Unbreakable content. I can't wait as an excuse to get the game back to the table. And yeah, That's coming this year? Hopefully end, by end of year, right? Uh, I thought like September-ish. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think fall, but maybe things got delayed a little bit because of COVID and China like closing factories and stuff earlier in the year. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see. We'll see. But that's the plan. That was a cool six-hour stream. Oh, was. Um, yeah, and we didn't even do the Tyrant battle. I know we talked at the end there, but I knew it'd be long. I just felt felt it. Uh, so that's why it's kind of rushing a little bit there, but we didn't even have to do the Tyrant encounter. Imagine we succeeded. I think we would have failed on the Tyrant if I... we had the two days to spare, and we probably would have had to play him again. Oh, uh, maybe, know, yeah. And maybe not even beat him. Uh, Black Cheval says, so supposedly fall 2022. Okay. So far. So okay, far. so far. I guess fingers crossed. So yeah, if you're looking for our existing Too Many Bones content, we played many of Too Many Bones, lots of the Gearlock videos, playthroughs, long 12-hour streams, uh, playing Too Many Bones, solo, two-player, four-player, all in the same day, uh, three-player, mm -hmm. I probably didn't say in there. Uh, check out the playlists in the video description. We have tons of Too Many Bones on the channel. You can also find our Burn Cycle coverage. We played a lot of Burn Cycle recently. Uh, we played a ton of Cloud Spire too on the channel if you're interested in other Chip Theory games games. Maybe a different one appeals to you if you've never gotten involved. Um, go check out their catalog. We'll play Hoplomachus uh, later this year. Hopefully uh, that arrives at some point. Uh, some solo-only content, some multiplayer content. We'll play with some of that. I want to try that game out. Uh, and again, the Unbreakable stuff. I should be getting all the gameplay stuff. I backed it all. I'm pretty sure I backed it all. I think you backed everything. Everything gameplay, gameplay yeah. for sure. Yeah. Like, um, I don't think we went for, like, extra mats and stuff like that. Like, uh, I think we got mouse, some mats, though. Computer mats? Mouse mats? No, we didn't like, do that. Like, that's what I mean. Like, you know those extra things that were yeah, on it? Yeah. I don't think we did any of that. But, uh, yeah, stay tuned. More Too Many Bones. So hit that subscribe button. Turn on the notification bell. Uh, hit the like button. Help other people find Too Many Bones content when they're searching for it. They'll find this channel uh, and help them watch other stuff. Um, but if you're a fan of Chip Theory Games, you're in the right place. Uh, we love these things. Uh, all the games are great, in our opinion. Mm-hmm. 
They're not for everybody, don't get me wrong. I don't think this product should change whether you like too many bones or whether you should add it to your collection or not. But hopefully seeing this today, if this is your first playthrough kind of watch of too many bones, I'm sorry about the spoilers, but uh, yeah, go check out some of our other playthroughs playing with the different gear locks from the core set or the undertow stuff. Get a feel for some of the intro products for the game. That's probably better. This is more focused on someone who's played too many bones for a while and has a collection they're kind of growing. Uh, but it is a beast of a rabbit hole to drop into, but do your research. It's not for everybody, um, but we love it. We love Too Many Bones, and uh, yeah. Thank you everyone for supporting the channel. Thank you for watching. We're going to get out of here, and we'll see you in the next stream. Bye-bye.